captain Noah Evans and Charlie Unnery in that front row. In the boiler room, Johan Olsen and Todri Rees. And the back row is Jack Llewellyn, Harvey Pickton and Sam Graves in the number eight. And the replacements, Cody Thomas, Lewis Griffiths, Etienne Hackett, Rowan Lyons, Liam Shaughnessy, Tyler Morris, Mackenzie Braddon and Jack Blunsden. And that's the Cair Philly team for today. And they take on Llangum from Pembrokeshire near Haverford West. The halfbacks, Johan Hawkins Jones and Liam Rees. Fletcher Picton and Ian Gray at centre. And the boys out wide, Aaron John, Harry Makepeace, and Ewan Davis. And let's have a look at the forwards, the front row, hoping to get their platform. Aled Rogers, Seb McIntosh, and Charles Wilson. The front rowers with Seth Willington and Arwin O'Loughlin, the captain, putting plenty of weight behind them. And the back row is the loose forwards, Sam Rickwood, Joe Phillips and Dom Assen on the open side flank. And the replacements for Thangum. Jake Thomas, Matthew Cole, Kieran Sinclair, Flynn Chunuk, Owen Phelps, Alfie Elric, Fergus Reynolds and Evan Thomas. And they're the replacements for Thangum. And there's plenty of company from Ioan Gwynedd here uh, in the commentary box. Uh, welcome to start off with to Adam Taylor, WRU Operations Manager. Looking forward to, to this one. Yeah, it's uh, it's always a fantastic day. Um, the whole event is fantastic. And like you say, a game like this, two great sides, and you know they're going to want to check it about. So I think we could be in for a cracker. Uh, and Sean Holly, magnificent stadium. We say this all the time, but we haven't uh, looked at a few photos beforehand. The shirts are in the changing rooms. What an occasion for these boys. Oh, it's huge, isn't it? And we've got a lot of fans here as well from both teams. It's big in sunshine here at the Principality Stadium. What a day for both sets of players, coaches and fans. We're really looking forward to it, though. <laughs> yeah, we're all looking forward to it. It's going to be a, a magnificent day of rugby. Three games on the way, starting with the bowl final. That's the trophy up for grabs, glistening in the Cardiff sunshine as Kair Philly and Shangum take the field. Kair Philly in the traditional green and white shirts with Shangum. Only a village of Jack in Pembrokeshire, outside of Haverford West. And I think the half of the Shangum village have busted down to Cardiff and making an occasion of it all. And obviously soaking up the atmosphere as well. The mascots, the players, waving to the families and having a quick huddle to calm the nerves. And, and Sean, you've bought plenty of teams, I, I, I suppose, here over the years. And it is a great occasion. It's been nerves tingling for, for both sides as it takes the field. Yeah, there'll be huge nerves out there, players and coaches alike. And the players, for the players, it'll be a little bit of a frenzy, you know, it'll be a bit of a haze. And they'll be a lot quicker than they used to, particularly in the first five, ten minutes. A bit of health to skelter. But as soon as they settle down and get into their patterns and get the first hits, the first passes, the first kicks in, I'm sure we're in for a good game. You know, a massive occasion for them. They used to play in, you know, in local clubs against other junior teams, youth teams. But now they're on the hallowed turf. Just think of the players that have played here, the teams that have played here, and now they've got that opportunity. Yeah, and it's worth noting the Carpilli coach is pleased cleverly the groundsman here at the principality so he'll uh, have probably a top tip or two for his boys how to cope with this wide pitch and it's, it is a quick surface isn't it uh well uh, what i will say you mentioned about reese i don't think it'll be a better pitch setup for the entire of this road to principality <laughs> than this morning as well so uh the boys have got the luxury of that but like you say they, they're not going to be used to this fast track i don't think all right Carfilly straight in amongst it a knock on early doors by Shangum. We've been early scrum for Kyle Philly playing from right to left in the green and white. And maybe a bit of nerves for Sangam as he received the ball. That's exactly what I was saying, you know. <laughs> the first couple of minutes, they're so nervous. They've been losing sleep last night. First intervention in the game. They want to get things right. Difficultish kickoff for the sun. And I think it was Sam Rickwood, unfortunately. But he'll make up for that. He's got plenty of time. Casa Pritchard to feed early on and Shangum putting a bit of pressure on that green pack slight forward pass potentially there by Pritchard yeah well spotted by the referee 
But for Shangum, that's an early statement, getting a, a nudge on. And considering how small Shangum actually is, they didn't have a team the start of the year did they yeah like, it's it's a great achievement for the club as a whole like you say they were uh, they, they weren't even running and now to be here on the stadium so uh, just to say as a, as a loose head prop myself to see the loose head coming up there on the uh, first scrum he's going to be full of beans after that let me tell you Hawker Jones the 9-4 Shangum out to Reese. good nudge downfield looking for the touchline that's a lovely little kick to get him Territory early doors get Shangum down the field and to get over that early knock on. Yeah, it's forward would be happy with that, but unfortunately, I just thought this system was a bit indecisive. He looked there and it was passed back into the 22. The kick hit the whitewash on the far touch line, so they go all the way back for the line out inside the 22. So, what could have been a good clearance kick has now turned into great field position for Kafili. Yeah, that's a killer for Shangum straight back into a defensive set. And Philly taking the time to get into the line out. Evans, the captain, not finding his target. Bobbles out towards the yellow shirts. Now they're deep in there, 22. They can go straight for touch here if they wish to do so. But Kyle Philly scrapping for the ball on the floor. Back to the original knock on in the line out. Oh, very scrappy to start. It's to be expected with the nerves. But it is beautiful conditions out there. First throw went to right, and here's a chance now for Klangum to really clear their lines. Good first scrum from them, particularly from Alid Rogers, Seb McIntosh, and Charles Wilson in the front row. Hawkins Jones again feed in, good platform, and a penalty air. The nudge again coming on by Alid Rogers on that far side, and Charlie Undery under pressure it's very important at this age group because they can only go 45 and a, and a meter and a half that they have to on the hit they make sure that they they make an impression on it and um, get that early position so they can get purchased at the scrum yes two acts uh, yeah, spot on showing like you say because of the, the restrictions of what they are but to be fair to langham they were uh, two outstanding scrums and alec rogers i think is uh, is one to watch here at the moment Shangum. Shortened line out, hitting the man. Good ball off the top. Bit of a sling of a pass, but it's out towards the wide channels. A good nudge into the shade here at the Principality and plenty of pressure. That's a great step to get out of trouble. Beating one, beating the second. Up towards the 10 meter line. And Kyle Philly looking towards the box with Pritchard. That's one to compete for. And that's overrun by the number eight, Sam Graves. The referee not picking up on that. Missed timing. It's a knock on given. Yeah, I thought it might have been a concern over the challenge in the air. And I think we've seen quite a lot of kicks in the first couple of minutes or so these players won't be used to have played on such a big pitch there's a huge expanse out there they're picking their heads up they're seeing a lot of grass and they're kicking into the space so the back threes of both teams are gonna have to have their work cut out covering a lot of of field out there today and then from your experience knowing youth rugby who would on paper be the favorites today well that's tough to say Kafili have had a, they've gone from strength to strength uh, they had a bit of a poor start but they've won undefeated in their current league so another great scrum for Blangham again and Kafili saying who are undefeated in eight in, in all competitions in all games yeah, they're, they've done well. They, they, like you say, another one that uh, they'd had a struggle earlier on in the season, but they've regrouped and, and done well. But I think on paper, like you say, just purely because of the size of the areas in terms of the players available to choose from, you'd say Caffilly, but to be fair to Langham, they've uh, they've started very well. It's going to be a long day, Sean, in the pack for Caffilly if they can't short off that front five. Uh, from my coaching days, those scrum was still king. In my book, gets you field position, gets you penalties, and... For this penalty, Fletcher Picton. Well, I don't know if you've been watching Lee Halfpenny, but this is a fair old way. That might be a 10 meter line, but that's a fair old kick. Slightly on the angle. He must have a siege gun boot. Crowd fall silent for Picton. 
first effort towards the posts of any note. Here he comes. Strikes it well, he's got the distance. And yeah, it's there. Well, what a nudge by Fletcher Picton. Kyle Philly now know they can't concede the penalty within their own half, but Shangum will be aiming towards the posts. Well, as a former kicker myself, you do back yourself, but I thought that might have been just out of his range. Fletch Fletcher picked him, what a strike, and he had a bit more than, um, than the distance probably suggested. He's got a, a siege gun boot, that's for sure. A yeah, ball scooped up by Sam Rickwood. That's with better this time by Shangum. Although it wasn't taken cleanly to start off. Crossfield kick by Reese. Maybe not getting the distance he required. Sly knock on in there. I don't think Clank will mind if it goes back to a scrum. <laughs> He'll scrum all day. <laughs> yeah, and they've just got the pace of the game now, and they right from the frantic start, a few errors. You see, they walk into this scrum, the uh, the enthusiasm, the the exuberance of running out onto the Principality Stadium has just waned a little, and I think Kaifili might be a little bit shocked at the strength of the scrum, Alec. Yeah, I don't think they're the only ones, to be fair. I, uh, looking at the sizes of the two teams as they come in this morning, I think it was probably considerable difference with the Kaifili boys, but um, fair play to this Langham front row. They've, uh, they've really got their number at the moment. Hawker Jones feeding again, and... Shangum. Well, that's one gone against uh, Aled Rogers. Boring in on that loose end side. Now, that's the problem when you've got the upper hand and in so much that Lam Gum have. They have to be careful they don't push beyond what is required or that they tend to go in on the hooker, which is very difficult for a loose head to do. But it's a tight edge job to keep him straight. But that's meant that Kafili have got a bit of a fortunate penalty and they're five metres out. That's a great nudge, isn't it? From that position and the angle. Let's have a look at it again. He's got the dominance in there, but he's got to keep his posture, his angle straight. He, he Show a good picture. He doesn't need to do that. You can see the dominance they got. Like you say, if he keeps his, his forms and his, his shape squared, he's, uh, he doesn't need to be boring in like that. No Evans to the tail over the top, but collected by... The supporters, now there is a chance for Kyle Philly to calm their nerves. Just a pick and go, settle down. Towards that left-hand side, just sure the crowd think he's over. Touch judges there, back to the left, plenty. Back to the hooker. No Evans, the captain, is over in the left-hand side. And what a way to reply by Kyle Philly. Well, there you go. The scrum has been so dominant from Flangum. But if you do make an error in there, you get a bit overzealous, then Kaifili are clearly very clinical and dangerous close to the line. I thought they might have got over in the first instance, but in this second attack out wide, the assistant was there in the end. He should have been on the line a bit earlier before that, but that's a good finish from Kaifili, and now that'll settle the nerves, and we've got a game on here. A great try for Kaifili. I thought the kick was sneaking a metre or two there in field by Ryan Williams, who's a, a Wales Rugby League under-18s international with the kicking responsibilities. Not the easiest of kicks to start off the day for him. But then again, Fletcher Picton didn't have an easy kick, did he? Williams pulled that to the left. That said, Carfilly probably won't mind too much. They're on the scoreboard. They're ahead. Carfilly five, Shangum three. So we've probably just seen now the strengths of both teams. Clearly, Shangum on top in the scrum. They've got a big kicking game. They've looked for space. But Carfilly, a little bit more organised in the 22. Very clinical. Clearly have some ball carriers and try scoring potential. So that'll be the recipe for the rest of the game. Yeah, that's going to do on the world of good after a bit of a shaky start to be leading now after this uh, early stage. Well, that's on the money from my, in my books, lands on the line. With a bit of backspin, I'm not sure if he tried it. Well, that's hit the line there. An assistant on this side hasn't really 
offer the referee any assistance. That clearly went to the 10 meter line. Play on. Should be a line out. So a bit of miscommunication there. Yes, the attack judge. You'd like to notice them, Sean. <laughs> I, I think I'm harping back to my coaching days. Yeah, you know, I just like things being right. <laughs> we'll put that on a feedback form for the yeah, end of the yeah. end of the end of the thing. Anyway, we'll make sure to make a note of that one. The better strength for Kyle Philly. The back running patterns change direction. Coming to the right hand side. Nice knee step back inside, offloading to Nash. Good carry down the middle. Quick ball, looking to release the back line, Tom Lewis, looking for his big forwards to run. That was a great carry. Lewis there again, forwards interchanging with the back line, plenty of space here on the left that he can work the numbers out towards Thomas Amps. Dan Gun being stretched, narrow defence here, again. Can feel he can work this to the fringes. Charlie Undery, he'll be happy in carrying the ball than being in the scrum. Lewis with a little goose step to three against two out wide. Kangum coming up, needs to nail their tackle, slipping off. Again, Kyle Philly building well into the 22. Parsons smashed through the tackle. Ball still alive. For Kyle Philly. The forwards winning the collision, winning the game lines. Again, Undrian. With the ball, Evans, the captain, under pressure, does well to shrug off that first tackle. Numbers to the right. Lewis. Plenty of space, but unfortunately, pushing the pass may be unexpected and nudged forward by Sam Graves. And Sean Kyle Philly looks to be comfortable in possession. The carriers making ground. Yeah, a real strong passage of play. Tom Lewis really, sorry. Yeah, Tom Lewis really starting to pull the strings. He's got a, a fleet of foot himself, and then Sam Graves has just got in the way there. As Tom Lewis tried to straighten up, Graves was pushing across field. I think the pass was meant for the outside, but you could see them building phases. The ball carries Charlie Undery, the tight head, heavily involved in that. And Caffilly looked pretty ominous in attack at the moment under the strings of Tom Lewis. I've got to play it down, receiving a bit of treatment at the moment so we'll have a quick look at the, the results to see how the teams got here to the principality to this bowl of final Langum beating Wijnar Luyth in the first round 24-5 then the second round took on Carmarthen Athletic a slightly closer affair 18-14 round three only a point to separate Langum and St Julian's High School Old Boys 18-17 to Langum and then beating the North Wales Dolgechai in the quarter-finals, 15-11, and in the semis, it was a 24-14 win against Bryn Koch. It was a tight journey, wasn't it? Tight journey for Klangum, but it's great, Adam, that a team from the West, just past Haverford West, now meet a team from the Dragons region in such a big occasion. They don't come across each other very often. No, that's that's the beauty of these competitions, Sean. Is like you say, it brings teams from all over the all over Wales together, and especially under the the bright lights of the big stadium. It's it's just a fantastic occasion for all involved. I always say, and, and speaking to the coaches and the the staff involved, I think that there's more stress on the semi-final game than there is the final because once they're here, it's they can just whilst it is a great important occasion for them. The, the stress is gone of trying to make it, so it's um, they're all a winner, really. Yeah, you can enjoy the occasion a bit more. 100%. Um, if you look at then uh, Kyle Philly's journey, well, they jumped in a round three, more or less. They had a, a walkover in a round two, not, not a game in round one either, and beating Seng Hennig 14. Eight. Yeah, oh, yeah. Well, yeah. I was just going to say, no, that was the correct score, but I know Reese was saying because that, that's a very big rivalry for the yeah. two, so I think he probably wanted me to say a couple of things about that as well, but I say no, but it was a, a great win for them in that game, so. <laughs> a bit of a grudge match. Big time. I can, I can imagine, yeah. yeah. Then Kyle Philly 31 to 17 against Glyn Neath, and then beating Mumbles in that semi final 23 12. And that's the journey for the boys to get here. And this is. The third tier, as it was, competition for the finals day. And you, you were saying before we started broadcasting, these teams are probably the younger members in towards the age group. 
Yeah, there's there's probably like you say the three tiers where we have the the cup, the plate, and the ball, um, which which was introduced a number of years ago purely to give more opportunities for, for players to get out on the stadium. A lot of these players will likely be first year youth players, um, so they'll probably be in the, the the plate or the cup competitions next year, and who knows, maybe back here this time in 12 months in uh, in another competition. Yeah, there's a, a change on the way here, an early blow to Dan Gum, unfortunately fly half Liam Reese is about to depart with number 20 Owen Phelps about to come on and and Sean on a big occasion obviously we hope the best for Liam Reese. the injury isn't, isn't too bad but losing your fly half early doors is, is a big blow for the team yeah we could see early on the influence Liam Reese was having with his left footed kicking game big part of uh, Clan Gum. it doesn't look great which we don't want to see the stretch is on we hope Liam is okay our wishes go to him but um, as we look at the crowd, you know, you've got to say, Adam, you know, great credit to the travelling support, and it just shows what it means to both clubs. Oh, it's huge. And like you say, we, that, that's part of the beauty of our Road to Principalities event is that we have so many teams come down and experience. We had the, uh, the representatives of the teams come to the stadium last week. We took them around. We went through the protocols and what to do. And, and that's just as good as the day like this because you see the staff members. We take them down the tunnel photos galore of everything it's uh, it means so much to all involved and it's 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 a great um it's a great reward for the, the time and effort that a lot of the volunteers that buffer in not just the players yeah that's the thing that's the point you just touched on it's a community game volunteers have to make this happen they give their time week in week out training sessions go to the games it, it's an unbelievable occasion not only for the players but all involved oh definitely and like you said our match officials as well it's it's a great reward for for the service that they provide throughout the season as well so it's it's not just the players it's the the officials that we have as well but anyone who's involved in any of these games is uh is is something they'll have memories for a lifetime liam reese is receiving a warm round of applause by the crowd here at the principality he's up onto the cart so we hope him and wish him the best with his injury. Hoping that's not too bad as the players from Kangum jog over to wish him the best as well. And a pause in a game like this, it's not going to help either team really, Sean, but you've got to switch on quickly straight after after a, a, a situation like this. Absolutely. <clears throat> the concentration on the build-up is just is so huge, you know. Not just through the week, but the, the walk into the stadium, the changing rooms. I'm sure the words from the coaches, the run out after the warm-up, and then to have a stop like this. But, you know, thoughts go out to Liam Reese. I'm sure he's going to be all right. He's probably devastated, not by the injury, but the fact that he can't play on at the stadium here and play a big part in this bowl final. But uh, as far as Langham's players go now, they've got to do it for Liam, haven't they? They've got to gel together and, and get on with it without him, and I'm sure they will. Play about to resume. Carfilly 5, Langham 3... And Carfilly starting to pick up their socks in the scrum, but it's a good exit by Shangum, pumping that downfield and over the halfway line. And again, Shangum are not short of big kickers in that back line. Yeah, I think it might be uh, Harrison, sorry, Fletcher picked then, who, who that siege gun boot penalty for their three points might have switched to, uh, to 10, bringing Owen Phelps on, number 20, into the centre. It's what it looks like, unless Picton is now the principal kicker. Uh, Phelps has gone to uh, to the 10 position from this line-up. Yeah, maybe switching defensively to attacking, we'll see as, as time goes on. Can feel it with a good ball off the top again, looking to use those big runners in midfield, the back row, hanging out wide. I think maybe Rodri Reese, the second rower in there. And another big carry, we can see the pattern starting to develop. Can feel it. happy to play off nine, using Noah Evans once again, the try scorer. Hangum in that yellow wall rushing up. And Hangum sat there, able to stop Carfilly on that gain line. Lewis Jones in the scrum cap, carrying hard, creeping towards the halfway line. Now they spread it wide. I've been impressed with the Caffili front row carrying early on. I mean, I know they had their issues in the scrum, but they've all been very willing uh, runners and, and made some good hard yards as well. Yeah, Roger Rees in there. Once again, the same names, the same players, with the duties as carriers and going across field, Tom Lewis again. 
amongst it. They are finding the fringes. Kyle Philly there using old runner to suck in the defence. This is taking his toll on the Clangham defence. There's space in the white oh. channels. <laughs> Nearly in, an intercept by Yeyan Gray, I think, in midfield. Rushing up, and again, they need to try and swallow up that space. There's plenty of it out wide. Ryan Williams, the kick through. Is it going to hold the four? Tom Lewis, Lewis! Dots down! And great play, great patience by Kyle Fury, knocking the door away the forwards, take it wide. And the perfect kick downfield just sets up beautifully for Tom Lewis. Well, Tom Lewis looks like a player to me who can pull a lot of strings. I've said that once in this game, and he's he's really enjoying himself out there. I watched him track inside after he made the pass, and he didn't give up on the kick. Just watch him, you know. He's coming around, he's in the backfield, he makes the pass. Watch him now, he doesn't switch off. He stays in, he hedges his bets, he never gives up. You never know with a rugby ball where it's going to bounce, and he gets his just dessert. Brilliant try from Tom Lewis. At first glance, you're thinking maybe that kick's gone too far and he's just going to bounce onwards, but it held up. When you when you luck's in, you luck's in, I think. And like you say, that was a uh, that was a, a fair piece of a fair piece of luck. But uh, as Sean said, the ball could go anywhere. But it went to Philly's way there. And Cad Philly definitely have their tails up now. They've controlled the game for the last five minutes, possession-wise, and they've come away with two tries. Another kick pulled past the left-hand post by Ryan Williams. It's now Cad Philly ten, Shangum three. And the boys from Pembroke should need to get some possession down there, Cad Philly half. Yeah, intelligent kick into space. We thought it was a little bit hard, but Tom Lewis didn't give up. It's a good try. He looks like a good play. He's got a languid running style. Reminds me a little bit of a young James Hook. Same sort of build, you know, and he's certainly enjoying himself, bringing those front five players, as Adam said, into play. My goodness, that kick was halfway into the <laughs> Cad Philly half. <laughs> Steal the ad, why not? That linesman's fault again. I'll put it. I'll put it on the sheet again. Sure. I'll be having a word with him after. Look at this kick downfield. Does find such superb kick, superb exit for Carfilly. And you do feel everything's ticking nicely for Carfilly now, don't you? Ball in hand, exits. They're all going, all going their way. Body language of Clangum isn't good at the moment. It's a bit of walking around. And don't forget, these are young men, right? They've they've conceded a couple of tries after going into the lead with that great penalty from Picton. They've lost Liam Reese, but they've got to pick themselves up now. It's all part of their development. Yeah, McIntosh with a throw, overthrown, and comes back towards those big Kyle Philly carriers. Again around the corner. It's number eight, Sam Greaves. It shouldn't be too disheartened, Langham. In the semi-final, they were 14 0 down against uh, Brink Cork and come back to win the game. So there's uh, there's previous for it. That's a good carry by Lewis Jones, thundering into the 22. This goes right quickly. There's plenty of space gone the wrong way, but there's still an opportunity. Ten meters short on the left-hand side. The width of the field to play with. Good hands by Charlie Indery. Using Rodri Reese again. He's a willing carrier. Four, five men out to the right. Shangum short of numbers potentially here. Had Philly have shown already in this opening quarter. Plenty of patience. They're not going to rush. Using Lewis Jones. The loose head. Fly half Tom Lewis, fancying a, a snipe for a second. Momentum lost slightly here. Jack Llewellyn. The dart by the scrum half. Carter Pritchard sees the gap and dots down into the post for the third for Kyle Philly. And the Green and Whites are starting to pull away. Yeah, a real opportunist try from the scrum half. He bided his time, didn't he? Carter Pritchard waited for that half gap. And in multi phase, the Clangham defence eventually gets tired. Look at the gap, there's a gap either side. Just shows and goes. And I was about to say, Oz, that all Caffelli need to do is the simple things. They're sharing the load with their forward carriers. 
Got a little bit of white line fever, just need to play as a team now, keep the passes going, share that load, and the opportunities like that will come for Pritchard, but it's a good finish. Yeah, a very good finish. Kairfili 15, Shangum 3 with the kick to come. I think Ryan Williams <laughs> would be glad to see. It's more or less in front of the sticks compared to his previous two attempts. Out wide on the left. That one slotted over. Kairfili 17. Shangum three, and it's the breakdown show. Maybe that Shangum need to maybe commit a few plays to try and slow that ball down. Yeah, I think so. I think they need to stop the big carriers. You know, you got Rodri Rees and uh, Lewis Jones heavily involved in a lot of the carrying. They need to knock them on the advantage line. Perhaps get somebody over the ball, some like Dom Aston or Sam Rickwood. Just get slow it up a little bit to allow them to fold around the corner a little bit and get a bit more in the defensive line. But they're looking a little bit weary already, Adam. Yeah, definitely. It's, um, it doesn't look too good, like you mentioned earlier, with the body language. There's still plenty of time left in this game, but at the moment, you think that they were they were dead and buried. But I have to say, I've been impressed with Kafuri. Their, their structure, the game plan they've used, they've used these big forwards. Are there more changes? So uh, they could uh, they could be on to uh, a big score if they carry on the way they're going at the moment. Yeah, another change coming on for Kangum. Kieran Sinclair coming on for Charles Wilson. And Seth Willington departing with Jake Thomas coming on as well. Just three early changes for Shango, maybe tactical as well. But a couple of knocks seemingly in the middle of it all as well. Yeah, lots of changes, all the prep in the week now. A little bit out the window. They don't get a lot of chance to prep, maybe a couple of sessions. And then of course they lost key man Liam Rees to injury and there's another kick five meters into the Caffili <laughs> that's, that's a third note for the touchy I'll get another sheet of paper for this one <laughs> he's pitching he can't pitch Caffili looking for the next sit with yes, let's go Lewis that's a touch fighter but at last for Hangum they're in around the Caffili 22 <coughs> The line now hasn't functioned all that well, so they just need to find their mark. Yeah, they need to build some confidence now with some field position. They need to get into the shaded area of the stadium, out of the sun, if you like, where Caffili have been enjoying. And shorten the line out a little bit here, maybe some carriers midfield, but they just need some some time down here in the Caffili 22. Again, it's an overthrow juggled. they gathered in the end, so Shangum have possession under pressure. Yeah, penalty given, great jackal. That's a quick tap and Kairfili showing pl plenty of adventure. No, they are. 17-3 to the good. And a second penalty on the way. Not rolling away. We're straight off their feet. And Kairfili in complete control of this matchup now. Yeah, you're talking about confidence, the difference in the two sides. Pritchard there, just scored a try, tap and go. Realises that there are some soft edges perhaps to Klangum in the defensive line. <laughs> They look a little bit beaten, Klang Klangum. They need to raise their spirits a bit. Oh, that's a good nudge by Harrison Parsons, the number 12. As you see again, a strong carry by Lloyd Nash. Down in the middle, the heart of the defence. And Carfilli. And a couple of plays. A back just outside the Klangum, 22. Referee just making sure the gap's there. Alan Morgan. Evans. Early jump by Arwin O'Loughlin, the captain for Shangum. Can't feel really have possession. Tucked in there in the middle, trying to get the rumble on. Releasing the back line. On the angle comes Ryan Williams. Fumbled forward. Plenty of space in the backfield. If you can aim a kick or they're going to run from deep using Yeyan Gray. Stripped in the tackle. Back towards the original knock-on, but again, Carfilli causing all sorts of trouble. Yeah, it was a speculative offload from Yayan Grace, so no advantage there, went to ground. I just felt that Ryan Williams run a great angle from full-back, but didn't really have the conviction to burst through the line. It was a good run, good line. He was on an inside weak shoulder, but 
maybe just didn't have the full 100% belief that he could get through there. This is scrum for Shangum. Kick name downfield by Gray. That's a good touch finder to leave a bit of pressure. But again, Kai Fury, I'm sure, will be licking the lips with the opportunity to start thundering down the field again. Yeah, it's important they don't get complacent, though, Kafili. As Adam said, you know, Klangum have come back on the road to the Principality in the earlier games. They have lost some key personnel, however, but Kafili just need to keep doing what they're doing. Five man line out for Kai Fili. Towards the middle, tap backwards down towards. Can't have pitch yet, but not straight. Well, that's a little win for Sangum in the middle of it and a scrum down on the halfway line. That's interesting. The referee's positioning himself where the assistant would normally, right down the middle of the line now, to allow the assistant to go back 10 metres. I'm not so sure that's ideal. He needs to be in the run of play, but the one thing it does give him is the perfect line down the middle of the line now. Sangum really need to do something here. Yeah whether they can pick themselves up with a huge scrum to get a penalty or get some good field position through their, through their backs. Um, they do really need to start, uh, well, as I said, great to pick up a penalty. Let's see what they got, can do with it. Have you got comms with the referee? Have you? <laughs> <laughs> it's a scrum, isn't it? That's what he is. He's... <laughs> That's exactly right. That. It's, it's what they needed. It allows them that field position now. They can just get this into the Caffilly 22. Get a score before half-time, but the kick's uh... gone right. Yeah, gobbled up by Ryan Williams, who fires that one back downfield, finds a bit of grass, stays in field. Good step by Makepeace, off loads to O'Loughlin, back on the halfway line now. And the penalty comes, quick tap, trying to pick up the tempo, can go with Eskrim half you and Hawkins Jones, good offload. Had Philly competing on the deck for the ball. Slightly isolated here, Shangum. But it's another penalty, and that's better by the boys from West Wales. Picking up the, picking up the tempo, winning territory. I think Akka with a kick here, they've got a, a line out in the 22. Uh, fair play, Johan Hawkins, Jones, the scrum half, the tap and go, trying to put some impetus into Klangum. And the referee blown for not 10. Fletcher Pickton's having a little look, he kicked a, a penalty to start the scoring off from a bit further back than this. He's having a little look, he was asking the question. Personally, I, I think they should go for the corner here and get some pressure on. Yeah, usually you would. I think they're looking like they're going to go for the six. I know the line-out has been a bit hit and miss. And there is plenty of time, I suppose, but... Oh, they're going for a scrum, actually. I'll take it back. That's probably what we didn't expect. <laughs> well, the scrum has been on top, so yeah. they might see it as a a way of gathering all the Caffili forwards together so it provides a bit of space. We're considering as well, maybe a few penalties been in the scrum, are they looking for a yellow card? Trying to get Caffili down to 40, but that's a good nudge by the boys in green and white. But the Miranda and there's a hand in there. Is that a deliberate knock-on? These penalties are starting to add up now in the uh, Caffili half, so it makes you wonder whether he's thinking about going for his pocket and then one more two inf one or two more infringements yeah, another scrum it's interesting tactic here you know I might be a little bit naivety and safety in what they know the scrum is good but it's still a long way from the Caffilly try line you know you have to put concerted pressure that makes a good point by the number of penalties and the best way to do that perhaps is pressure close to the line force another penalty maybe a yellow card it'll give them a bit more parity and a chance to score Changes going on to the field for Kyle Philly. The confusion in the second row, Rodri Rees. Having a breather. He's played well in this. He's put in a great half. shift earlier on. Yeah, fair play to the boy. Yeah, rolling subs at this level, so I'm sure we'll see him again. With a platform here for Shango Ball back inside. Ewan Davis sniffing half a gap. Quick ball for the scrum half. Hawkins Jones swallowed up by the Cad Philly defense. Yellow shirts bunched up to the left. Is Sam Rickwood 
carrying, and the referee's arm is out once again. Another penalty on the way to Kangum. Strift in the tackle. Lovely attacking strike play off scrum. It was actually the play that England scored against Wales from, and this is Six Nations bringing in Ewan Davis on an inside ball. Off the outside half, nearly got through, but that pressure that we talked about has forced another penalty. And I'm surprised, really, they're going for goal here. Yeah, good question. Like you mentioned earlier, showing the naivety a little bit of them. But again, if they keep the scoreboard ticking over, this is 11 points. And I don't want to sound like a broken record, but there is still plenty of time left. So fair play to them if they can kick this over and they, they have confidence in their own ability following what happened in the semi final as well. I think for the commentators, cursing this kick. I've, I've, I've written it down already. It's a, a well known thing, commentators curse. Oh, you know that. I'm good at it. I think I've done about three already, a couple of the scrums earlier on, so it's, uh, it must be contagious. Here we go. A kick to make it 17 6. <laughs> Never in doubt. <laughs> An important score for Shangum. Going back three more points on the scoreboard. The gap now 11. As we said earlier on, they were 14 behind in the semi. We were 14 behind in this. Now it's 11. Shangum still alive. Well, he's clearly a good kicker. He strike, struck that superbly. And anytime there's a penalty, 40 metres in, Picton's on the ball. It's another good restart for Kyrfilly winning that one in the air. Opportunity for the forwards with Undery, the tight head, pushing off the first two or three cat, uh, tacklers. Back rowers in there as fly halves as well. That's a lovely ball drifting out to the right. Lewis Jones, the loose head. Somehow pop back to Johan Olsen. I think that's the first mistake he's had in this half, Lewis Jones. He's had an outstanding first uh, first, 40, first first 30 minutes. And that's a good jack goodbye, Dom Asson, as he felt like Kyle Finley were building again as he did for the first couple of tries. Seemed ominous for a second. Well, it's what we spoke about about 10 minutes ago. It's what they need, isn't it? When Kyle on the ascendancy, he put good low chop tackles in and bring the back rowers in over the ball just to slow it up, or if they can win a penalty and pick them, can fire them down there, then even better. So it's been a good five, ten minute period for Klangum. They've, they've sort of weathered the storm, some tries from Kafili, and they've got themselves back in the game to their credit. Yeah, and they quickly enough after scoring that second penalty back in the Klangum. They're back in the Kafili half as the Klangum voices start cheering their local boys again short and line out finding the man finding O'Loughlin the call not straight I think that was a correct call from the official there that was uh, that was well off unfortunately so you're looking for ticks for them now are you <laughs> you're looking to make an amends I thought we had to be impartial <laughs> yeah we'll see here now it's straight down the line of Klangum this uh, the most biased of uh, a Klangum fan would say that wasn't straight Klangum trying to put the pressure on but it's there for Kyle Philly. Plenty boys on left here. Shangum short of numbers. Again, chomping up the territory. Tyler Morris, the replacement nine, with 21 on his back. Jones using again. Lewis Jones. Not rolling away. Penalty Kyle Philly. I'd like to see that one again. He was certainly over the ball, just whether he released the player not rolling away. Yeah, here it comes. Let's uh, have a little look. So there's the tackle. Six it is. That's probably the problem. I'm not sure 18 was the problem. Yeah, Kieran Sinclair on the jackal. First man in, maybe. And Kyle Philly looking to restore their 14 point margin. Correct decision, Sean. 
go for the posts. Well, I, I think it's out of respect for Klangum, who've, who've, who've sort of weathered the storm and got themselves back in the game. I think they just want to extend their lead. What is it, 11 points? This takes it to two converted tries to, to tie the game. So it is probably just for half time a good decision. But it is a big kick for the lad. Yeah, hasn't been kicking smoothly. Ryan Williams, three attempts for the posts. Successful with one. Strikes it nicely. That's drifted left again. He's been hooking. His attempts up goal. So the margin remains at 11. Kyle Philly 17. Flangum 6. And the Flangum just could just score, maybe get another three points. The team talk will be different at half time. Yeah, I think, you know, 17-6, they'd be relatively happy with it. It was looking ominous at one point, wasn't it, where Caffilly were really dominant. But maybe a couple of changes to the Caffilly side, the rolling subs, just alter their structure a little bit. Yeah, that 15, 20 minutes, Caffilly were dominant. But uh, credit to Langham, they've really taken the sting out of it and, and got themselves back into it. So if they can get any more points on the board, then, like you say, they're going to really fancy themselves in the second half. Good kick downfield by Pickton. Graves not gathering cleanly. For space, uh, Tom Lewis. Sangam looking to win that kicking battle, pumping it downfield again. Not the best of kicks with Williams looking to run it back. Lovely sidestep and the offload in there. There was one person chasing that. I know it's a big track, but that was criminal from the uh, at Langham defence. Kyle Feely looking composed in possession. Working that out wide towards Jack Blunston. A chip through, keeping it alive on the chase. Lloyd Nash. Harry Makepeace under pressure. Gobbled up and over the line. And that's a better chase by the Carfilly boys. That's things starting to heat up downfield. Yeah, a bit of testosterone flying around down there. I don't think there's anything in that. And what a kick from Jack Blunston. On as a replacement, intelligent, infield, beautifully weighted. Again, some lovely passes. Look at this pass now coming in from Lewis. The draw and give. He saw a defender in front of him, puts a lovely kick over the top and infield. And that's the crucial part that is infield. Harry Makepeace has to turn over his shoulder. He feels the heat from the Caffilly chase. That's a good chase over the line, and that'll be a scrum five. What's the old adage? A good kick is only as good as the chase. Carfield made that kick a good one with the chase and they've won a five metre scrum and that's to be a, a hammer blow to the Llangum side if if they concede here going beyond the two converted try margin and Carfield have been so measured and composed in these situations so far in the first half Langham. He's put some pressure. The number eight Graves with a pick aiming towards the post. Can he get to the line? He's over. But can ground it. That's good defence by Langham. Excellent defence. Desperate defence and it makes such a difference to this game just before half time. Had they conceded there, it's a totally different half-time team talk but there's some lessons in here they're still learning the game aren't they uh, Sam Graves determined to get to the line scored the Principality Stadium thing is if you're held up over the line now it becomes a goal line dropout you lose possession you could be so much more aware as a as any place say number eight on that occasion it's almost better as you're alluding to Sean to, just, just to stay short and, and reset and go again but it's it's difficult, isn't it? You're, you're, you, at, you're at the Principality. You try telling an 18-year-old from Caerphilly on the Principality five metres out, he's got to place it back and meet the shot from the line. He saw his <laughs> name in lights then. And as the night goes on, that try is going from five metres back to every single person he tells as well, so there's no chance he's stopping there. But there's another opportunity here for, for Caerphilly. Yeah, it is. Look at him. He's beaten the first tackler. He thinks he's over there, but Klangum done so well. Two players get underneath him. He probably knows at that point. Oh, he made a bit of a mistake, but can't blame him for trying. They can really have a line out inside the Sangum 22. Noah Evans, the captain, taking aim. Yeah. 
finding Harvey picked in in the middle. The four's looking to rumble here. They haven't got a nudge yet. We think winning a meter or two, snaking inside. Shangum trying to get hands on the ball with Arwin or Lochlin. Side entry by the captain. Not sure he's asking why, but clearly he wasn't part of the, the original mall. Didn't come in from the back foot either. No, that's a tough one there for the referee. It did look like a penalty, but it has to be clear that he is coming in from the side, not from last feet. Let's have a little look at it here. See, the mall was brought to ground. He is definitely in from the side there. Referee should maybe have a word with him, but he's probably talked to him, saying, like, get out of there, no hands. O'Loughlin has continued, and therefore the penalty comes. Now, here's a chance. Evans told Pickton again, that partnership's working. Same, similar move, this time, Lewis Jones, the loose head. Shangum. Dealing with the first onslaught. Again, Kyle Philly using those big forwards, keeping it tight down the middle. Is that a penalty or try given? I think he's gone over there, Rose. Yeah, it's a try. Number eight. I wasn't sure to begin with, was there a ruck or therefore was he in the, in the back foot? But try has been given. And that's an important score just before the half. Well, held up moments ago. Sam Graves, he's determined to score, isn't he? he wants to put that name up there as a try scorer at the Principality Stadium. Well, there is no ruck formed, you know, and Clangum can look and say to the referee, well, but there's nothing there, there's no black and amber shirts bound or forming a tackle ruck, and therefore Graves understands that law, picks and goes over for a good try. Very impressive, but uh, even at a young age, to react to a, a law like that and to go over, and, and he's got his rewards. Because so many times we've seen in the past on the, on the professional level, how he's shown players bound on in the front of a ruck, picking and, and scoring, but not aware that they're not allowed to do it. The ball has to be in the back and picked up by the hindmost player. We keep saying to me that you know, this is very much a development phase. These boys are in at 18 years old, but it's been a good half from both teams. It's been a great half. By both teams, but Kyle Philly have controlled this contest in the WIU National Youth Bowl final. Four tries, 2 0. Kyle Philly, 22, Shankum 6. groups like this that can have children who've got all different abilities and they can just blossom in that ability. A lot of kids growing up like me are in the same position as me. It might take on rugby because they've seen someone that might look like them or from the same area as them doing that. rugby as a vehicle to empower people to see that they can actually do much more, then, then it, it, it's worth its weight in gold.
Welcome back to the Principality Stadium. It's the WRU National Youth Finals Day. And the second half of the ball final is about to start. Carfilly 22, Hangum 6. Following the first 35 minutes, Carfilly 4 tries, 2 0. With Fletcher picked in to restart for the boys in yellow and black. Hangum and Carfilly in their traditional green and white. Dealing with the restart and that's a good penalty to start off the second period for Hangum. They needed an early score and I think they'll probably need more than three points now, Sean. Yeah, they do, although he's a dead-eye kicker, Fletcher Picton. He's always fancying his chances in and around this, this range. But it's a bit of a freebie, really, isn't it? Straight from the kickoff, a penalty that they didn't expect. So to get that three points to start the second half, give him that confidence can understand the decision but it's going to take on the evidence the first half a little bit more than three six nine points yeah, the coaches more than likely would have said first points on the board as soon as our whistle goes so they can't do more than that and like you say Sean it is probably a freebie but there is uh, there's a lot of work to do for him Picton has been laser eyed two from two this is third attempt Strikes it hard, strikes it well. Straight through the middle. Kyle Philly 22, Shan Gum 9. I suppose it does take it to within two converted tries, but have they really looked like scoring any tries? That's been the problem. Haven't really got close enough to the Kafili line, but they'll take it right after half time. Tom Lewis. Scruffy restart. Opportunity for Harry Makepeace to aim downfield. That's a lovely little nudge into the Kyle Philly half. And too good. Faster to play for Langrum. The kickoff penalty. And the kickoff exit. Yeah, it's going to do their confidence. Uh, no end of goods. Great clearance there from the full back. Almost well, least cleverly, the, the Kyle Philly coach. You're going to know him well. What would he be said half time? What type of character is he? What type of what, coach is he? What type of character is uh, he's one of life's characters to be fair and uh, the message he probably said is probably 18 plus rated but no I, th I think he probably would have said more of the same to be honest that Caffilly played an excellent first half of rugby. Uh, they carried hard, we, we spoke off in their front row, um, uh, the hooker especially Noah Evans, Lewis Jones all carried hard. Um, then their half backs as well pulling the strings. So I, I think he'd have been very pleased at, uh, at the half and just more of the same, really. Yeah, but two or three errors early on by Kyle Philly. And Shangum again, who've enjoyed the scrums. Probably have enjoyed a penalty 50% of the, of, of the scrums. They'll be hoping for more of the same. Yeah, and we saw a nice little strike play in the first half from a scrum in a similar position. Interesting setup behind. I think we'll see a similar sort of play. First job first to win the ball from the restart. It's there at the eight feet. Joe Phillips, Stramat coming in early, taking the man off the ball. That's a proper white park tackle. <laughs> nine on nine. Was the ball out? That's the thing. He thought it was, didn't he? Tyler Morris, and it is out, isn't it? Oh, yeah. to, to his credit, it, the ball has clearly gone past eight feet, and it's free, a free hit. So I think the officials are wrong there. Another one down for you. Uh. <laughs> That's a tough one, isn't it? For, for the pack going on, uh, going forward, it's tough for Joe Phillips to control it, and probably the nine has to wait when that scrum becomes stationary. Yeah, you want the ball moving forward as well as a ten, you know. And so sometimes, as much of an advantage it is, then the little details. That's a better that line up by Sangum. They've won the ball, the offload. Possession, a rare opportunity in the bit, in the Carfilly 22. It's fumbled forward. And that's going to be so frustrating for Sangum. A rare visit into the 22 and they, they can't capitalise. Nah, they didn't carry with any conviction there, did they? You know, they were, They've really got to 
get up ahead of steam there, get some explosive carries on that ball and burst across that Caffilly gain line. They didn't, they were a little bit timid there. And perhaps the way that's the difference between the two teams at the moment. 100%. You see Caffilly running with, with pace, with conviction, with aggression. But that looked really lacklustre there. They, they, you, from, even from up here, they never looked like making any inroads there. It's a penalty to Sandgrum. Seemed like a bit of an early shove from up here. I think they've got to capitalise on these uh, scrum penalties. It's keeping them in the game. And I think now, when you reflect back to the three points we question so after half time, it's probably a good decision. If Picton can nudge this over, it's just edging closer. Well, again, it was a freebie. And again, within the first five minutes, they, they cut six points out of their uh, Convilly score to take it down. Well, if this goes over, it's uh, it's ten points. So they, they can't have asked for much more in the first uh, in the start of the second half. Fletcher Picton taking his time. An important kick to bring it back to a 10 point game. No doubt about that one. Four from four for the centre. And Sangam just chipping away at that lead. I'm sure Kyle Philly will be looking over their shoulders. Feeling the pressure, feeling the heat. Well, Fletcher Picton doesn't look like missing today here at the Principality Stadium. And it might not be pretty, but it's effective. It's keeping Klangum in the game. Kyle Philly 22, Klangum 12 here at the Principality. Half an hour or so to go in this bowl final. And again, how often does it happen? You score, you switch off, you make an error. I, I coached professionally for over 20 years, all right, and you wouldn't believe. There's two things you wouldn't believe. How often that happens, and it's not the commentator's curse, <laughs> how often that happens, and if anyone's listening, how often the ball hits the crossbar or an upright in a game of rugby. Now, remember I said that, right? You know how many games you commentate on and work on? It's unbelievable. You wouldn't believe it. Graves. Second in the place on the back row, trying to release T Ryan Williams out wide. Jake Marsden cutting in, and this is where Cardiff has been so effective. And that's a good jackal by Fletcher Picton, realising the ball was available. To compete for comes from the back foot and gets his claws on that ball. I think, I think that's something definitely the coaches perhaps have got a message on from that period where Caffilly scored their tries. And so the midway through the first half, we were saying about yeah, they need to slow the ball up. They've had a couple of jackal penalties now, haven't they, that have, uh, have been important in crucial positions. Picton slightly slicing that one on the outside of his right boot. Again, Tom Lewis trying to draw those players with his runs. A nice little counter attack by you think Harry make pieces it the full back sensing half an opportunity to break from it inside his own 22 and another penalty for Sandgum and the penalty count must be racking up against Kyle Philly be it in the tight and the loose yeah, they've got to be careful haven't they you know referee might be just thinking about a yellow card for successive penalties particularly if they're in around the breakdown but it's certainly keeping them in the game Sandgum yeah, the referee is walking over, Alan Morgan. The referee having a chat with the captain, Noah Evans. Just explaining the penalty count is high. Fletcher picked them, just G in the clang of fans over that side who are just basking in the sun. No doubt. He'll have the freedom of the city of Langham if he carries on like this, <laughs> the way he's playing at the moment, to be fair to him. So good on him. That's a mistake by Ryan Williams. Not picked up by the touch judge or the referee. I think I'll be putting that on my list yeah. now on your show. <laughs> Again, putting pressure on the, on the fullback who deals with it on this occasion. Beats the first man. Kyle Philly will be relieved that the refereeing team missed that one. 
but maybe making up for a bad decision with a penalty. And if you warn him down in his own half, on the in the Shangum half, that should be another warning to Kyle Philly. And another three points to Shangum. Well, just have a little look at this. Ryan Williams thinks he gets it. Has that touched the line? Well, the flag hasn't got up. Has he gone forward? No decision. But credit Langham, they stuck at it, another kick down and a chase. And they got the penalty again. Now, it might not be the prettiest form of rugby. There are a number of ways to play rugby. And if it's a big scrum, a kicking game, win penalties, kick three points, and it's effective, keep on doing it. I don't think anyone within this Langham squad are going to give a damn about what they're doing, as long as they end up having more points like Caffili at the end of the game. Yeah, that's the name of the game, isn't it? Doesn't matter about all those other stats, it's the, the scoreboard that counts. It's overrated this running rugby anyway. <laughs> Fletcher Picton. Four from four becomes five from five. Kyle Philly 22, Shangum 15. One score game. Well, it's 9 0 in the second half to Clangum. That's the story. And fair play to them. They've done it through a kicking game, through a scrum. They've picked themselves up. Picton has kicked superbly. And all of a sudden, it puts a doubt in Caffilly's mind. And they deal with the restart. Clangum, and here they come. The Clangum crowd roaring. The boys onwards. This is where Clangum haven't. Enjoyed much success on the game line, but that's a, a decent carry. Looking to go wide, Kyle there in numbers. Picton, dumped to the ground, that's gone backwards, play goes on. And again, all the decisions come in the way of Shangum, and the referee is reaching to his pocket. There's one player going to the bin, who is it going to be? Cody Isn't Thomas. It? Cody Thomas in number 16. Well, it's been coming, hasn't it, Owen? It's been coming, we said. Successive penalties in and around the contact area. It's only a matter of time. He had a little word. And the penalty count racked up against Caffilly to their cost. So let's have a little look here. It's the tackler not rolling away again. Yeah, he's trapped in there, but you have to roll away. And you have to roll away towards the touch lines now. And he's been consistent on that as the referee to his credit. Yes, yeah, rolling east and west. That's the saying, isn't it? East and west, not north and south. Even something simple for Langham as, as just claiming that kickoff. And like you say, they've had a couple of mistakes whereby they've knocked it. You could see the confidence straight from the crowd, from the players, the carries that they made, straight from the, the phases initially from that. So they're uh, they're gonna feel as though they're well back in this now. Again, five man looking to the middle, nobody competing, and off the first time with Langham. Line going away. Carter Pritchard back on the field. Looking to pull the strings, looking to calm his side. Okay, fairly down a man, 14 men. Having to do this the hard way. We have got the players, they have got the capability. This and Shangum infringing. Lewis Jones. Space created out wide for Tom Lewis. Releases Jack Marsden. Bit of miscommunication off the foot of Lloyd Nash. According to the referee, balls available for Pritchard. Rodri Reese also back on the field, destructive in the first half hour. The big boys back on for Cadfilly. Again, working this one way well out wide, Williams towards. Amps, Amps, nearly hurdles his oncoming tackler. Well, I'm much more like it from Caffilly. They're almost back to their starting lineup. Less one guy that's been yellow carded, obviously, but lovely player. I'm really impressed with Tom Lewis at 10. He's got lovely, silky passing skills. Look at that one. Right in front of Ryan Williams, a 2v1. Good cover. Look how desperate they are for Langham in their cover defence. Tom Lewis, when he's in. The flow and on the front foot, silky player. Silky player indeed, and Shangum have suffered a few injuries 
in this game and is another player down receiving some treatment near us. In the couple of Philly boys feeling the pace as well, receiving treatment for a bit of cramp. But in terms of, of the structure of the youth league here in Wales, what would be the future be for, for these teams? As we draw to the end of the season, promotion not, yeah, not available for no, them. But, not, not but, for but, the, but, that, but that's the priority, imagine. Can they go up and, and no, compete at a higher level? Well, it's 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 regionalised, sort of based on uh, either a meritocracy basis or a geography basis. We give the regions in terms of um, their own sort of view of whatever they feel is going to work best. Because whilst obviously there is a competitive element, the aim is to get as many youth players playing uh, rugby in Wales. So it's what works best. It's horses for courses at the end of the day, and it depends on certain areas. But there, there will be trophies available for the leagues that they're in. I know Caffili are well within the shot of their, their Dragons League. Uh, Tlangham the same as well. It's always nice to finish the season with a bit of silverware. And again, it, Sean, it's a, it's a rare occasion outside of school, school rugby, youth rugby. Probably your last opportunity to be playing with your mates before you go to senior rugby. It is. A lot of uh, young men and women they go to university as well they might go away from the, the local town village whatever it is um, but it is and it does create a huge amount of camaraderie you know you're some of your best memories when you play youth rugby you uh, you're close-knit mates and of course now then it's the big step up to senior rugby if you do stay at home and that's a massive gap so this is the opportunity to play with guys you see age, probably been to school with knock around with and um, it's a great occasion for them, you know, it really is. They can say that they've played at the Principality Stadium. Yes, the losers, the runners-up will be desperately disappointed, but they look back in future years and cherish these moments. Yeah, but this game is on a knife edge. Cad Philly 24 to Llangum 15. You can imagine when you, a side who's crossed for four tries would be well in control, but Cad Philly... Although they've done so, not in control of this contest. Sangum scrabbling, scrapping for the ball from the line out, somehow keeping their hands on it. They're looking to get out of their own territory. Aiming back towards Picton and his cannon of a boot. Doesn't connect all that cleanly. Ball still in play. Bobbles to Ryan Williams. Williams, the rugby league player. Lovely set of feet. Aims a kick downfield into the 22. Nice little nudge. A good chase by Nash. And Shangum under pressure. And Nash potentially claiming a try. That was an excellent kick from the fullback there, to be fair. Absolutely brilliant. It was a fantastic kick. It was just nestled in the sort of five meter area, just in from touch. And look how difficult that is for Flynn Chunk to uh, to deal with. Probably doesn't know what to do there. And the follow-up coming up from Lloyd Nash. And now a chance for Caffilli to put a bit of a stamp on what's been a lead that's been narrowed by the boot of Fletcher Picton. Graves the eighth carrying scorer in the first half and he's See for a second, he may have been robbed of the ball. Lewis Jones, again amongst it. And this is where Carfield been potent. A metre short. The forwards again trying to cross the line, squirming. They've scored. And it looks like the second row of Rodri Reese, who's been ever so impressive. And the Giants, a man can't be stopped. Yeah, a lot of the starters are back on. And they made a difference. They've gone back to type, haven't they? It all came from the pressure from Ryan Williams' kick, which forced the scrum, and it was the pick and go in the drive. Look at the spin here. There's two players on him, but he spins to the open. Great play, great awareness from Rodri Reese, the big man, to spin across, get over the line. He's delighted. That puts Caffilly with a bit more of a buffer on the scoreboard. That's an important score, not only to extend the lead, but it does. Almost extinguish those hopes of Sangum. And with a kick to come by Ryan Williams. 
who has forgotten his kicking boosts at home. So that one's easy enough. Over by Williams and Kyle Philly restore a respectable and healthy lead. Kyle Philly 29, Sangum 15. It probably says a lot that that's five tries for Kafili to none to Klangum. And as much as they're hanging in with the boot of Fletcher Picton, tries are really the only way that they're going to get back and win this bowl final. Lovely restart on the money, but claimed by Kyle Philly. And Kyle Philly have, if you probably look at this statistically and cut it down to the restarts, etc., etc., one. The majority of battles but they seem to be on the wrong side of the referee yeah, i don't think Langham are going away are they they've got tenacious spirit in there a lot of fans and a bit of pride so they're doing really well they yeah. brought six or seven buses down from the village today so they're not going to see their boys give up that easily and again this is an excellent position to get right back into it after the uh, kafili try Langham be like a ghost town today if he tumble we'd flow in through it Last one, I'll turn the lights off, I think, sure. <laughs> right then, can Sangum concert a period of pressure on this Cadfilly try line? They need a score, they need a seven pointer. And again, Cadfilly competing well in the line out. Disruptive, destructive. And Sangum back towards their own half and have to strike from deep. Somebody join a show and go. Up the guts by the forwards. Jake Thomas, I believe, isolated. And here comes Kyle Philly with Pritchard aiming the kick downfield. Charged down by Arwin O'Glochlin. Just a little bit of his own worst enemy sometimes. Carter Pritch Pritchard, isn't he? He's so energetic and excited it was the right thing to do but he had tom lewis outside him good carry by sam graves not a clear release in there young hawkins jones trying to win the ball on the floor and scrum after in the back row his job yeah pitcher this time just held the ball in two arms fell to the ground at the safe slow yourself down win Real sight of winning this bone final. Two scores ahead. Let's just get it down there and build some pressure again. We see here now. In comes the jackal tackle, if you like, from the scrum half and doesn't no clear releases. The referee gives another penalty away. You could put a tick in that box as well. He's a good decision by the referee. He'd be fantastic today, hadn't he? <laughs> no, it's a tough, a tough job being out in the middle there. He's done well, isn't he? You know, I think he's weighed up the scrum. And done well there, given penalties rightfully to Klangum. He's stood in a line-out to ensure there's offside lines and straight throws. And then he gave a warning and gave a yellow card where it was necessary, Adam, to his yeah, credit. Yeah, definitely. There was, uh, there was absolutely no issue with that yellow card. And like you say, it was, uh, it, it was coming. Now then, Kyle Philly will be hoping with more replacements coming onto the field for either side. Rolling subs, of course, at this level. And the kick doesn't find touch. Chance for Fletcher Picton to pump that one downfield. Stays alive. Bobbles towards Ryan Williams. Williams dances around his man. <laughs> Elusive. He breaks free, and it's a good. Claw by Joe Phillips to drag the full back down. He was nearly away. He looked a bit like Capuzzo from Italy there, didn't he? <laughs> Squeezing through. And a good jackal again by Sangum getting in there. Believe it to be Yeyan. Oh, is he Yeyan great? It was a great run by Ryan Williams. He hasn't had much opportunity. Uh, Wales under 18, rugby league. So he'd be used to, to coming from the backfield and countering like this, but he's not the biggest guy in the field, but certainly he's fleet of foot and almost got through that. He was away then. If that uh, last Langer defender and kept hold of his shirt, there was no doubt about that. Do you know, the reason I mentioned Capuzzo, I was commentating here 
in this very spot on the Wales Italy game where Capuzzo got it just there and went through and we know what happens then unfortunately <laughs> but it just I just had a little flashback <laughs> of course another injury for San Gro number six Sam Rickwood holding his wrist his day at the principality potentially over I've got a feeling that's his finger it looks like yeah. one, one's in heaven one's in Devon over there I think at the moment <laughs> I don't think it looks, uh, it's not going to be too nice for him at the moment. No. <laughs> well, it's Sandgum. 15 points to the name. But yet a try. A try would be nice, wouldn't it? You know, for one of them to get over. You know, obviously, it would put them within the score as well. This isn't dead and buried yet, but they do need a try. Again, back to the scores and line out. Coming in late into the middle towards Olochlin. And not straight. And that's been a killer. It's been an Achilles heel for Shangum. The lineup hasn't functioned at all. And if you haven't got platform, if you haven't got a restart, it's a tough old game to play. Yeah, you're, really, you're, you're right there. They've tried to shorten the line out, haven't they? They've tried to get Joe Phillips in number eight uh, and Dom Asson into the midfield on the short liners. But you have to get that straight. And that's why the referee has stood there and he's picked it up every time. Langamuka said McIntosh, he's carried hard, he's defended well, but his line out, his arrows haven't been uh, as well as he would have liked today. There's no doubt about that. Good match by the front eight. Ball released, crossfield kick by Tom Lewis. Towards that sunshine. More release. Dealt with well by Vicky Van Davis on the right hand side. For Langum, maybe caught in the sun slightly. I know I keep saying it, boys, but. The classiest player on the field for me is Tom Lewis. Uh, he's got it all. He can do a lot. His passing skills, running skills, kicking both feet. I like him. So is that the, the man of the match already given? <laughs> no, I, I, I may be just setting that up. There's <laughs> <laughs> been some good performances in there. We know Rodri Reese has gone well. Lewis Jones, you know, has, has carried really, really well. Carter Pritchard from Clangham side. There's quite a few as well. So still up for grabs, those. <laughs> Look, yeah, the trophy's still up for grabs as well there's still plenty of time, we've said it all, all game still plenty of time, 29-15 a couple of scores for Shangum to so get one well those knees will be jangling in the Caerphilly ranks but first things first they need the line that works the functions, they need possession Shorten it, but again, they can't oh. find the target. They go to the front, try to make it as easy as they can. Just not clicking. And they'll be looking at back of this final. And that'll be a sore subject, I'm sure. Yeah, it's been disappointing, you know. And poor old Seb McIntosh will get a lot of the blame, but, you know, as a unit, they probably have to look at themselves for the rest of the season and just put that right. Kai Philly on the back foot. Again, using the runners at a, a good carry by Sam Graves. He's been one willing runner. Replacements, Liam Shaughnessy in the Redstrom Cup. That's better by Sangum. There's been a trend, hasn't it, that they've been competing well for the ball on the deck. Here's a quandary. You know, three points isn't enough now. Line up not functioning. <laughs> they went for scrums in the first half. And, uh, but, but from a coaching perspective here then you know you've chosen the line which is supposed to make things easier is it just too much movement that you should keep a static how, how do you rectify that in this period of time yeah well, you can't can you you know I think the one problem has been is Arwin O'Loughlin has been the only target he's called to himself if he's calling every single time not that Caffili have competed but just the mechanics of it all hasn't functioned has it Adam it's, they've got a very athletic line out Caffili and like you say when your options are limited and you've got your opposition who are up front, middle and back and, and able to move as quick as they have been, it's, it's very difficult to compete against then. Whatever happened to the old two-man? And <laughs> <laughs> Seb McIntosh with the ball in his grasps. To the front, has worked this time O'Clochlin. Getting his hands on the ball, the 
Rolling more, trundling forward, three, four metres one, going across field, crabbing across. That's once called the referee. They'll have another nudge before they have to release. McIntosh, the hooker, goes again, stripped away, and pumped downfield. And that'll be a heartbreaker for Khangum. They did the first task, which they struggled with. The McIntosh stripped. Well, they'll be so disappointed with that. It was a decent mall, wasn't it? The good setup was good. But Lachlan just called hard and flat at the front. McIntosh looked dangerous. They could have built some phases there, but it's well stripped in the tackle. Could easily be a penalty, potentially. Yeah, had he gone to ground? Yeah. yeah. Credit to Caffilly's defence there as well, because they were really starting the motor Langham, and they'd done well to stop that and then strip it and clear their lines. Again, Lachlan over the top. Not straight. Referee keeping his standards. Scrum down 15 meter for Kyle Philly. And Kyle Philly be well aware that the clock is ticking away, isn't it? Time's starting to run now, you'd say, for Llangum. And just keep control of the possession. Keeping control of the scoreboard. And again, feeding. That's a cheap, cheap free kick to give away. The Thangum will need to run it or quickly go for the scrum. Hawker Jones in the tap and go. It's a big carry by Jake Thomas. Flattened in the line out. Dangerous tackle. The referee's arm is out. Correction is Kieran Sinclair with the carry. It's better from Picton. Got his head down, accelerated into the contact there. Yeah, Sangum haven't given up, have they? The captain of Lachlan stepping inside as well. Needs support. Kyle winning the collisions on the hole. Again, Keelan Sinclair with the carry. Wins a bit more yardage there. Stepping inside, Owen yeah. Phelps. We're back to the original penalty from that tackle. It's more like it for Langum, wasn't it? Better carrying, as you say, Adam Picton, direct, cross the gain line. But where's it been? It's a little bit too little, too late. Ewan Hawkins Jones looks, you know, really lively around the base. But, uh, some of their carrying is a bit too bit upright. They've had the ball ripped a lot. It's going to be frustrating that it's taking them so this time of the game then to really sort of get their head down and, and really sort of have a physical element to their carrying but um, again whether it's too little too late we'll wait and see a yellow card have we yeah to uh, tom lewis with well, sam graves with a, with a tackle which could have been a card if it wasn't technically right the tackle in terms of the play being flipped in the air but the referee happy they were it was for sufficient intent with the shoulder and arms by Sam Graves. Plus the second player into the bin by Cad Philly. About four minutes to go. Oh. But again, I, I, don't, I don't like having a go at officials, but that decision's been made from 20 metres away. You know, when there's a kick to the corner, it needs to be they, should be, they should be up there ready so they can make an informed decision. Clangum devastated by that one. Yeah. We can't feel down to 14 and only four minutes on the clock. You think that was the probably last opportunity to try and, and get a score to make it a, a one score game. And Kyle Philly, if they can control this properly, then the bowl will be on the way back at the 470. Well, Alan Rogers did some damage earlier on, Alan, uh, Adam. But no, Matthew Cole is on, 17, loose head. Looks a bit of a handful as well. Yeah, and Kieran Sinclair, the other uh, replacement tight end who's come on as well. They uh, they both look like good boys. So there's something in the water down in uh, Langham for front row <laughs> forwards. Yeah, get the academy scouts down there. <laughs> That's a good pick up by Carter Pritchard on the base, but he ran away from the support players, knocked it on, and Langham come again. Using the forwards, 
The hooker said McIntosh. Using Demi Runners and it's fumbled in midfield. The referee seen something here. Penalty. Or has the assistant referee come in with something? No scrum. To Thangum. So Sean with, with a few minutes remaining. Might as well go through the, the plays who stood out again. Who, who's caught you right? Well, it's been a number. Ryan Williams, a fullback, has been lively, hasn't he? We've seen some good counter attacking from him. Carter Pritchard and Nines look lively. Captain Noah Evans, well, got the first try of the game and has led well. And the line out drills have been good. Rodri Reese for the second row has been round the field for Clangum. Well, I think the scrum half, Johan Hawkins Jones, has been really lively. The captain, Arwen O'Loughlin, has, has never given up. Alid Rogers in the scrum. But as I say, the, the standout play for me has been Tom Lewis. He just looks a bit of a class act. Fangum finding some space. The kick slightly misdirected. Ryan Williams. Good offload in there, keeps it alive now. Kyle Feely can break from deep. They're in behind the first line of defence. Fangum scrambling back. Competing at the breakdown, trying to slow this ball down. Flying up in ones, however, the Fangum defence. Arwin O'Loughlin trying to slow possession. A kick over the top, identifying space. Pritchard into the basket. Four oh. Harrison Parsons. One more pass. Oh. Lovely ball. And Kyle Philly. I think he's been held up. I think oh. he's been held up. What a tackle. That would have been a, a superb try to round off. A superb day for Kyle Philly. I'm not and sure who did it with Langum if he was the captain. His captain, fantastic, but a beautiful trip from chip from Pritchard. The follow-up coming up from Harrison Parsons. A great offload here. And the following up. Oh, look at this. It's the winger, Iwan Davis. Superb play. And then O'Loughlin came and added on the floor. And he holds his head in his hands. Liam Shaughnessy. A chance to score in the stadium in the dying moment. Huge credit to Ewan Davis for that. The game is likely gone, and to make that cover tackle and that effort and dog to keep him up over the line and keep that score down, that, that's that's really should be commended there. Superb play in attack and defence by both sides. Youth rugby at his best. I think it epitomises the effort of both teams, isn't it? Yeah, the resilience of Clangum to just stick in there after half time, get themselves back in the game. They haven't scored a try, but they've been a thorn in Caffilly's side and has taken all of Caffilly's effort and the respect now shown by taking these three points. They've been their own worst enemies at times, Langham, unfortunately, and I think when they look back, they'll, they'll realise that. But again, like we, we've said throughout the day, the, the whole day and the whole event and that, that's something that can't be taken away regardless of the score at the end of the game. Yeah, that's three more points to make sure if there's any doubt that Caffilly will be Lifting that bowl in a few minutes' time. Kyle Philly 32, Langum 15. Yeah, that puts the tin hat on it. You know, 17 points. Uh, two converted tries and a penalty to tie the game. It's not going to happen, but credit both teams. It's been a keenly contested match. Contrasted styles, and that's that. And that is that. Kyle Philly. Celebrations, Aspar. The subs are on their way. And Kyle Philly are the WIU National Youth Bowl champions, beating Thangum by 32 points to 15. Many congratulations to Kyle Philly. And they have been shown probably the strongest side from start to finish. Yeah, they are the team that dominated the physical collisions. They didn't have the upper hand in the scrum, but they had a better line out. And they probably had on the day better ball carriers. And they're certainly the side that scored the tries. They were really clinical once they got in the 22. They had half backs that dictated the game when they were in possession. But credit Clangum, they never gave up. They chipped away, they played to their strengths, they had the better scrum, they won the penalties, kicked the goals. But on the day, Clay Philly were just too good and they deserved winners. Yeah. Five tries in all. Noah Evans, Tom Lewis, Carter Pritchard, Sam Graves. And Rodri Reese crossing the whitewash for Kyle Philly. Too much power. 
and Sandrum couldn't deal with the physicality. But in comparison, Sandrum are only a small village of about 2,300 against a side like Kyle Philly. They can hold their held up, uh, heads up high and a very respectable performance. Oh, without a shadow of a doubt, Langham have had some uh, some great results this season and against some established teams within sort of the Pembrokeshire area, like Half the West, Narbuth, Crummock. But to be here for them when, again, at the start of the season, it wasn't even likely they were going to have a youth side to uh, to, to, to run Caffili all the way in the final of the, the National Youth Bowl is uh, is an outstanding achievement and it's a credit to the, uh, to the, to the village. It is a credit to Sangam and to Pembrokeshire. It was East against West, and East taking the spoils in this first match. I wonder what these boys will be saying now then. It's a proud day. And it's a day they will cherish for the rest of their lives, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, there you go. I think a beer or two may be drunk later on as well. Yeah, I don't think they'll be heading back to Caffili. Too sharpish. They may get into tow. You know, it's Easter weekend. They've been building up to this one. They go and celebrate with their fans. Huge following for both teams, but it's green and white. Better cheering. Fantastic effort from Caffili. Let's credit the coaches as well. Reese Cleverly, Jason Lewis put all the hard work in behind the scenes planning sessions getting them to this motivating and it's not easy picking a team for a final i can tell you and they've rotated their players really well adam so that all players had an experience of the stadium today yeah it was they, they've utilized the the rolling replacement rule in youth rugby and it's it's worked well and they, they've given the full squads ample opportunity and they've all done themselves proud and that, that goes for both sides as well to be honest yeah, as you see it's been a bruising encounter I feel the Sangro boys having to leave the field early doors with a few knocks, bumps and bruises. But hopefully they'll recover and be wearing the shirts of Sangro proudly for the remainder of the season. The presentation party seems to be ready, but going through the traditional tunnel, a mark of respect by the players to each other a chance and an opportunity in front of the crowd as well to lap up the cheers yeah moments they'll cherish they'll never forget you know, all concerned very very special and credit the welsh rugby union for having this day and days like this we've got more tomorrow we had other finals days with the ladies last week you know it's it's fantastic to uh, spread the word of the game for the young fans that are coming the young players of the clubs to see these youth players and hopefully emulate them in the future. This will be up on a board in the club for years to come. The bowl youth winners and um, they will look back when they finish playing, having a pint in the club saying, I was I was there, I was part of that team. And so that's what it's all about. And it could be potentially the only time they'll, they'll have the opportunity to play in the stadium. It doesn't happen all that often. There are more, more opportunities thanks to the, the road to the Principality Series. Ten days of competition in all this is day four. <laughs> Nearly halfway through. It's <laughs> a, a long old state for you There's boys. Only another 168 games to go or something like <laughs> It seems like that, I think. Anyway, O's. But uh, no, it is, it, it's a lot of hard work through through a number of people. Well, uh, loads of people involved with our, our stadium staff, our hospitality staff. Um, a special mention to Carl Scales, Anthony Palmer and our apprentice team who uh, we couldn't do it without them because of the work that they put in through the days and uh, they're, they're absolutely outstanding and a credit to uh, to the union to be fair. I'm amazed Adam you found the time to come up here and join us in commentary you've managed pretty much all of this so it's a credit to you as well and uh, you must be very proud. As I say, it's, it's a team effort. There's there's plenty that, that go through this, and this is this is the easy part. Now all the hard work is done. It's nice to sit back and enjoy it. We'll um, we'll have to kick the boys out to the changing rooms as soon as they can, because they're all going to want to stay in there as long as they can doing it here. But uh, that's probably the last hard part of the day then. I can tell, tell you in my day, I had some players. It didn't take too long, so they wanted to get into town that quick. So um, I'm sure the Caffili boys will be the same. <laughs> Yeah, the presentation ceremony has begun on the field. The refereeing team receiving their medals. And the presentation team consists of 
Ray Wilton. And I believe Geraint John. The WIU Community Director. We have to have a word out for the officials. You know, it's the old adage, you, know, you can't have a game without a, a referee, but certainly the touch judges, the assistant referees, the, the, the fourth officials, they give up of their time. And it's not just today. It's the youth games throughout the land all season. And yes, they make errors, they're only human, but credit to them. As a former referee, I, I can uh, yeah, doff my hat to that as well. It's not, it's not a, a happy place to be at, at times, but it, it's an enjoyable part of the game. You're, you're part of, of the on-field activities. You seem to you, you contribute to the game as a referee. And as you said, Sean, there's no game without a refereeing team. You see Geraint John presenting the Llan Groom team with their deserved medals. They'll obviously be disappointed not to leave with the bowl itself. However, getting here in itself is an achievement. Pembrokeshire boy, getting John as well, of course, so he'd be particularly proud and impartial, but all <laughs> Clangum from that neck of the woods. So a nice moment for, for him too. But you can see they're disappointed, but they'll reflect back uh, with fond, fond memories of today. His impartiality went right out the window when Alpha West won the, the women's bowl <laughs> last weekend, to be fair, Sean. So there was no sitting uh, on the fence there, uh, let me tell you. I guess so. Yeah. I thought as much. <laughs> and the coaches are out. Here they are. The ones again who give up their time. They've done a sterling job as well, considering there wasn't a team at the beginning of the year. They've had to muster all the resources they could bring together a team. I think, per, this is a personal view, I think it's important to have trophies, to have winners and losers. I think young men, young girls like this, they have to learn to win, they have to understand how to lose, you know, how to take a loss and come back strong, really do. And it's how, how you deal with the loss as well, as always. It, if you deal with it well, it'll spur you on to better things and it'll motivate you to develop as a player, as a person. But as we see, Kyle Philly, proud of course of their club of their badge and they've contributed to the successful history of Kyle Philly RFC it's an interesting theme you say about picking yourselves back up from the lost arrows because the common theme that we have through well, I've done this for a number of years now and we have post-match presentations in our players lounge where we ask representatives of the clubs and the players to come up and more often than not they will say we've had a great experience of it we want to do it again next year and get back here so like you say it's always uh, impressive to see themselves already thinking about picking themselves back up and and coming back to go one step further again and uh, as you said earlier on in the game these boys are, are young in in the youth team system they have maybe another year or two in the, under their belts and and the team could be back here definitely. next year. Yeah, definitely. I'm better for it. There's going to be a, uh, a large number of both sides that will still be involved. And the 16 players coming through, it only takes a couple of them to fit in well. And they're uh, they're well on their way to uh, to coming back in 12 months' time. And here he is. The captain, Noah Evans, stepping up to receive the ball. And his teammates waiting for him. I wonder if somebody's got some champagne tucked up their shirt somewhere to, to <laughs> pop the bottle. No glass or champagne allowed on that pitch, show. There, <laughs> there'd be no chance of getting anything like that on it today. But saying that, with Reese Cleverly winning coach, you never know now. And we are the WIU National Youth Bowl final winners, Kyle Philly. And O Evans holding the trophy aloft. Or well, some cut glass like that, he's got to have some safe hands. Congratulations once again to Kyle Philly Rugby Football Club. Best is hope now that this is the start of the journey for these young players, that they progress and we see them fuel our senior game, whether it be in the national divisions, in the Premiership, Championship, on the regional rugby and hopefully Wales. Yeah, and getting those photos. <laughs> they had to be one, didn't they? They had to be one. Getting those photos that will live for years to come in the clubhouse and i'm sure that plaque will get pride of place as well and once again congratulations to Thangum for their efforts in this contest 
for a superb final for Carfilly. Five tries to nil winners, 32 points to 15, the final score. And Carfilly have been crowned the National Youth Under 18's bowl final. And if you missed some of the action earlier on, here are the highlights. Thank you.
Whether you're playing in the shadows of rugby's greatest fortress, or in Wales' wild interior, Thomas Williams will score for Wales. You're part of our team. Your team. the corner they come through Snowsell and Jasmine Joyce gets there the custodian of this jersey represents everyone else who wears it from the verdant valleys of the south to the craggy mountains of the north a try scored here began way back there. Hannah Jones seals this victory for Wales. Because every player's journey starts at a rugby club somewhere. Without you, we would never get to witness this. This jersey is your jersey. This game is your game. It's where we all, through the chosen few, become one. Umline Cymru. been an initiative at Fitbed, fund run by the WIU and currently today we're working uh, here within the Dragons region with all the disability children from around our region. It's lovely to see them all today here. I was very excited for today to meet up with the, the trainers, the coaches, uh, all, my, all my friends from normal rugby training just to have a day out. As a mother, to see Regan playing with other children today is just a godsend. Like, without the inclusion sport, Regan wouldn't have anything. As where we live, we haven't got any um, football teams, rugby teams that will take on children with additional needs. So this is very, very important. Ready? Come on, sweetheart. Go on, as you go. Oh, 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 I had it. Wow. You are so strong. My son is Leo, he's nine years old and he's got Down syndrome. You need groups like this that can have children who've got all different abilities but with a disability um, and they can just they can be blossoming that ability then, you know, in that sport. It is respite for myself as well because I can send him here and then he just has fun with, with meeting new friends and building his confidence. Rugby is a game for everybody and it should be a game for everybody um, and I think now the, the Union and the Dragons and, and the other regions alike are really focusing on that inclusion, on, on those inclusion strategies to make sure that everything's accessible no matter what disability you have. So we like to think that these sort of things are the, are the kickstart for those children then to move forward and enjoy rugby.
The new changing facilities are fantastic. Brings a real brightness for our, for our walk-in values. We ask the players just to concentrate on the rugby element side of things and close work and group have worked hard to let the players do that and the changing rooms are certainly one, of the, one part of that. It's part of their toolkit. Well, this changing room, for example, um, the plasterboard was falling off the ceiling. Um, there was a lot of damp and mould in here. We've got under sixes to youth and two senior teams running, so we need all the changing rooms running all the time. So the facilities, grand. we wouldn't have been able to do it without the WRU. We had such hot weather, and um, putting the ventilation system in the attic was a bit of a, an arduous task, so they had to pull off for a week. But yeah, so it was really quick, yeah, really happy with the work and the, the contractors. It means a lot. As a club and a community, we've been on a journey for about seven, eight years. Uh, really incorporating bleed black and amber as, uh, as a club motto uh, and that does uh, transpire for, from million juniors up to seniors and back again. We couldn't have done it without the WRU backing because of the, the cost of the changing rooms to be done. We just wouldn't have been able to with the funds that we've got. We've been happy with the last 125 years and hopefully with the WRU backing we can get through the next 125 years plus. that can have children all, all different abilities and they can just blossom in that ability. A lot of kids growing up like me are in the same position as me. They might take on rugby because they've seen someone that might look like them or from the same area as them doing that. rugby as a vehicle to empower people to see that they can actually do much more, then, then it, it, it's worth its weight in gold. Another need rugby. Cymru. Thomas Williams will score for Wales. Richin Han on Team Me, Ech Team Chi. All right, the corner they come through snow, so the Jasmine Choice gets there. My Cade Wad a Chris Hun and Kunrachioli Pau Barat in a Wisco. Ah, Josh Number 10, Harry Watts. Number 11, Harvey 
Dryer. Number 12, Gabe McDonald. Number 13, Will Thomas. Number 14, Isaac Fair. And number 15, Kyle Williams. And to the forwards then, number 1, Finley Eller. Number 2, Bill Reese. Number 3, Jeff Gaines. Number 4, Sean Wells. Number 5, Reese Reed. Number 6, John Gower. Number seven, Will Hill. Place in Stadium Principality. A warm welcome back to the Principality Stadium. And that's the trophy that's up for grabs. The WIU Youth Plate is on the way. And Ammerford and Burry Port will be fighting for the right to lift that glistening trophy here at the home of Welsh rugby. Sean Holly is beside me once again, Owen Gwynedd. Uh, also, Chris Owen, struggling with his headset. <laughs> we'll have a word in a second, but let's have a look at the team sheets before we get on with this afternoon's second game. We've already seen one final, as we see Ammonford, also part of this one, with Jake Lewis, Sam Porter, the captain at half-packs, Tana Evans, Thomas Raybould in the centre for Am uh, Ammonford with Tom Davis, Fraser Gregory and Lewis Thomas, the back three. And the forwards, Austin Jones, Yeyan Phillips, Caleb John, the front row, Toby Davis, Puck Amelink, the second row, and the loose forwards, Emrys Davis, Josh Beswick and Aidan Watts. And the replacements and the ones who were hoping to bring on some extra energy towards the end of the game. Toby Jenkins, Liam Morris, Johan Thomas, Noah Porter, Connor Quinn, Stefan Wynne Williams. And they're the replacements and a team representing Hridaman, Ammonford, and Burry Port, Porth Towin, Jack Davis, and Harry Watts, 9 and 10. Gabe McDonald and Will Thomas. And the back three, Harvey, Brian, Kyle Williams, and Isaac Sayer. And the forwards, Finley Eller, Thier Rees, Jack Gaines, with Sean Wells and Chris Reed behind them. Josh Price, the number eight, with Joe Gower and Will Hurley on the flanks. Kai ha Howard, Oshan, Feltwell, Yeyan Calford, Thier Davis, Sam Saltiel, Leon Bryan, Theo Bevan, and Ryan Jones, the replacements. And the sun is still, sun is still shining here at the Principality. And Sean, we enjoyed the first game. The second game, Armadford against Buddy Port will be a, a step up again, I imagine. Yeah, it would be the plate. The ball was an exciting game, contrasting styles, all right, but um, this plate final has added spice of a bit of a local derby, Buddy Port and Armadford. Down in the Scarlets region, no love loss, I suppose. Players will know themselves really well, but I'm really looking forward to this one. And the, the pitch is looking great. Chris, welcome to the box. Good afternoon, both. Pleasure to join you. Yeah, ready for this one? Yeah, looking forward to it. If it follows the standard of the first final, we're in for a cracker in this uh, Cardiff sunshine. Yeah, the sun, the sun is out, and the fans have come down as well once again to support their teams. We've had a great support in the first final between Kyle Philly and Shangum. Kyle Philly taking the spoils in the bowl, but in the plight, the voices are already booming here in the Principality, and the teams are stepping down this legendary tunnel where so many famous faces have trodden down the path as Ammonford and Berry Port run on this pristine principality pitch, the home of Welsh rugby. And can they write their name in the history book, books of their local clubs? We said it for the Bolos, didn't we? Such a big occasion for these fellas. The coaches, all the fans here who travel up from the West. There'll be some trepidation, there'll be some nerves out there at the moment. The first five minutes will be a little bit hazy and chaotic. They're pumped up. And once they settle down, I'm sure we're in for a cracker. Yeah, as you see, the mascots jog off. It's a day for the friends, families, towns, villages. 
And it's a moment to make your club proud, isn't it? As you see, Armerford in the blue and black. We're we'll playing from left to right. With Sam Porter, the captain, ready to kick off. And Birdie Port in black with the blue strips down the sides. Leon Rees, the referee, blows his whistle to start this plate final. As the ball finds his way into the far, way into the far touch line, just tipped in. So it's a scrum down, Birdie Port ball. If you're a front row forward and both teams, you're absolutely delighted with that start. Within a minute, you got the first scrum, all line out. Uh, you can get stuck into a, a set piece, everything you've been planning for all week. Now they've opted for, for the line out, have Birdie Port. You've secured early possession. Harry Watts running around, bringing in Gay McDonald. Who's passing, putting pressure on. Isaac Sayer on that far side. And Jack Davis again trying to find a bit of space himself, and the referee with his arm out for a penalty. Yeah, we saw a lot of penalties, didn't we, in the in the first game in the bowl final? But uh, it's understandable. They'll be a little bit overzealous in some areas of the game, and uh, a big occasion, Chris, for these boys, isn't it? You know. For all of them, I would imagine, or many of them, first time out on the Principality Stadium. Yeah, it is for many. Uh, I know a number of the boys played for Uskell Stradi a couple of weeks ago in the under-18s final in the schools there. But you're right, you know, it's a huge occasion seeing the faces of everyone as they're coming into the stadium and having the whole experience. Barry Port, a bit of a serial club, attending the uh, Principality in its recent history. Across its men's, its women's were here last week and now the youth. So they must be doing something right there. They yeah. are. But can they get an early score? That's the question. And I say brilliant carry for Burry Port into the 22. They come. Second row, Rhys Reed. Offering himself. And the backs take the responsibility. Here he is, Reed again, using his hands. The big man releasing Joe Gower, the back rower. Davis and Watts combining again. The, the loose forwards out wide. Hurley involved. You can see Ammonford's defensive ploy, not committing any numbers to rucks at the moment, they're just dumping and fanning. Patience by Birdie Port, trying to put a bit of width on it. McDonald, space set it, arc around the outside, the offload, not gathered by Kyle Williams. Asking, was it a, a kick forward off the knee, but no fooling the referee there. Well, Kyle Williams tried to disguise that as a bit of a kick through. But it did go out of hand, referee right on the mark, Leon Reese. Lovely bit of play, lovely hands in the outside channels here. It'll show and go, through he goes, got the offload away, but just took his eyes off it. K.O. Williams a little bit high. He dotted it down, but it didn't mean anything. Yeah, I'm just noticing Burry Port, well, they're sharing the load with some of their ball carriers, some dangerous players there. So yeah. Yeah. First yeah. scrum of the, uh, of the contest. Ammonford seems to get a slight nudge on. Let's be careful here, Ammonford, not to overplay. Maybe try to get a base for a cleanest kick. That's hooked, that's pulled along the floor. Chance for Kaya Williams to make amends. Gets around his first man, puts on the afterburners. Going across field, taking the space off. Isaac Sayer. Knocked on in the tackle. You can see the ambition there of Barry Port, you know, a loose kick for the middle of the field. Went to the edge to play there, and just a little bit of poor recital then, retention in both uh, attacks. Otherwise, they could be in a promising scoring position. Just the last pass again, wasn't it? No, not going to hand, but they have the intent to offload in the wider channels. Just watch it. Isaac Sia inside to Will Thomas. And then... Is there anything off the ball there? Don't so sure. Yeah, Ammonford. To be high alert on these wide channels. Pretty poor. More than prepared to, to play a bit of rugby in this vast, expansive playing area. And again, has been nudged forward on, on the deck. Some nerves maybe coming into it there. 
Yeah, like I said, same in the bowl final. Just these first five or ten minutes, just until they get sort of temperature of the stadium, the feel of the ground, the pace of the game. You're going to expect these sort of errors, but it'll settle down. Yeah, you know, in the week, the coaches of both teams would have spoken around how to start the game, not making any early errors or any score concedes. It's nervy to start with, but like you said, Sean, I'm sure they'll settle down. And then uh, that game plan for the first five minutes is out the window after the first kick. <laughs> Classic coach, isn't it? You know, you put all that prep in, and then after a few minutes, you can go out the window quickly. Off the base, we come Josh Price, powers away, shrugs off the wannabe tacklers, five metres short, the number eight. Here they come again, Reed. <laughs> Hurley, prepared as a carrier, shifts the ball out towards Gay McDonald. McDonald towards the line, and that's the opening score. The inside centre crashes over, and nothing Amundford can do to stop. Very poor from taking the lead. Well, even though it's early stages, Owen, you felt something was coming. We've got a number of important ball carriers. Great pick off the base from Josh Price. Will Hurley, who made some carries early in the game. A little subtle pass out the back. And then I think it was Thomas Rebold who just jumped out of the line and missed the tackle on his inside shoulder. And that was enough for Guy McDonald to power through. Strong carry, strong running, great try. What a start. Great start. And Gay McDonald dusts himself down to slot the conversion. And after around five minutes here at the Principality Stadium, Ammonford nil, Birdieport a seven. And that's a great set there for the boys from Porto in. Already you can see the influence of Gabe McDonald, the uh, Wales under-18 squad member. Uh, he's a key linchpin you can see in this Bury Port outfit. Chris, how well would these boys know, know each other in terms of, of their club rugby beforehand? Yeah, I think, you know, they'd be an amalgamation of their local schools. They probably would have played uh, Dua Shield rugby, for example. So, I'm, you know, I think they'd be pretty uh, well known to each other through the varying representative entities and club teams. So there'd be plenty of individual battles confrontations going on there and being as well in the Scarlet region I'm sure some of them will be vying for places in regional rugby it always adds a bit of spice doesn't it when it's got that regional flavour to it who's the bragging rights down in that neck of the woods oh they'll know each other that's for sure they'll know each other after <laughs> play final they'll uh, go toe to toe but it's a great start from Burryport. definitely out of the blocks the better but um, the first couple of scrums, Amaford just have had the advantage. Now, we know what the regulations of this age group can't push all the way and they can't spin wrong too far, but that early nudge does get into the referee's mind, as we saw in the, uh, the bowl final. Yeah. We saw Sangum in control of the scrums, but again, off the base, Josh Price. Lovely play by Berry Port in the open field. Kaya Williams, great pace, a kick inside. It's a second rower there. Simon Wells on the chase. That one bounces as the rugby ball does. Curves nicely towards the oncoming Berry Port players. Joe Gower with six on his back, play nine. Now the regular nine, Jack Davis is back where he should be. Off low to Reese Reed again amongst it, the second rower. And Jack Davies playing like a back rower, picking off the base and then a metre short. And that's an important intervention by Ammonford in the off from under their own sticks. Maybe one of the wisest of moves. Well, ambitious from Ammonford, but what a break again. It's Josh Price again off the base. And the support and play from Kyle Williams, intelligent kick. But no support there, turnover, now Ammerford are coming back. Yeah, a couple of strong carries and all of a sudden Ammerford are up towards their own 10 metre line. Yeah, that's the danger. Yeah, it's pretty fractured and it? it's pretty loose. One team's turning over, then the next team's turning over. What would you be thinking there as a coach when you've just won a penalty in your own five metre? I think settle it down, kick the, <laughs> kick the touch and get out of Dodge City. But, you know, just looking from our company position here, Chris, it was a lovely kick coming in from Kyle Williams infield 
but there were over half of the Buddyport team way back not in support certainly nobody supporting the midfield and that resulted in a lack of numbers in the 22 so fitness might be an issue I don't know but as we said in the first game this is a bigger field a lot more space than what they used to here at the Principality yeah you see it a lot when they play the finals here it's kind of I think it really catches teams out about the size and the vastness of this pitch especially if it's a ball in time play is high you know there's a lot of yardage being carried out McDonald making light of that effort towards the post and Armiford ticking along or should I say Buddy Port ticking along nicely Amersford nil, Buddy Port 10 it's the game McDonald show isn't it 10 points to the centre and he turned as soon as he kicked that he bent over picked up his tee jogged back he knew and that'll be a massive warning to Amersford Potter restarts, finds a bit of grass. But he posts again, putting the ball through the hands. And lovely spiral kick across to the left hand side. Tip back inside by Potter, but under pressure. Gregory does it well to evade the first and the second tackle, but McDonald gets across to scrag him down. Slight knocked on Minaire, potentially by Jake Lewis. Potter looking for some space. Tries to split the full back and the winger. That's a good effort. Kaya Williams taking his time. Three blue and black shirts ahead of him. Not much option. But to aim towards that touchline. And frustratingly for Jake Lewis gets a hand to it. Nice little counter-attack there from Fraser Gregory, the Ammerford fullback, who until a few days ago was in Marbella, believe it or not and left his mother and father and brother there with the Armourford under 10s who are watching us, listening to us at the moment. Good wishes to Armourford under 10s on tour, Marbella. I wish it was with you, that's for sure, but good signs from Fraser Gregory at the moment at full-back. Nice ball off the top of the line-out. Fumbled by Josh Price. No, Will Thomas. Coming on the charge, on the angle. But for Amber, there's a chance here with a possession on the halfway line just to work into this game, settle in. They've conceded 10 early points. Haven't had much possession apart from a couple of quick taps beneath their own posts. Jake Lewis to feed. And the Buddy Port pack at a first nudge, then it replied by Ammonford. And off they come down the left. Quickly enough, down the left hand side, and a big tackle coming in from Isaac Sayer. Followed by another big tackle by Will Hurley. But Ammonford out of way. Half a break. And again, a big hit. Buddy Port are definitely up for this one. Flick between the legs, does well. Hammondford under pressure, but Sam Porter does well to get away, win a couple of yards. Tight head prop, Caleb John. A little bit scrappy, disjointed by, by Hammondford. Buddy Port competing for the ball. Referee playing advantage. Nor the endeavour, Ammonford not really gaining any, any territory. The sneak on between the legs by Potter, the captain, just trying to manufacture something. Yeah, Buddy Port clearly are the more physical team, aren't they? You know, they've got a bit of defensive dominance there, even though they've given the penalty away. I think Ammonford are just finding their feet and they're finding their way into the game, moving it around. This little trickery coming up from Sam Potter, the captain. But I think they'll just work it out that if they move this big buddy put pack around, then they could find some edges out there, Chris. Yeah, I agree with that. You know, Barry Port are relatively comfortable then in that defence. They'd be disappointed to give away that cheap penalty. But you're right, I think Ammonford's strength here is to try and move it away from that high pressure line of Barry Port's defence and try and play a little bit wider where they've got some attack threat. Yeah, we spoke about the size of the pitch. It is big. 
and when he's down there, it's even bigger, isn't it? It's, it's easy enough from up here to say it's big, but when he's down there, he probably can't see from one end of the field to another. I can, not with my height, definitely not. <laughs> First opportunity for Johnny. Armenford. Potter with a strike, it looks good from here. It is good. And that's a good reply by Ammonford, conceding 10 early points. We're chalking up the first score. Ammonford 3, Birdie Port 10. That'll settle the nerves. Beautiful kick from Potter, wasn't it? Captain leading by example. He's actually the nephew of former Ospreys analyst Craig Maloney, um, as is Noah on the bench. But that's a beautiful strike from the 10. The mistake from the kick-up, we see all too often, gifting possession back to Birdie Port. Joe Gower, fancying a trundle upfield. Amethyst trying to compete on the deck, flashed back towards Will Hurley, using the back rowers effectively early on. <coughs> Davis, Finley, Ella. Now there's an opportunity to go wide. Over the top by Gay McDonald. Trying to put a bit of flair on the ball. Maybe not needed. Not a bad tactic, though. You could see that he was trying to get over the top of that uh, winger who was at quite high in field on that defence there. Not a bad tactic. I think that's something they should look at more often. And McDonald choosing to go for the points and with a boot. As he's already demonstrated to a good effect. Looking to restore that 10 point advantage. Yeah, when a winger comes up like that, or spot blitz sometimes you, it's called, then you're damned if you do, damned if you don't. You got, it's got to be an accurate pass, got to be floated right in front of the oncoming winger to get over the top. Of course, that allows the inside backs to drift uh, across towards a touchdown, but you do get a good advantage line. And, and McDonald certainly looks capable of getting that ball out there. That's a good shot, isn't it? Sort of a, it's a computer game shot. It, it is. It's the view of what McDonald has. It chips it over. Easily enough by Gay McDonald. It looks like these two uh, kickers are very accurate, very set up in their process as well. They, you know, they look dead eye in terms of uh, their shots at goal so far. You got to say, Mike Chris, that the stadium is in fantastic condition. The pitch. There's no wind out here, the roof is open. I think, you know, as I was a kicker in my day, I could have slotted that one. <laughs> yes, OK, we'll believe you on that one. <laughs> <laughs> Just mentioning the, uh, the state of the field. Reese Cleverly, obviously the coach of the winning Caffilly team in the game just previous, part of the ground staff here. He'd be trying to usher everybody off now and <laughs> to recover it for... for for the, for the um, double header here at the end of the month, of course. We've got the, the clashes of the regions here. Judgment Day. Judgment Day. Reese in particular, I don't think we'll see him much before next Tuesday. <laughs> he looked pretty excited after the game, hugging all his players, and rightly so. It's a big day for him too, isn't it? He must be very proud in, in both ways of the pitch, obviously, and his team. I'm sure did he play here for Kerfilly a few years back? Himself. He certainly did, he did. So he's now played, coached and tended to the ground. Yes, I think uh, he lost that one when he played, but I think he won this one, if I remember correctly. Yeah, I think you're right. I can't remember who, who, the, who the opponents were back then. I might have been Shane's game, was it? You were quite right, it was, yeah. yeah. I think Shane was playing for uh, Amman United and um, got smashed in the first couple of minutes, Shane Williams. Yeah. Then but his opposite scored. winger scored a, a wonder try. Oh, that's fumbled at the base. And the hack through shows the frustrations. And Ammonford haven't had a foothold yet. I know it's early days, but they haven't settled properly. They haven't really put any pressure on this birdie port defence and compounding. You'd be disappointed with that, Beswick. Mm. He, um, he had plenty of time there. Scrum half was, was standing off him, expecting the 8-9. So he just took his eye off the ball. It's a great opportunity, the midfield scrum. No, that's reversed. What can Burry Port do here? 
Same again, Josh Price with a pickup, and he's 110, 15, 20 meters, and he's still going. The number eight, what a carry. And that's what you want from a number eight. His team are on the front foot, and the big, big guns, the big guys follow up. Finley Allett lets the back line go loose. McDonald, McDonald draws a man, gives to Will Thomas, and Thomas is over. Barry Port score their second try. But it's old McDonald again, isn't it? It's his show. He's a standout player on the field, that's for sure. Lovely build-up play. Been impressed with Reese Reed, the second row. Big carries from the big man. Well, just watch this. From the scrum, we asked what could they do. Josh Price has been explosive off the base. They need to do something about that, Ammerford. Great carry from the number eight. The support was there, the build-up, the carry from Reed. And then the little play out the back. Watch McDonald, the little step of his left foot, the acceleration and the presence of mind to put Thomas in. That's a classic try. That's a really good try. Two moments of class there. First one by Josh Price. I think Ammonford will want to chat around that. How is he getting so much room off the pickup of that scrum? But what a great piece of composure there by, uh, by Gabe McDonald. Classic timing. Held his pass. Perfection. Yeah, McDonald slots the conversion. Ammonford, three. Birdie Port, 20. Already 15 points to the name of Gabe McDonald. It looks really easy, that, right, when you see it, but he makes it look easy. And when you're coaching those things, I used to call it control a loose play, you you set up those game scenarios there, he has to come on the pass off his left foot and then put it back into two hands as a p potential defender comes as an inside to wait for the support, come off his feet, put him in, and it's done superbly by the young man. That was a test of character for Ammonford as again Bertie Port burst through Will Thomas a try scorer one more pass potentially gets the oh. offload as he reaches the deck brilliant ball Ammonford the alarm bells are ringing they're fighting for their lives so early on a necessary kick considering the pressure Jack Davis pounces on it oh. and through the middle goes the tight end prop Jack Gaines Gaines Shrugs off the first, second, and third man. Bernie Port smelling blood here. Trying to put this game to bed early on. Back inside, Thomas to Davis. And that's the third. And Bernie Port are running havoc. It's all Bernie Port at the moment. Another brilliant try. But you have to say, Ammerford is shooting themselves in the foot. An unnecessary breakaway and kick by Josh Bezik. The number eight and Burry Port capitalised. Look at this from Jack Gaines, the tight dead. He went to go round the back with a show and go. Audacious stuff from the tight dead. The offload from the floor. It's all encompassing rugby. And again, is the two centres doing the damage. Will Thomas already scored one, broke away, and then created the second. Fantastic from Burry Port. Burry Port, Burry Port are so so impressive after this first 20 ish minutes yeah that's a great team try i agree with you sean you know you can't kick loosely to this barry port team at the moment they're on the end and sniffing everything and they've got line breakers everywhere at the moment i think Ammonford's job is to just get settled into this game because at the moment the scoreboard is rattling up too quickly yeah and it is rattling with that conversion Ammonford three barry port 27 a 24 point gap already I think the kind of football phrase, Chris, you've got to put the foot on the ball a little bit. Now, I know it's a lot of points, 24, but there's a long, long way to go in the game. I don't think they're going to get back playing helter-skelter and high-risk stuff because any errors, Burry Port, as we've seen, are just really going to capitalise on it. So they need to take stock a little bit here, Ammerford. Here come Burry Port again. Wind in their sails. Chris Reed. Key character in that front eight. His second row partner, Sean Wells, in there as well. Fancying his chances. And he'll step inside again by Will Thomas. Showing his strength, keeping the ball alive, still pumping those legs. Drawing in a couple more defenders. Gaines and Reed combining. I just wonder whether Ammonford should consider competing at more rucks and trying to slow Burry Port's ball down. It's too quick at the moment and they're in good numbers in the attack shape each time they get possession. 
I agree. And this is somewhere on counter-attack. Just look at all the buddy port players. They're scattered all over the field when they don't have the ball. They come alive when they got the ball. <laughs> and Hammerford, maybe if they had our view, they'd notice that. Kick downfield. Testing the full-back, Kaya Williams, who fumbles. And that may be something to spark Hammerford to life. They need something. You feel this early on. They need to reply. Yeah, grains of hope, isn't it? Little uh, pluses like that. You can see it. Shoulders are down, heads are down a little bit. Not a lot of chat amongst that Ammerford team. Kayo Williams just takes his eye off it as he went from the sun into the shade. <laughs> yeah, it is tricky, isn't it? We're from one light to another. Right on the edge of it. You'd have called that one, Sean. <laughs> 100% behind my back. I remember playing Saracens in Heineken Cup. James Hook tried to catch a high ball behind his back. Knocked it on. Never forgiven him. <laughs> Kick through by Sam Potter. Nice little touch finder. That's better. You know, well, that, that's exactly what they need. I just said, they put your foot on the ball. I didn't mean literally. You slow it up, you kick into the space, find some grass, put some pressure on Buddy Pope because they've had zero pressure on them so far, haven't they, Chris? Yeah, spot on, you know, you can go at this now, hopefully attack this line out, see if they can get a turnover or a knock on. This is the field position now, hopefully Ammonford can uh, can stay in. The throw overthrown, but finds Finley Eller. And he get the penalty. It's all about pressure, as we were saying. Pressure draws mistakes. And Ammonford, going to prod this into the corner, I imagine. They just take their time here now, have a little conflap, a little discussion around this lineup. That one went awry. They need to get their drills right here, find their man, build some pressure. Thought they might have taken a scrum where they've been really strong in the early exchanges, but got to get this right now. We feel they have to score soon. Oshan Jones. Aims for the middle, and that's again gone awry. And Ammonford will be also frustrated. Back toward McDonald. He's been running the show. For an opportunity to strike from deep to Fraser Gregory. Gregory towards the left. Chips it through. Great pick up by McDonald. And Bernie Porter off to the races again. One more pass potentially with a free dice say on the right. But Bernie Port. Slick of hand, slight of foot. Watts spreading from one side of the pitch to the other. Harvey Bryant cutting back inside. Jack Gaines, a tight head in support. Great pick up on the far side, wasn't it? And all the buddy put players to their credit look comfortable on the ball. Fired out. Watts, the number eight has been also impressive. Josh Price, was there a bit of crossing oh. in there? And they've gone again. Will Thomas using his pace. Inside towards Kaya Williams, reaches out with his left hand, but can't pull it in. We've seen, this, we've seen the same names, aren't we, coming up again. There's a spine to this team, Will Thomas, Gay McDonald, Josh Price, they're orchestrating the play. Yeah, they're so comfortable on the ball, aren't they? They go forward to a handler, it allows their kind of backs to be able to kind of get into better positions and mix and match there. You can see, unfortunately for Kaya, he's dropped two there, he'd be disappointed because he's seen that try line twice. Now, being clinical is so important as well, as far as I'm for the concern. Two opportunities there, five metres out, have to come away with points. Because they haven't been in there a lot, have they? And as Burry Port, well, when they have the ball, as we said, they really are enjoying themselves. Very similar to the bowl final, isn't it? Caffilly broke away, got some tries in the first half, but Clangum just clawed their way back, and Ammerford have to maybe take a leaf out of Clangum's book here. Yeah, keep faith. Sangum just chipped away and chipped away in the window in the match to the, to the final 10 minutes, in, in essence. As Ammonford strike from deep, they try to break with Fraser Gregory, great offload. But Lewis Thomas unable to gather. But that's a sign Ammonford do have threats. 
It's just at the moment, the execution isn't quite there. Yeah, Fraser Gregory is probably the one that's looking the most threatening. He'd be disappointed with that. That was an impossible offload as he was falling. Ball in the right hand. Look at this. Lovely bit of footwork in, out. Nice fend. Ball in one hand. Changed it to two hands. But that is... I, I don't even think Sonny Bill Williams <laughs> would, have, would have done that one. Yeah, impossible on the right hand. You needed a, a behind the door pass there or, or a left hand. It. Trying a miracle pass. I do like Fraser Gregory, though. Every time we've seen him on the ball, he looks like he wants to create something. He can beat a man. Yeah, and that's their four opportunities. Amethyst need to create, put Fraser Gregory in space in a one-on-one -on -one situation. But here can put Port again, using oh. those backline to effect. Out to Kaio Williams in space. He's had a couple opportunities, dragged down to the far side. But Port running some lovely patterns, drawing in players left, right, and centre. Big forwards out wide if they can work it to the left. Some confusion. That's a lovely strike play off first phase. It's brilliant play off first phase. Unfortunately for Hamford, Tanner Evans was so confused there because of the deception created in that back line. But again, Buddy Port haven't finished it off and the lack of support is a concern. I'm just keeping an eye on this. It's a big margin, 24 points, but keep saying it, Chris, still a long way to go. There is a long way to go, you're right, and there's plenty of time left in this game for Hamford. They just need a foothold. They just need something out of this game. But Gabe McDonald, I know we've mentioned it, but what a player. He looks like he's playing the game in slow motion. In, in terms of regional, national selection, etc., etc., who'd be watching this game today and trying, trying to spot the, the future tal talents? Yeah, well, again, like I mentioned earlier, a number of these boys would be playing for their respective schools. They'd be seen in their regional age grade programs, obviously. So, you know, they, they, there is ability to see these boys playing across multi fronts now. Yeah, because sometimes. Some players develop slightly later, don't they? And some boys may have not been picked up at, at a younger age, and this could be a platform for, for players. I, I think it's been one of the criticisms of the regional academies, if you're honest, those that, you know, players that don't make it by 18 get lost. You know, I think it's important that we have this youth competition. It's important that players have a longer career, you know, and a second bite, if you like, or a longer bite at the Chariot Regional Rugby. And I certainly experienced that for a long time, and um, you're right, players do come in at different ages. A lovely little step again by Will Thomas, drawing the man and releasing Kaya Williams, then Harvey Bryan on this left-hand side. Just on that earlier point, you know, there's great examples of that. Uh, Dewey Lake played his youth rugby through Bridgend Athletic, you know, and there's a route through, and look what he's doing now. So, you know, definitely, I think there's many ways to come through a pathway, whether it's a late developer. We just need to make sure we have those avenues to allow that to happen. Yeah, Derby Lake, of course, moving from the back row to sort of Hooker as well, trying to find his way into professional rugby. Or maybe, or if he was fully fit, he, he could have been the number one pick for, for Wales for the Six Nations. But here come Birdie Port once again. The lovely offload towards Will Hurley. The back row is really combining well. Reed. Ammon for the moment struggling to get a shot to hold the ball carrier up or to stop to prevent the offload. At the moment, it's a bit individual and Burry Port again out the other side. Oh, through the middle. Jack Gaines gains all the way. The tight end smashing his way through. Unstoppable. Well, that goes back to what Chris was saying about committing a little bit more at the tackle because if you don't commit or there's no ruck form, then people like Jack Gaines can perform his signature dish, which is the pick through the middle. He did it earlier on. He's looking for the opportunity. So obviously something he's very aware of. And we see, you know, no, no ruck there whatsoever. And he picks and goes up the middle. Perfectly legal. Great opportunity strike from the tight head. He's really athletic and agile. He's got some footwork as well. What a player so far. He's, he's had a real big game. Yeah, for a big man. He's been everywhere, hasn't he? He's been a support runner. He's been a carrier. And now he's a try scorer. Converted. As expected by McDonald in front of the sticks. And the scoreboard is really running away from Ammonford. Ammonford 3, Birdie Port 34. Just can't cope with the pace and power, can they? You know, all the possession and the territory has been in with Burry Port and it's reflected on the score. They're so clinical, they have try scoring ability across the field. That spine you talked about. 
And McDonald just chips away with the kicks as well, adding to the scoreboard. It's not looking good for Ammerford. No, Ammerford 3, very poor, 34, four tries already. To the men in black and blue. And that's Kaya Williams. Regathers the restart. That's the end of the play for the opening half in this WRU Youth Plate final. And on the showing of the first half, that plate is on the way home to Bury Port. As it is, Ammonford 3, Bury Port 34. Hyn eich bod chi'n chwarae yng nghasgodion y gair gyda'r... Whether you're playing in the shadows of rugby's greatest fortress... ...or in Wales' wild interior...
Lichy. Welcome back to the Principality Stadium for the plate final. It's Ammerford against Burry Port. Hey, that man. And it had been part of the toe in, and it's Ammonford 3, Burry Port 34 at the half. And it's been a devastated performance by Burry Port. They've been clinical in every facet of play. Four early tries with Gay McDonald in the middle of it all, orchestrating the play. He crossed for the first try. His centre partner, Will Thomas, got in the act. And Jack Davis and Jack Gaines also on the score sheet. But report in the black and blue, playing from left to right, ready to kick off with McDonald. Oh, not the start. Armandford would have wanted the groans of Sean Holly beside me. Says it all. It is a coach killer, but it's a player killer as well. You know, the halftime team talk. Trying to G the boys up. They you know, look at the scoreboard, they think there's no way back, but you've got to believe, you know, anything can happen. And then, unfortunately, there's the error from the restart. Obviously, we're up here in the shade on the far side of the stadium. I wonder how much the sun is in the eyes there of the catcher. We've seen a few today in the bowl final and, uh, and in this one. Yeah, it must be tricky. Not a cloud in the sky here in Cardiff. That's a penalty for Ammonford. Just some things to give a pat on the back, maybe to, to boost the confidence early doors. As Sean said, they'll probably have the words of the coaches ringing in their ears to try and spur them on in this second period. Well, if there's one area, it's been the scrum, isn't it? They've been a little bit on top. They re refer back to the two five-metre lineups they had in you know, our bottom right-hand corner. They couldn't take the opportunity, and they've they paid the penalty for that, haven't they? Line out to Armford. They've missed a couple of opportunities from the line out earlier in the first half, but they've gained possession and again handling, handling, letting the team down, giving a forward pass. But accuracy, a simple word, but being accurate makes things so, so much easier. That looked harsh to me. I mean, replacement scrum half pot got that away really well under pressure and then. The pressure came on the 10, but I don't know. It is what it is. If it was forward, I apologise, but <laughs> maybe I'm a bit sympathetic with the scoreline. Jack Davis. Out to McDonald, who's been impressive with his boot spots. A bit of space in the backfield, looking for that 50 22. What a kick, what a ball. Threads it perfectly behind. It's a brilliant tactic off a scrum like that because it's against the grain. It's a reverse kick, and normally the blind side wing is a little bit unaware, caught on his heels. But is there anything that Gabe McDonald can't do? Just watch this. See, it goes against the grain, a reverse kick, and the wing is just in field a little bit. And that has to land. It has to land, and it does. Bounces the ball, does the rest. Superb. Buddy Port in prime position. It must be so demoralising for Ammonford for their forwards. Every time they get up from a scrum, they've been pinned back. Their line-out hasn't quite processed. They just can't get anything working as a unit at the moment, collectively or across the whole of the group at the moment. They've got a scrum now. Replacement nine, Clear Davis. As but he thought, try again and nudge on, illegally so. Penalty coming the way of Ammonford. Well, a little bit of solace for Ammonford, isn't it? Get out of their territory. I keep saying this to Scrum, but they need to get some territory now. They need to get a bit of ball in hand. Keep it away from these dangerous Barry Port runners. Yeah, Nudger Field winning 30. Or so meters, 40 meters almost up to the 10 meter line, halfway line. Can they get this line now to work? We've seen in the opening game the bowl final, and now here with Amadford in the plate. The line out is such an important set piece, and when it doesn't function. 
the team itself starts to become dysfunctional. Bridgeport trying to string a few passes together. They haven't been the same slick operators as they were in the first half. Losing their way, that's bounced nicely. Up for Ammonford. The number eight, Beswick. They've raised the first tackle. Now here's an opportunity for Ammonford. Plenty of players out to the right. Oshan Jones. Penalty advantage. Over the top to the out wide players who are, are lurking with intent. Lovely. Is the ball still alive? Slow down. Harvey Bryan in the way. Sure, there'll be another penalty. Advantage being played. Ammonford recycling the ball. Potter goes himself off, flows towards the tight end. Caleb John it does well. One more pass. Needs to go to hand. Somehow it's out towards Osha Jones, I believe, the loose head. Osha Jones is over. And is there hope for Ammonford? Brilliant try from Ammonford. Give him some credit. Lots of different players handling the ball. Fraser Gregory on the outside created something out of nothing. That was a great line from Caleb John. The presence of Mike Duoflo. Potter's starting to get involved now. A 10 a lot more. That was between the legs to Washington Jones. So well done to Ammonford. They've come back strong. Got on the score try. She... Is this going to be the comeback of all comebacks? Too early to say. But Ammerford are on the scoreboard with their first try. And the conversion here. Take him up to double figures. That should make him feel really better now, Ammerford. They should be pleased by that. Watching him settle back for the kick receipt now. They seem far more energised. Maybe a bit of belief comes back in. Yeah, injection of belief. There's the world of good. Ammonford 10, Birdie Port 34. Birdie Port won't be panicking. But Ammonford. Want to get hold of this. And again. Again for the second time in this half. They can't cope with the restart. And they're at comparison to the, to the bowl finals. And they're between Kyle Philly and Shangum. Similar frailties in the Ammonford. And Shangun performances, line out and the restart, not performing. You have to claim that, you know, it doesn't look like there's any lifters over there organised, but you claim your zones and challenge in the air. Just to, you know, continue the momentum from the try that you've had and get out of dodge, you know, dangerous Burry Port, have a, a scrum on the left hand side, licking their lips now with a scrum half from Armafoot over on that far side. Donald, the run around, floated out towards Sayer on the right hand side, fancies his chances on the outside arc. Davis to sign Sean Wells. Taking their time using that second row as again Reed. He's been amongst it for the forwards of Burry Port. McDonald putting a bit of pace onto the ball. Watts. Pops out on the uh, blind side, does well. Jack Davis can the force power over. <laughs> Tries given, I believe, or is that a penalty? Hold on a second, hold your horses. I think the try was scored. If the assistant referee was right on the try line, the reach forward hit the line, and you might find the referee will give the try here. Yeah, the, they seem to be confident that the try had been scored. Yeah, yeah, try. There you go. It was a great reach forward. I got a feel. Oh, is it a penalty? That's the five meter line, not the try line. <laughs> no try. So they've got to roll the dice once again. Sean Wells with Joe Gower waiting. Does well, beats the first man. Just slow down there at the breakdown. Finley Eller. 
Plenty of numbers on the left. If this can be recycled quickly, an opportunity. Numbers. As Sean Wells has another go. Towards the blind side this time. A similar sort of situation, a similar sort of move. And Jack Gaines is over for his second. And Freddie Port over for their fifth. Uh, Jack Gaines is lethal close to the line, isn't he? Loved to pick and go. Already had one in the first half. Added to his tally. The quick pick, snap, and dive over. Uh, maybe they didn't get it a few moments ago, but Gaines now get it this time. So just as Amaford had got himself back in, Burry Port respond. Well, that's the best way to react for Burry Port. Put the foot back on the throat again to try and keep Amaford at bay. Yeah, young Jack Gaines, he knows his way to the try line. You can see he's thirsty to score more tries. You can see why this team are 11 games unbeaten so far this season. They are a well-organised outfit. And I wonder if Jack Gaines will be fancying a hat-trick here at the Principality. Oh, what a kick by Gabe McDonald. What a player, what a kicker. Oh, he's having a, a brilliant game. He's one to watch for the future. But all the pressure was down on that far side and Gaines nice and low, leg drive and reaches for the try line. It's good technique he has there. If I was doing any analysis on him, we'd have somebody in the boot shutting him down, I can tell you, because he's dangerous, he's lethal. Amherdford 10, Burry Port 41 in the WIU Youth Plate Final. Changes for both sides. Rolling subs, very used to best effect to keep those energy levels up, the legs fresh. Amherdford restart with Potter, the captain, collected well by Joe Gower. The difference in a positive claim on that kickoff there, he took it straight away, clean catch, sets you off and running. Yeah, here we go again, quick ball. Out wide, there's numbers on that left flank. And all of a sudden, a couple of passages, a couple of passes that are up into the 10 meter area. That was Jack Gaines again, up in the wide channel, a tight dead, he's everywhere. Yeah, they, they play width to width really well, don't they? They hold their numbers, they know what their shape is doing, they're quite comfortable in the middle of the field. You just worry about Ammonford at the moment. They're losing the collision, so they're not getting any kind of uh, ability to contest or slow Burry Port down at any stage. Thomas slipping on the turf. We're still alive. A little chip through. Nicely towards Kaya Williams. Williams almost manufacturing an opportunity. Oh, they're full of tricks now, aren't they? You know, Kaya Williams looks good. You know, if you, if you were to pick a player of the match now, you'd really struggle Gabe McDonald's a standout, but they have threats all around the field and they're comfortable. And as Chris said, they, they understand their game length. Just a bit of uh, a dribble through there, the touch. He has quick thinking by Kai Williams. But under pressure, Ammonford off to the races from their own try line. You can see there, number nine, Jack Davis. He's uh, delayed his departure for a ski holiday. I just wonder if he was preserving himself there a little bit with that kick. <laughs> Again, putting width to the ball, potentially forward, but referee allows play to go on. Yeah. Four pass there. The, the, the support play maybe still be running a little bit over eager. Yeah, sometimes a misconception of a forward pass is down to the passer where most times it's down to the catcher he's too flat he's in front and the passer can't pass it back is, is that gabe mcdonald's fault he's been untouch well, it, untouchable like we've, we've got to find a <laughs> week a kryptonite for superman haven't we he is human <laughs> further changes for Ammonford. At the moment, it's 7-0 uh, in the second half. It's an improved performance by the boys in blue. Here's Davis. Waiting to feed.
Potter, the missed one, trying to go from one end to the other. Does well to begin with, and then the pass again out towards Fraser Gregory. He's a danger man. Snu snuffled up quickly enough. Betty Port not competing, keeping players on their feet. Oh, needs to be careful here. <laughs> Need to be careful. And they are. Yeah, sensible play there. Just make sure you get him down safely. But the referee then perhaps sympathetically gives the penalty, but not rolling away anyway. A quick tap taken. The show and goal. The offload forced. And Thomas. Knock on, knock given. Play goes on. And the penalty. The tide's starting to change, maybe. Well, for the sake of the game, you hope so. And, and for the Armourford boys, just to pick themselves up, show a bit of resilience, and they're doing that. And they get this down deep in the corner now and, and get a score. Oh, that's tight. And, and, I, and I can see what's coming. I can see what's coming. Well, AR's getting it. The AR is getting it. We had it in the bowl. The kick is coming. Get yourself in the corner. If it's short of you, work yourself back. Otherwise, you can have that issue and you're making a decision 10 minutes behind the flag, 10 metres behind the flag. This is my old professional coach's hat on you now, Chris, sorry. He's, but, he's already drafting an email here about <laughs> AR positioning. <laughs> I, I am, hang on. Let me go to my laptop. <laughs> An opportunity wasted by Ammonford, unfortunately. I reckon that snuck in the corner. <laughs> <laughs> Is he still going on about it? Yeah. I reckon he, he it did, you know? tonight. <laughs> but we never know. Little big things, I used to call them. See, little big things. Price, he's been so powerful off that base, ploughing through. Loses control of the possession. Knocked on. Just getting a little scrappy now, isn't it? I mean, Burry Port feel like perhaps the job is done. Hammerford chasing the game, it's always going to happen. Yeah, Price has been impressive off the base. Maybe that's a weakness of the the flank forwards of Hammerford not reacting. We can see number 17, Oshan felt well. Just not getting off the, the base quick enough. Yeah, he's gone too high there, isn't he? He's got to chop him down. Yeah, nice and low. He's very explosive, though, isn't he? Josh Price. Yeah, good pace, hasn't he? For a big man. Here come Amherford once again down midfield using Potter, the captain. But he forced forcing the kick. Kaya Williams. Caught by his bootlaces. And again, going back to type using the fours, using the second rows before. Trying to put a bit of width on the ball. And again, we can see. I'm going to say Jack Gaines out there in midfield, but not used. Fraser Gagri fumbling that one backwards. But a chance to pin his ears back and have a go. On the best of kicks, but he was pulled back, wasn't he? Somebody did have a tug of his shirt. Well, we've said already, haven't we, Chris? Uh, he's been their most dangerous player, Fraser Gregory. So uh, the time in Marbella stood him in good stead. <laughs> <laughs> well rested. Yeah, he's been excellent. He's definitely a runner. You can see that. If you kick loosely to him, he can punish you. I wish I was in Marbella, by the way. Two shirts of Ammonford. Try to punch a few holes in the defence. But Billy Port have been all too strong in the defensive task. They've been organised. They've been strong. They've been resilient. A kick through by... Oh. I'm going for Kaya Ky Williams trying the speculative volley clearance. Yeah, I'd agree with what you just said there. I think, you know, you can see the Ammonford team is young. They've all come up through their mini and junior section together, and they're a young youth group. Ooh, close by Will Thomas, just in front of the mark. Now, we spoke a lot about um, Gabe McDonald, but Will Thomas has been really effective as well, hasn't he? What a centre partnership they have, Burry Port. 
different types of players almost. Will Will Thomas has got pace and strength. He's a, he's a runner, he's a carrier, isn't he? Mickey McDonald is a bit of a, more of a, of a player. But a combination, they've been too hot to handle. They've been well supported by the likes of Josh Price. A word as well to the second row is Sean Wells and Free Street. They've always been willing carriers, and without carriers, giving a platform and winning that game line battle is difficult for the likes of the Silky players, as we already mentioned, of McDonald and Thomas. And Jack Gaines in there as well, of course, I, the, the double try scorer. I think you're right, and, you know, Joe Gower and Will Hurley have done their fair share of carrying as well, so right across the field, as Chris said, you know, Levenman's on the bounce, been together a long, long time, probably had sim similar coaches for a number of seasons as they develop, and that's what we want in Welsh rugby. The better players than McDonald will fly. They'll go, they'll play some regional age grade stuff, hopefully they'll play regional rugby. If they don't, we want them coming back to Burryport or... Higher up in the leagues, play for Clenetley or Clendevery or, you know, whoever they, they play for and eventually go back to Ammerford. This is the club that they've created their, their skills, their development, their understanding of the game and their memories, like here at the Principality Stadium. That's the way it should be for me. Yeah, I totally agree. I think whatever these boys do, if they go on to higher things, they keep that origin to the clubs that they came through and their schools. You know, it's important. You see the likes of Justin Tipperick and what he does at Trabanos. It's very important that they have that influence back down then and inspire the next generation and support the coaches. Yeah, there's nothing like as well playing for your local team with your mates, is there? We mentioned Shane Williams. No better example, is there? Yeah, yeah here. With our Man United. Winning the cup, or we should say the, was it the plate, the bowl, the bowl, the bowl, 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 bowl. Didn't matter, it was full of beer, yeah. whatever it was. <laughs> we saw Craig Mitchell here last year with Tonner, very yeah, similar. Yeah. Well, half the size oh, he, he used to be, wasn't he? Oh, oh. Trimmed down version. He, he was everywhere that day. What an athlete. Mark, respect here from Barry Port to the second half performance of Ammerford. It's what, seven all, second half. Uh, having run away with it in the first half, they now realize, well, you know, Amford have become a tougher nut to crack this second half. McDonald going for a, what is this, a 42 metre Lee half penny special. I haven't got his tally of score at the moment. I wonder how much is he up to? Let me get the calculator out. Um, how many tries we've had? We've had. Talk amongst yourselves while I use my fingers. <laughs> I think Sean's going to do the sums here. He's about 5, 10, 15, 21. I've lost count. 21 ish. 21 is spot on, I'd make it. And there he is, human. You cursed him. You cursed him. That's your fault. <laughs> and off. Here they go. And here they off. I'm, nice. I'm not giving up quite yet. Towards Tom Davis on the left. Oh, that could have bounced the other way. Happy, happy with the AR on that one, Sean. I'm not. As it, my, I, my, I, I, my silence says it all. I was waiting for an answer. That's why. <laughs> Yorker silence. Spot on. Yeah, he's um, he is running after an 18-year-old. That said. No, he's right call. He's right decision. <laughs> oh well, while we're on the sub, no, I'm like, we won't. No, we won't. We won't go there. No, actually, it's not straight. So <laughs> it's not straight. Scrum down, Ammerford. Nice attack again. Again, instigated by Fraser Gregory. You know, lovely little play out from um, from deep and they had like a 3v2 on the outside eventually the kick forward you'd want to see him more on the ball wouldn't you Sean is maybe get him more in field or maybe positionally change him a little bit just see him more and kind of get opportunities with ball in hand I wonder can he play 10 you know no disrespects to Sam Potter who looks like a, a good player too but 10 or 12 perhaps because he is creative just get those touches in here is Potter on the run around, gets outside, Thomas does well, Potter, lovely little offload, can Ammerford sneak into the right-hand corner, oh so close, but that door's been shut right in his face. Lovely play, it was Fraser Gregory in the end, of just wondered as he made the outside break, could the winger have come back inside for him, little scissor switch play, they just run out of room didn't they over there, but it was a lovely play, Sam Potter the captain, Lovely little run around play. Watch this. 
there, he gets it back, you don't see this very often, lovely lot, like Leinster style, and then over the top, he backed himself, Gregory, didn't he, to see if the winger had come inside, maybe got inside shoulder of Will Thomas. Who's there again? Well, uh, who, who else? Okay, McDonald with the tackle. There's a, an injury down on the field for Ammonford. Ammonford are definitely stressed by report more in the second half. They've looked more threatening, they've had a bit more variation, but it all comes from the fact they've been able to keep some possession or get their set piece more in parity in terms of their line out and scrum. I think you've got to give them a lot of credit, Chris. You know, much like Langum in the bowl final. You know, they've stayed in the game, they've stayed in the fight. That's all you can ask for, isn't it? And they've grown in a bit of confidence in the second half, and I have to say, I think Sam Potter and Fraser Gregory are, are a big part of that. You see the sun shining through the roof here at the Principality. The supporters from Burryport and Ammonford bathed in spring sunshine. And we're in the cold over here in the yeah, shed. We're freezing. <laughs> I have to yeah. get my hat out. Yeah, they need factor 30. We, we need duffel coats. <laughs> yeah. The, ru the rugby is warming us. Armiford. They've won a line out. They're sniffing a second try. Beswick. Patience. Another metre one. Yeah, and Phillips with a carry, does he get there? Not quite. Recycles the ball. Ammonford winning that battle close to the line. And it's down. It's a try. That's a second try for Ammonford. Difficult to say amongst the bodies who's the scorer. But one thing's for sure, Ammonford have been a better team in the second half and they're now ahead in the, the second half scoreboard. Uh, they might be thinking what might have been, you know, the second half, really, really superb step, pick and go close, nearly got over on that one. And as the scrum half, the replacement Noah Potter was digging, there was another pick. And that hit the line, that's definite a, try. That's a skill itself, and they're placing the ball quickly. It's not all about the power of the, of the legs and the shoulders driving through, it's quickly shifting the ball with your hands. And getting it down on the line. Yeah, a lot of bodies there. Well done, Armourford. Potter with the extras. Armourford 17, Birdie Poor 41. So that's a good score for Ammonford. But he's to back it up with the restart. It's been a, a weakness of theirs. McDonald with a, a punt downfield. I'm not sure if that's quite legal. And it's gone straight out. We started with a penalty, apparently. So gave the try and then awarded. What would, what would the penalty be for? Something off the ball afterwards. Must have been. Some niggle. Hold on, what, what, what's this? What's this second email? <laughs> um, yeah, that's, that's a strange decision because you'd, you'd imagine the penalty would have disallowed the try if there's some foul play in there. That's a good. That's a great kick from Gabe McDonald on the penalty, though. In terms of that punt, he can, I'm, change, I'm changing the subject as you notice. It was a good kick. Yeah, it was. He's caught us by surprise. I just wonder what he was doing because he punted it in. Here they go. Here he is, McDonald. Lovely step. Finds a bit of space. Second man beaten off to. Jack Davis, Reed, it's the same patterns again, using the second row as first up. Reed again, carries. 
A scrap for the ball on the deck. Amundford trying to slow the ball down. They get over it, but they can't. Watch your pick, watch your pick. Watch your, watch your line, watch your line, Davis bringing in the runners. Watts to Wells. Keeping it simple here. Here he is. Gaines. Can he go all the way from 20 odd metres? On a hat trick. Yeah. Kai Howard, replacement with the Blue Strum Cup. Watts, good pass, draws the man, Hurley. Hurley with the offload. Kyle Williams. Close, but no cigar. Touch. Bundled into touch as he's trying to reach for the left hand corner. But again, very poor show. They put some pace on the ball when they need to. Yeah, they do. And, you know, Watts made the mistake of a big miss pass, cutting out three players earlier in the piece. Didn't need to, as you said. But that time, Hurley's just made the outside break. Got a left handed offload in amazingly. Kyle Williams went for the corner, but it must have been a brave attempt in defence. Let's have a little look. Just watch this now. The carry coming in from Kai Howard, the replacement. Getting across that gain line. Quick ball for Jack Davis. And as Hurley gets it on an outside break, a fend. And then that little off road, Kyle Davis. Well, that's a brave man and ball tackle in the corner. Brilliant tackle. Last ditch try saving tackle. It looked like the odds were on. Kyle Williams' side to sneak in. Four. A sixth for Birdie Port. The score remains Ammonford 17, Birdie Port 41. I think Kai Williams may have done himself a mischief as he tries to score. No, Kai Williams in the backfield there, so it must have been the, the Ammonford defender. Chris, no Yeah, I think it was a brave tackle in the corner. You still see the corner flags bent over as Kyle Williams tried to dive in. Here we are <laughs> in the box. One old one, two good looking ones. <laughs> take, take, work take, that take, one out. Take, take your pick at home. You're welcome. <laughs> I was talking about myself, Chris. <laughs> talking about myself. <laughs> Just realised we were on the big screen at the same time. Imagine that. First and only time. <laughs> oh, there we go. And we can see the, the Ammonford crowd shielding their eyes from the sun. Maybe shielding their eyes from the score as well. Unfortunately, it's been a tough old afternoon for Ammonford. All the damage was done in the first half. Buddy Port after the blocks quickest and devastating. Great to see he's back up on his feet though and healthy and you know 41 points to 17 down he made the try saving tackle so huge credit to him there. Yeah. Ammonford with a defensive line out. Oshan Jones to the short and line out, aimed towards the back, finds Puckham Link. And they do well with a high risk maneuver. <laughs> Potter. Show some enterprise. And here they come, Ammonford from deep. The kick through, the chase is on. Where's this one going to bounce? Gregory's after it. Nearly gets a toe to the ball. But Kyle Williams, his opposite numbers there. Ball still alive. Here Ammerford come. He's played well, best wick today when he's had the opportunity. Yeah, that's, that's true. It's just his opportunities have been limited. So close, weren't they? Nearly. If Fraser Gregory had got a boot to that little chip over the top. And it could have been really interesting, but a bit of enterprise coming up here from Ammerford. From their own line, lovely hands, silky skills. There's uh, Lewis Thomas who gets it out to Potter eventually. And Gregory had just got his foot to that, it was a foot race, nobody in the backfield. 
Jones with a throw again. The winning possession, but not quite accurate again. The kick through, the chase. Williams evades the first tackler easily enough. Davis dummies the kick. Now out wide towards the open side flanker. The wing forward back inside towards Thomas. Sniffing a second try himself, Davis. Clear Davis. The replacement. And Amundford over the ball. Good steal on the deck. They needed it. Because Betty Port was steaming ahead. Hurley. Like a wildebeest rampaging away there. Great support from Will Thomas on the inside. There was a bit of a speculative clear out from Sam Saltdale, the replacement, but referee didn't see it. But another example of just the, the powerful carriers that Buddy Port have. That's probably the key point of difference in this contest. It's just the physicality in the carriers. Makes so much difference in there when you, when you can win those battles, be it at this level, international level. Yeah, I agree. And like we said in the first half, although they've been a bit quiet in the second half, credit to Hammerford, you could pick any number of, of ball carriers. Just have a little look at early year now. I said Rampage and Wildebeest, that's a bit, you know, what a, what a run from an open side there. And then the straighten up to give to Will Thomas. Good tracking back from Hammerford. That, that clip's going to be his, on his show reel, isn't it? With that, with that step. Big call out wide. Want to put some space and air on the ball and the air on the fringes. Keeping it alive on the deck, the offload. Support players there for Ammonford. Trying to reset, trying to get those carriers in midfield with Oshan Jones. Ball down into a black brick wall. Potter with a kick. Bit Nobody of, home. Bit, bit of wizardry there from Potter. Hey, how long have you thinking of that one? It came to me just now. <laughs> oh. He's played well today, you know, he's broken out a couple of times, he's uh, been in key support play, he wants to play, releases outside backs. Unfortunately, he hasn't quite had that platform, I'd love to see him if he had. We're coming towards the, the end of this contest. Buddy Port winning the line. Are they going to throw the dice again and try and score? Knocked on, offside. Accidentally, this will be scrum to Amundford with seconds remaining on the clock. Yeah, last shot, last roll of the dice, but you know, give them some credit. They are what leading this second half, aren't they? 14 points to seven. You know, we're at half time. We were talking about a landslide at 34 3. They've come back, scored two tries to one, and uh, they can hold their heads high against a very, very good Burry Port team here who did the damage in the first half. Amazing players like Reese Reed's had a good game, Josh Price, Hurley, Gower, the standouts being Will Thomas and McDonald. Can Hammerford finish in style? One more try. Would be a great way to close proceedings at the Principality. Potter looking to kick, but not the option. Does well to. Change his mind, and there's a gap in the defence into the 22, Aidan Watts. Noah Potter smashed in the tackle, but it's still there, they're still going. <coughs> Emrys Davis, stripped of the ball, back to the penalty. High tackle. Is he going to go to the corner or tap and go? Tap and go. Outright to call for a four pass in the crowd. Flat. Trying to go through the phases as Burry Port fly up in defence. Even at this later stage in the plate final. A kick through. Not the right option, maybe. Considering the time on the clock. This is the last, last, last play. <laughs> the, the, the ref doesn't want to go home. He's enjoying it. You have to go up if you're Armourford. You, you've got to compete, try and steal it, nick it. Last chance saloon. Yeah, get a pod up the front. 
try and mark the jumper. Put some pressure. The overthrow. Oh, and it's a try. It's a try. <laughs> Smiles all round. He read it perfectly. Noah Potter scores. Ammonford's third. And the scoreboard has taken a, a completely different complexion. Yeah, and credit to them. He read it well here. Noah Potter. He senses they're going to go over the top because they're only five metres out. They're trying to go up perhaps to the back. Anticipates the overthrow. And <laughs> he's over. Thinks he's got time, but I think <laughs> that could be it. Sam Potter. With the nudge, with the extras, and that is the final act of this plate final. And a final score here at the Principalities, Ammonford 24, Burryport 41, and Burryport are the WIU Youth Plate Final winners. Sean Gavarchiadai Maur, many congratulations to Burryport, Eborth Towin, Pencampwyr, Plat in the Rugby Cymru. And Burryport, well deserved winners, the, a dominant team in the first half, and all the damage was done then. Yeah, exactly that. I think they'd be really pleased with their final performance here today. Like you said, they did most of the damage in the first half. They had some class acts around the field that kind of gave them that marshalship where they needed to go, and the scoreboard kept ticking up and ticking up. But credit to Ammonford. They should be really proud of their efforts here today. The way they managed and came back in that second half is a real credit to where they were at half-time. So congratulations to Burryport. Yeah, 34 points to three to Burryport at the change of, of end. And Sean, you mentioned we were worried it would be a landslider, a cricket score at one point. And all credit to Hammondford, how they reacted at the half. And I'm sure they'd be kicking themselves slightly. They couldn't have unlimited Buddy Port a little bit more in that, in that first half to make this a, a tighter contest. Yeah, Buddy Port came out of the blocks, didn't they? And before you knew it, Gay McDonald was really in the game and causing problems. Will Thomas, they went behind. And these are young men, don't forget, developing. They, their heads probably went down a little bit. and. You know, what do we do next against this powerful outfit? But they, they got together at half-time, came out, and it's got three tries in the second half. It might be a case on the way home of what might have been had we, you know, withstood some of the, the force in the first half, but it was too strong. And when you look at the, the people like Gabe McDonald, Will Thomas, Will Hurley especially, and uh, Rhys Reed in the second row, they, they just had too much and the deserved winners, but another great final. Yeah, another great final. Very Port. The winners of the plate final. We earlier on saw Kyle Philly beat Sangum in the bowl final. And we've got the cut on the way later on as well. Three games here at the Principality today on the fourth day of the road to the Principality. As you see, the very poor boys drenching the coaching team. I'm sure they'll be making the most of their weekend in Cardiff as well. Going well as a club, aren't they, Buddy Port? You know, lots of strong teams. And uh, it could be bouncing in that rugby club tonight. It's strange, isn't it, how, how clubs go through through phases of success and and not so successful. And it, and it seems to be Buddy Port's time isn't it they're doing well as you mentioned Sean as we mentioned the youth now here today the women's last week the men's as well have, have been doing well it's it's a purple patch in the club's club's history and it bodes well if the youth are doing well but then he hopes to think that those youth will step up to the seniors and and the seniors will continue to perform and, and try and be successful yeah that's the idea and of course you know, in a lot of towns and villages, the, the rugby club is the, the hub, the heart of the community. And, you know, when you have successful teams, then the juniors all of a sudden look up to some role models in the town the village and they want to play for the club. They want to play for the this black and black and grey shirt that they've wearing today. And uh, 
You know, these boys have, have made their mark. They've created some memories. They forever will be on the wall, as we said, like uh, Philly's youth team as uh, being the plate winners 2023, and they deserved it. They did deserve it, Birdie Port. Five tries in all, four came in the first half. To remind you, Gabe McDonald opened the scoring with centre partner Will Thomas crossing soon afterwards. Jack Davis, the scrim half, got his name on the score sheet. And of course, Jack Gaines, who can't forget about the big man, the tight head prop, crossed just before the half time whistle. And he was the only scorer in the second half for Burry Port. I'm sure he'd be disappointed not to get a hat trick. To be one of a few tight head props to score a hat trick here at the Principality. That'd be a quiz question, wouldn't that'd it? That'd be a record that'd never be broken, I can tell you. <laughs> yeah, but uh, Abbotford did score three of their own with Oshan Jones and Noah Potter, two of them. Still unsure of the score of the, of the second one. Yeah, I think it's, uh, it might have been uh, Clear Davis. No, sorry, uh, Johan Thomas, the replacement, or Connor Quinn. We couldn't quite see the number, and uh, apologies for that, wherever you are, but uh, you have scored at the Principality <laughs> Stadium. <laughs> yeah. Let us know, and we'll, 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 we'll say it on air uh, later on. Um, there you go, the referee team stepping up with Leon Reese, Hill Morgan, and Phil Murphy. With Mike Gutierrez and Brian Patterson looking after the substitutes, which is a, a tough task at youth level with the rolling subs. They're doing a, a sterling job. Yeah, a big credit to the officials today. You know, I think it was said in the previous final, this is also a platform for officials in the community game to have their day in the sun as well and reward them. And we've seen young referees be involved in this who've kicked on now into the professional ranks. But it's not just about that, it's about rewarding those guys and girls who go out week in, week out and referee across the country. But that is a fair point as well. You know, we talk about development of, of young rugby players here. Obviously, the referees can develop into professional rugby ref referees with three or four professional rugby referees on the WIU books. Um, some of them applying to their trade all around the world on the seven circuit in the URC, representing their towns, villages and Wales in the refereeing shirt. I think it's massively important, you know, officials that we develop younger officials and hopefully in the future now we see some of those younger officials do these games, these finals, and then push on through. I think, you know, they're going to make mistakes. They're going to be out of position. They're going to get calls wrong. That's the nature of, of officiating, but we can't have them out of the game. We said it last time. So credit to them and uh, credit to these young fellas. They're now receiving their runners-up trophies um, in front of Ian Evans, great man himself. Yeah, Ammonford receiving their runners-up trophies with... Kevin Lewis, Chris Jones, and yeah, yeah, Evans part of the presentation party. Each one of them deserving their medal. And Adam Taylor, who's uh, a commentator in our first game. If you were wondering how he looked like, there he is in the in the red shirt. Wants to be in telly, doesn't he? He's been up here, now he's down there. Face for radio, I would say. <laughs> Chops on the box. And here they are. Birdie Port. Con Gwerchad ei mawr unwaith eto. I bordd tywyn. Some impressive individuals. Part of their squad. Be soaking up. This post-match ceremony. I'm sure they've been dreaming of this moment throughout the week. But having their photo taken with the plate in front of the plaque, in front of the board, as the winners of the plate. Uh, we said earlier, Rose, to me, um, for those who've joined us late, Chris, uh, you know, my point of view is it's important that we have this winners and runners up, you know, from a winning point of view, to have the acclaim of getting all the way and winning a trophy, but the same token, you know, for Ammonford, understand what it's like to lose and bounce back and, and want to win it next year uh, and win things in the future. For me, that's very important. 
Yeah, I agree. Like, we need aspirational levels of Welsh rugby. So, for these guys, they started on their journey with their respective youth leagues back in September with, you know, their league, but also with this in mind, to arrive at the Principality Stadium. And the whole programme over the event is about not only uh, showcasing the community game, but allowing people in the community game to have an aspirational pathway. And it represents a community strategy in whole now. We've got an inclusion element, we've got women and girls and boys. So we've got 36 events in total. So this is how we utilize the stadium for the community to be showcased. We see Yayan Evans with the plate in hand, ready present to Gabe McDonald. And we are the WIU Youth plate winners Ah, very Port. And Gay McDonald will be soaking up the atmosphere, the celebrations, as he shows off the plates to the supporters. Yeah, initially a plat to reveal that they die, die the tree. Mini dinner high of line. A came not good. A great moment to celebrate in front of their support. So the final score, 24-41. And if you missed any of the tries, here they are.
Whether you're playing in the shadows of rugby's greatest fortress, or in Wales's wild interior. Thomas Williams will score for Wales. You're part of our team. Your team. the corner of the cup through snow so the jasmine choice gets there whether you're playing in the shadows of rugby's greatest fortress or in wales's wild interior Will score for Wales. You're part of our team. Your team. Around the corner, they come through snow, so the Jasmine Choice gets there. The custodian of this jersey represents everyone else who wears it. From the verdant valleys of the south to the craggy mountains of the north, a try scored here began way back there. Hannah Jones seals this victory for Wales. Because every player's journey starts at a rugby club somewhere. Without you, we would never get to witness this. This jersey is your jersey. This game is your game. It's where we all, through the chosen few, become one. Umline Cymru. It's been an initiative, Fitbed, fund run by the WIU, and currently today we're working uh, here within the Dragons region with all the disability children from around our region. It's lovely to see them all today here. I was very excited for today to meet up with the, the trainers, the coaches, uh, all, my, all my friends from normal rugby training just to have a day out. As a mother, to see Regan playing with other children today is just a godsend. Like, without the inclusion sport, Regan wouldn't have anything. As where we live, we haven't got any um, football teams, rugby teams that will take on children with additional needs. So this is very, very important. Come on, sweetheart. Go on, let you go. Oh, 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 I had it. Wow. You are so strong. My son is Leo, he's nine years old and he's got Down syndrome. You need groups like this that can have children who've got all different abilities but with a disability um, and they can just they can be blossoming that ability then, you know, in that sport. It is respite for myself as well because I can send him here and then he just has fun with, with meeting new friends and building his confidence. Rugby is a game for everybody and it should be a game for everybody um, and I think now the, the Union and the Dragons and, and the other regions alike are really focusing on that inclusion, on, on those inclusion strategies to make sure that everything's accessible no matter what disability you have. So we like to think that these sort of things are the, are the kickstart for those children then to move forward and enjoy rugby.
The new changing facilities are fantastic. Brings a real brightness for our, for our walk-in values. We ask the players just to concentrate on the rugby element side of things and close work and group have worked hard to let the players do that. And the changing rooms are certainly one, of the, one part of that. It's part of their toolkit. Well, this changing room, for example, um, the plasterboard was falling off the ceiling. Um, there was a lot of damp and mould in here. We've got under sixes to youth and two senior teams running, so we need all the changing rooms running all the time. So the facilities, grand, we wouldn't have been able to do it without the WRU helping us. So it's been a really big help for us. It took between six and seven weeks in total, but we did have a little bit of a break in the middle because we had such hot weather. Um, putting the ventilation system in the attic was a bit of a, an arduous task, so they had to pull off for a week. But yeah, so it was really quick, yeah, really happy with the work and the, the contractors. It means a lot. As a club and a community, we've been on a journey for about seven, eight years. Uh, really incorporating bleed black and amber as, uh, as a club motto uh, and that does uh, transpire for, from million juniors up to seniors and back again. We couldn't have done it without the WRU backing because of the, the cost of the changing rooms to be done. We just wouldn't have been able to with the funds that we've got. We've been happy with the last 125 years and hopefully with the WRU backing we can get through the next 125 years plus. groups like this that can have children who've got all different abilities and they can just blossom in that ability. A lot of kids growing up like me are in the same position as me. My take on rugby because they've seen someone that might look like them or from the same area as them doing that. We can use rugby as a vehicle to empower people to see that they can actually do much more, then, then it, it, it's worth its weight in gold. Pinaich bod chi'n chwarae yng nghysgodion y gair gydarnaf y mid rygbi. Neu mas yng ngwyll cefn gwlad Cymru. Thomas Williams will score for Wales. Rhi chi'n rhan o'n tîm ni, eich tîm chi. the corner of the country, Snowsell, and Jasmine Joyce gets there! My Ceidwad y Crys hwn yn cynrychioli pawb arall sy'n ei wisgo. Rhwna chyrraedd, un hyrddiad arall, a dyna'r fydd i goliad. Ah, Josh Adams yn ei dalu! Ah, yn ei sgoni! O gymoedd godidog y de i fynyddoedd mawreddog y gogledd. Mae Cais sy'n cael ei sgorio fan hyn wedi dechrau'r holl ffordd yn ôl fan yna. Hannah Jones seals this victory for Wales! Gan bod taith pob chwaraeon yn dechrau mewn clwb rygbi yn rhywlech. Dysty hyn. Eich crys chi yw'r crys yma. Eich gêm chi yw'r gêm yma. 
Dyma bler yn i gyd trwy'r ychydig a ddewiswyd yn dod yn un. Ymlaen Cymru. Chris and all here in Stadium Principality. Welcome back to the Principality Stadium. As you can see, the sun is still shining. We're still in the shade, but the big match is on the way. The final of the Youth Cup, Carmarthen Quins against Ton D. Chris Howard and Sean Holly still here with me, Owen Gwyneth, for this uh, big game. And Sean, we've been been impressed, haven't we, with, with the, the two finals that have been. We'll chat about this one in a second because I'm aware that the teams are in the tunnels. So it's a chance to have a, a look at the teams and the trophy that's up for grabs. Here it is, the Youth Cup. I wonder who will be holding that aloft in pride, in joy in the next hour and a half or so. Let's have a look at the teams then, starting with Carmarthen Quinns, Kai Thomas and Ellis Thomas. The halfbacks, Ivan Knott and Matthew Williams, the centre partnership with Ben Proctor captaining from a full back, Jack Thomas and Ollie Hawke on the wings. The front row, Griff Williams, Steph Jones and Morgan Bending, Evan Parry and Josh Elvey in the second row. Owen Thomas and Gitoff Phillips on the flanks with Dom Hammett, the number eight. The replacements for the Command and Queen's youth team: Ivan Freeman, Carwin Thomas, Oshan Jones, Gethin Davis, Dylan Rowe, Dylan Davis, Ellis Price, and Rowan Smith. For Tondi, then Josh Payne at nine, Oshan Yardley ten, Sam Matthews, Shay Duggan at centre, Yestin Williamson, the full back with Dylan Tippett and Jack Boobier on each wing and the forwards Ellis Major captaining, captaining the side from Hooker Alex George and Curtis Fry each side of him in the front row Tyrrell Nixon Hall and Tyler Richards in the boiler room Connor Jones the number eight with Hadi Griffiths and Sam Kreber on the flank forwards and the placements for Tom Day, Charlie Edwards, Kai Phillips, John Thomas, Finley Jones, Johnny Evans, Harry Williams Jared Young and Dylan Parry. So they're the teams who will be competing for the Youth Cup final. And they're eager to go. We've had two excellent games before this in the bowl and the plate. But this is the cherry on the cake for today's proceedings on the fourth day of the road to the Principality Series. Ten days of competition. And today we get some, to see some of the future players for our clubs and regions as Kamal and Quinns and Tondi walk down the historic t uh, tunnel here at our national stadium. Tondi in the blue and red and Kamal and Quinns youth in the traditional colours of the Kamal and club in the yellow. Red and black. And Sean, as the teams take the field, we're expecting a, a, another crank up in, in quality. Yeah, there was definitely a notch up in quality in the plate game. Buddy Port were fantastic, great second half performance coming in from Hammerford. But this is, as you say, the big one. This is the cup final, the road to the Principality. Tremendous occasion, beautiful day. We've had two good games. I'm expecting a crack up. Two evenly contested teams, uh, two big sets of support this year that made the journey. You know, it's the biggest crowd of the day, isn't it? The stand on the opposite end of us is filling up nicely that middle tier. As Tondi and Yestin Williamson is preparing to kick the game off. The referee, Richard Kenneth. Sounds his whistle. The ball.
fumbles nicely into touch from a Tondi perspective. And it's a Kamada Quinn's line out to start us off. And, and Chris, what do you expect for, from this matchup? Well, look, really looking forward to this one. Two famous names in Welsh rugby, traditional hotbeds of talent, but, you know, evenly contested. Looking at their routes to the final, they've had close games. Uh, this one could be a cracker. It could be a cracker. As we see Jack Boubier, the son of Ian Boubier, who's coaching Tondi, getting an early touch with Yassin Williamson. The fullback under pressure by Griff Williams. The loose head prop for Command and Quinns. And considering it's been a tough old season for the Command and Quinns senior team, it's nice to see the youth team having a bit more success. And hopefully we'll feed up through to that senior team in the years to come. But an early penalty for Tondi. Yeah. Evan Parry in the second row. Not rolling away quick enough. They were quick over the ball there. Dom Hammett, the number eight. Let's watch out for that from the Quinns. Being hard over the ball. And you expect that with one of their coaches, Daniel Jones. The kick just reaches five metres out. What a kick that is. What a start for Tondi. They've got a spring in their step already. Yeah, great start, great touch finder. Just unable Jack Thomas to keep that one alive. Ellis Major with the throw. The captain and Tondi getting the rumble on and those legs are pumping in unison they've won a couple of meters they're gonna get there they're hovering over the line the Quins bring it down the tries given and what a start and what a try well it was coming, wasn't it? Said they had a spring in their step. But it's Tondi who get the first score. The kick to the corner. And the drive coming in. Concerted effort. Quinn's trying to get over the top. And the patience was there. And that's a great try. Early on in this final, Tondi putting their stamp on it. What a start for Tondi, exactly what you would want if you were their coaches. Perfect start. And Yestin Williamson. With the conversion, hooks it over. And you're wondering when Tondi had the penalty near the halfway line, 10 metre line. We've seen teams today go for the post, go for the three points early on. But Tondi backing themselves. Yestin Williamson put him in the corner. And they've got the just reward. Yeah, set they stall out. Already we're seeing the lovely left foot of Yestin Williamson, the Tondi fullback. And now Kamala Quinns on the heel straight away. What a start for Tondi. Well, <laughs> I've mentioned it in both games previously, Oz, have I not? You, you, they've been listening. They've obviously been well, listening to the stream. I mean, there are lines there for a reason, Chris. Totally agree. We've seen it a few times already. So, yeah, referee is uh, on the point there. I can't believe we're singing his praises so early on. Sorry, it's a touch you, you, you had an issue with. It's the old coach of me coming out, but uh, they've got a job to do. He's done it right there. Yeah, as long as he's um, equal to both teams throughout the game. Here comes Tondi. Unfortunately, knocked on. Yeah, no advantage then from that uh, restart, but uh, it gets us a chance to see the first scrum properly. Little knock on there. You'd be disappointed. No yeah. real pressure. Yeah, no real pressure. Just slight of hand. Sometimes you've got to control your foot speed in that respect. Now then, Kai Thomas to feed in that right scrum cap. Straight towards the back line, running the patterns down the middle, going wide off first phase, bringing in Ben Proctor. Good strength, goes over the tackler. 
quick ball on the deck. Thomas, there again. Gito Phillips says, no, my ball. Thomas, crossfield kick, speculative effort. Where's this going to bounce? Considering the numbers, Tondi had out wide, probably not the wisest decision. No, and the, the Command and Queen's winger wasn't in position for that. It was a shot to nothing anyway. They had the penalty advantage. Lovely intervention coming in from Ben Proctor, the captain, isn't it? Inventive little play. You see here, that was actually the 13, Matthew Williams, who offered himself as first receiver. And indeed, that is Ellis Thomas out there in the sort of wide channels. So creative stuff in the back line already from Kamal and Quinns. Yeah, one of the Tondi boys have, has taken a bath bump in that collision. But we've just seen moments ago Tondi back themselves here from a similar position, going to the corner and score. Are the Quinns in aspect forced to do the same now to try and apply, or would they go for three points if they got a boot? Uh, personally, I think it comes down to your philosophy before the game. It's still early in the game, there's one score in it. We'll see what the mentality is from Wayne Proctor and Daniel Jones from their coaching point of view. Clearly, Ian Boobia's style is to, to go for it from the off, and uh, you know, you could excuse them going for a shot this early in the game. However, that was a good attacking start, and why not go for the corner? Yep, and that's the decision, Ellis Thomas. Putting the Quinns in position. He probably would have hoped for a few more metres on that one. Midway through to 22. Yeah, I think your call changes. You know, you, you get five metres out, it's a different call to 10 metres out, 15 metres out, that's for sure. So, he didn't quite get it where he wanted it. Yeah, short of the line again has been a, a theme throughout these finals days. Five with a forward at nine as well to get the drive on. That's a good rumble by the Quins. They've won 10 meters easily, four meters short. Tondi have to be on their toes here, using the runners. Good defense by the blue and reds. Balls live, Thomas towards the right. It's a frantic start, a lot of energy. Players flying in left, right, and center. Penalty taken quickly by Kai Thomas. Fancies his chances. The little scrum half. Not ten. That's a yellow card. And that's a decisive decision by the referee. Too many penalties in what's known as the red zone. Uh, and that's good to see from the, from the referee, Rich Kenliff. Both teams have set their stall up, and so too has the ref. Harry Griffiths in the bin. I think that's smart by Kai Thomas there. I think he's won that yellow card. Already, you know, he's lively. He's a real live wire. His speed of pass. And here the Queens come, they hit the post. Of course, the post isn't a part of the try line anymore. They try to burrow over. The forwards trying to get there themselves. Shorter numbers out wide, but if it keeps coming left, they're over the line, are they? They're grounded as well. And a great way to apply by Griff Williams, the loose head. What a repost from the Quins. As you say, Chris, instigated by the quick tap from Kai Thomas. He got a yellow card. He got quick ball. And there were a couple of carries close to the line, but it was the latch on to Griff Williams that made the difference at the decisive moment as they crossed the line. Well, let's hope. That we get this for 70 minutes, four teams going at it, toe to toe. Taking a WWE phrase, we're in for a slobber knocker. <laughs> <laughs> Chris is just shaking his head. I, I don't think I can say that. <laughs> Come out wrong. <laughs> Conversion's good. Ellis Thomas. With a bonus, seven all. Ah, here it comes again. The first carry there was short, but then the latch on, ironically, it was by the scrum half, Kai Thomas, who added all eight stone of his weight. <laughs> but it made the difference to get them over. What sharp thinking by the nine, though, to even become the latcher. How many nines would, do, would normally do that role? Not many, that's for sure. But here, Quinn's come. They're enjoying themselves now. 
Time to play a bit of rugby. Good clear out. Oh, oh, it's intercepted by Josh Payne. Payne, can he go all the way to the goose step? That's a good tackle. Was it a high tackle? If we had a TMO, we, we may be having an intervention, but Payne didn't have the pace to go all the way. Ben Proctor has inherited the genes of his dad, Wayne, former Wales winger, sprinter, conditioning coach, <laughs> Terminator. All the, all the above. <laughs> But what a tackle, he corner flag straight away and the scrum half didn't have the legs on him. Good line out. This game, is, this game has been breathless so far, gents. It has. Not a moment to take breath and the Quins are here to play. Here's Proctor. Oh, he's fumbled, he's lost it. He, knew he, he played nonchalantly as he knew he had advantage. I'm not sure how aware he was. That's what he'll tell his teammates anyway. Yeah, he looked to counter-attack from there, but it's a lively game. The pace of this game is up a notch from the first two, that's for sure. You'd expect that. This is the cup final. These are the best two youth teams in the land in this competition, in the cup competition. But what a chance, wasn't it, for Josh Payne? Just didn't quite have the legs. Yeah, let's see and we'll again. see now Ben Proctor come across. So they sh attacked on the short side. Good anticipation. There he's in the top left hand side of the screen. He'll come into shot now. The pace he had. Reminds me of Gareth Davis in some respect. He just flies out the line. He's, he's just ready and he I'll take a gamble here. I'm on the front foot. I'm going. And that's a penalty to Tondi. No. At nil nil, they went for the corner. What do they do now? Post. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Let's calm down. Let's get the points on the board. We've got plenty of time to. Well, just a little block on the outside clean. Who was expecting a tip? I think it was number eight, Hammett. Just went beyond then and a bit slow coming in on the inside. I brought the Jackler in, which was Ellis Major, the Tondi captain. Williamson gives it a clout to the left boot and he's successful with his second attempt and Tondi tick up to 10 points rather Quinn 7 Tondi 10 yeah we've seen some good goal kicking today in all three finals that's for sure that's a credit to the surface there's no wind here lovely conditions Tondi back in front Ball's hang up there for Ty Tyrell Nixon Hall to gather. It's knocked on. Tondi looking to play from their own 22. In plenty of enterprise, nobody shy of trying to play from their own. Try line. An opportunity for the Quins with some space ahead. Proctor with a step, beats the first man. Tacklers come flying in. Thomas digs the ball, tries to dink it over the top. That's straight out. And that's the first real mistake we've seen in this contest. Yeah, you can see what he was thinking from this elevated view because there was space in the backfield. It's just the execution of the kick probably was higher rather than it needed to be longer, end over end. Major. Finds his man. Oh, that's tipped forward. Nothing wrong with the pass, just a, a bit of nerves, maybe. Quinn's with the free play from the knock on advantage. Advantage now over. Thomas kick through there. There's a bit of space in the backfield. Good little nudge to put Williamson under some pressure. Jack Thomas with a tackle. Again, individuals trying to play here from deep. Proctor, this space out right if he picks up his head. 
Attacks the ball under his armpit. Good pass by Davis. Space draws the man. Two against one. A wide four. Only Hawk. Hawk. Owen Thomas in the blue scrum cap. Kai Thomas switching play. Back to that narrow side. Gito Phillips dumped backwards. Owen Thomas again from the base. And this major trying to get in there on the jackal. And for a second, Griff Williams takes his eye off the ball. Proctor coming in at 10. You've got to credit the, the defence of Tondi here. They're filling the field really well. Often have got more numbers in defence than Quinn's having attack. Slight miscommunication potentially there. Good carry by Dom Hammett, the number eight, chopped low. And the Quinns have broken the first line of defence. Bending. Morgan Bending, that is, trying to stretch over. He's on the try line, hasn't grounded it, trying to work the ball back the Quinns, but it's held up. And Tondi showing, he's got a stern defence there. Yeah, they needed it. Brilliant step from vice captain Gitto Phillips, number seven. Really close quarters. There's some lovely play earlier. Matthew Williams. The outside centre, and sometimes, and we said it a bit earlier, those when you get close to the line, sometimes it's better to fall a bit short, rebuild another phase. Because if you go over and you're held up, it results in a goal line dropout these days. Are you finding that law the new the new change in the law of the dropout? I got mixed feelings on it, really. I think, I think in many respects, it forces the attacking team to look for the space. Do so you look at this step? You know, coming up, it's a good carry. Firstly, from Tom Hammett, but this step from, look at that, little power step off his right, gets him through, and then Quinn's are on the offensive. But no, you know, he's got three guys around him, he's upright. That's essentially turnover ball, it becomes a goal line dropout. And I think that's good for encouraging attacking play to find the space rather than try and charge over, which in younger age groups, you'll find that the bigger, bigger player will more often than not score there. But the flip side of that, of course, is are you rewarded for all the pressure and the territory that ultimately you have? There's arguments both sides. It kind of, it kind of came, didn't it, from, remember, the uh, scrum fest that we had at the uh, France-Wales game a few years back where it was reset scrum after reset scrum. So I think it's a positive change for the game. I think the, I think the bigger one for me, which needs to be refereed at the highest level better, is that you're not allowed to latch until the ball is, is caught. We've still seen some pre latches sort of eking back in. Intensity is definitely in this Welsh Cup youth final. Quinn 7, Tondi 10. Tondi looking to get out of their own area. Payne. Yardley gets his boot on it, but it's alive for Proctor, who's only shown he's willing to run an attack from any position. Is that going to bounce kindly oh, almost into Proctor's basket again with Alex George carrying? And here comes Tondi. But the referee has stopped play. There's a knock forward in there. What was there an advantage, though? And already we're seeing bodies flaying on the field, shows the physicality of this one. Tondi have done really well, actually, the breakdown. They've dogged outfit, they've contested hard, had a few turnovers or pressured Kamada, and you'd expect that, wouldn't you, with a uh, team coached by the likes of Ian Bubia? <laughs> yeah, you would. Wily old character. Here's the slip and the hit. He's committed to that. Ellis Major, just a little slip. Blues of the foot in from Matthew Williams. So play on. Yeah, and I think Matthew Williams may have twisted an ear and ankle. Uh. At the same time, he's down receiving treatment, and he's, and he's been down since, trying to catch that ball. That carry there, then, off the turnover, that, and, and this one again, they're too upright. And I think this is what young players need to start developing now, is a bit of power stepping and footwork before contact, not run into bodies, 
run into shoulders, run into half spaces, lower the height, leg drive through so they can offload or place the ball and take the contact on their terms. I think that's the next development for, for coaches and players at this level to, to step them up because it's so important when you get to a higher level, Chris. I totally agree. And, you know, what will happen with the tackle height? You know, will we see that become a change in the game so it even becomes more apparent to your point, Sean? Referee trying to settle the scrum. Which is kind of left. It's a battle in there up front. Griff Williams, Steph Jones and Morgan Bending for the Quins. Against Alex George, Ellis Major and Curtis Fry of Tondi. Payne feeds. Seems an evenly matched scrum at the moment. Tondi trying to play and happy to play from deep. Sam Matthews gets the ball away. Somehow worked towards Jack Boobia, cuts back inside the dummy, then gets the ball away. Good play by Payne, sees the space in the backfield. But Ollie Hawk replies, I think goes quickly towards the right here for, for the Quins. There could be an opportunity to get out on that fringe. Good decision from Payne, just wasn't executed as he wanted, maybe a bit further or even a bit shorter. It was in no man's land. Oh, another interception. Both sides looking to offload in the tackle. To each other. <laughs> you saw pain, didn't we? A few minutes ago with that interception pass. Didn't have the legs to get into the corner. Good pick up by Sam Matthews. On the angle towards his centre passage. Shea Duggan. Slightly isolated Yardley, so he's got to change direction. Look for some support. Quinn's fly up and swallow up the fly half. A good counter up, but it off their feet. Harry Griffiths, slightly upright again. He's got that body position a bit lower to drive into the tackle. Good hands by Curtis Fry. That's a big dummy by Ellis Major, the captain. Another good offload as well, wasn't it, in the tackle? I've seen more offloads here in the first 10 minutes than the Crusaders game in Super Rugby <laughs> this morning. But one thing we have seen as well, number, how comfortable the forwards have been on the ball. Number of tight head props, Curtis Fry, just a minute ago, happy to play the ball. They're not just big men to truck the ball up. Payne again aiming towards the corner with that kick, well covered by Ollie Hawk. <coughs> well, the breathless passages are played, to be fair. To both teams whether they can sustain this is another thing but the offloads are obviously helping that and uh, you've got to say these are out to pay even from deep little run around play here was on the fend coming in out the side door and there's offload after offload and the through went i think it was uh boobia and it's nice to see this is youth rugby this is development of players of youngsters that kicking isn't in the forefront of their mind we've already seen a number of examples where we'd expect that at the professional level a kick for safety but well, these boys should run it yeah there's probably a little bit more space out there than in the professional game <laughs> i could tell you that for a fact and we talked about the size of the pitch they're not used to playing on you know the open spaces that Principality Stadium offers and there's a missed attempt at goal again yeah, Williamson dragging not that one in front and across the uprights just on that point around kicking a lot of teams organisation in defence they'll drop a lot of numbers in the backfield sometimes you know if you back up a risk reward policy you can actually get good outcome from running out from that particular area so and I'm sure you'd adopt at Cardiff Met Chris Certainly, uh, student rugby as well as youth rugby affords that opportunity to express yourself and exploit space. That's the philosophy, that's 100% right. Tondi having a period of possession, and that's a good tackle coming in by the Quins, by the number eight, Dom Hammett. Tondi still in possession. The crowd calling for a four pass. 
The refereeing trio oh. not agreeing. Lovely handling in close quarters. <laughs> Full of commitment, both sides, Quinns and Tondi flying into the collisions. And it's a good jackal. By I believe, Ivan not. And 10 metres more for a bit of back chat. One thing I'm noticing today, oh, Chris, on all three games is the ball carrying ability of front five forwards. Uh, I think in all teams I've seen ball players uh, in front rows and second rows, and that's imperative for the future of our game. When you watch Ireland and Leinster, they've got your Andrew Porters, Keen Healy's, Tyg Furlongs, and so on. New Zealand, you see them. There's a loose head tipping on the pass, looking. We've seen it right throughout the three games today. It's it's vital to the future of our game, I think. Yeah, you want those kind of multifaceted players because the nature of how you have to beat defences and break them down. So you see it, don't you? The accuracy of Ireland in tight spaces, forward handling well. Proctor beats his man one and one, creates space out wide for Ollie Hawk, who beats his first man as well. We see the big guys impressed. Now the chance for the, the back line to show their silky skills. You feel that Ben Proctor at some point is going to find some space. But there's another turnover. Boobia style. <laughs> Tondi are keeping their numbers in defence really, really well. They're keeping their discipline, aren't they? Every time you look up, they're equal to Carmarthen in terms of their defensive numbers and competitive at the breakdown. Frustrating Carmarthen a little bit. Yeah, slightly isolated, even though the wisest decision seemed like an unexpected decision to go for the pick and go. And nearly kept alive from the penalty, just crept over. Tondi starting to build something here, you're feeling. Quinn's more often, last five minutes or so, been in this sort of defensive area. Again. The shortened line has been probably been the option of the day of a five man line. Harry Griffiths joins late. We try and rumble it on with the forwards. The centres come on the angle on this great steal by the Quins. As Sam Matthews and Shade Durkin were licking the lips, trying to run onto the ball. And there's space out wide. Here's Proctor. The right decision, but it. Oh! oh. Groaning over here. Play goes on from the knock on. There's a bit of a shoulder in there, I imagine, but the yes. opportunities left, right, and centre on the field. Yeah, I think Ben Proctor saw it from our position. He could have shown that ball and gone straight through the hole. And he tried to put his outside support. He was aware of it. And then Connor Jones comes across the Tondi number eight. I'm not sure there was a, an arm in this one. Uh, maybe. And it was, <laughs> half it was an just arm. slow enough. Half an hour, maybe. The Quint, with their philosophy, trying to oh. use it. That's a lovely offload in midfield, breaking the first line of defence. They keep going, Proctor. Now to Hawk on that right wing again. Good counter ruck by Tondi. It was a positive action according to the ref and the steal off the back of it. They've done well again, you know, they recognise when that when that ruck was light, they fired it, they've been able to kind of not come out and back and disrupt that breakdown. Nixon Hall, I think, in there. Yeah, two offloads there on that Quinn's attack. Right, excellent play. I think the first offload was from Williams and he brings in Owen Thomas, but Thomas was looking for the next offload. Now, you can't sit back. If you have that philosophy to offload, run through, watch this now. You see, first one, lovely. It's not his hammer, I think, the eight, yes. There's the other offer. Now, there's nobody on the outside. You can't play for the next phase. You have to flood through. You have to flow through. And what happens if that happens is a lack of numbers at the breakdown and Tondi are exploiting it. Not straight. As Tondi was starting to pick up steam in that rolling mall. Comes back for the scrum to Quinns. 
They're two evenly matched sides with slightly different styles, aren't they, Chris? And, you know, this is making for a good final. This, this one could go down to the wire. I'm not calling it early. I'm not going to put a curse on it, but I like what we're seeing. Yeah, really enjoying it, throwing everything into it. You're right, two contrasting styles. I think Tondi are probably quite niggly at the moment. They're frustrating Kamar, then they can't quite get that attack game going as they would like. Quinn's backline get moving once again, and he finds some space on the fringes, and this one sticks with Jack Thomas. Thomas tries to back himself, keeps it alive, but intercepted by Shea Duggan. Right place, right time. Tondi to cover. Payne. Back to Yardley, who pumps it downfield, and that's a good touch finder. No, kept alive by Ben Proctor, tapped backwards. Proctor on the ball once again. Given as a four pass, I wasn't too sure about that one. No, I think the referee's got a 3D vision there, because he was about 10 metres in front of that pass. But it's an interesting tactic that Quinns have our first phase scrum. They, they're actually putting Ben Proctor in a 10, and that's leaving outside half Ellis Thomas in the full-back position. So he makes really good passes in that wide channel. And off he sent Jack Thomas then. Good first phase attack. Oh, that's a penalty for a bit of back chat. And again, we'll talk about positioning. I've got to say the AR was in a great position there. All right, have a little look at this. Was that a four pass? I don't think so. Then the back chat came in, which you can't do. Don't care who you are. This is rugby. The assistant referee was right up at the flag. He came in, feel and watch that in the perfect position. Gives the line out. Email deleted. <laughs> um, line out disrupted. Here comes Ellis Major. Tondi. Bit of lazy block in there. Flashes it back. Good carry, nearly gets there. Can he stretch? Not quite, Payne. Dinging for the ball, using the runners. And looks like it has to be a try. Sam Kreber, the open side flanker, crashes over. And good work there by Ellis Major in the first instance. Josh Payne rocking back to the short side. He nearly got over but fell short. And then the body height of Kreber, the open side, was spot on. Just have a look at this now. Watch how he dips his height. There, gets towards the hips and the legs. You're not stopping him there. I think take a bow, we asked him Williamson there as well, because initially he, it was his kick that got them out of that area. His follow-up that won the tackle, that was then the reverse penalty. So, big part to play how they came out, Tondi, there, to get this try at the other end of the field. Will the Quinn's defence be slightly disappointed, not coming off the line quick enough, just waiting to absorb the tackle? Absolutely. Tackles. Get lower. You know, you see the carry. Who wins the height there? You've literally got the battle of a line, and that's the try line. It was won by Tondi in that case. Ah, oh, scrapes. Off the post. Hits the upright. Stats. Yeah. Be amazed how often the ball in a rugby match hits the crossbar of the upright. Quinn 7, Tondi 15, we're in for a game, we're in for a treat. And Tondi have extended their lead a minute or so left on this opening half, it's flown by. You could say the Quinns have had the more attacking flair, if you like, you know, the pace out wide, but, you know, Tondi have contained them, and when they've had their chance, look, and Payne, no, the fly half, Yardley is off, looking for support. Guitar Phillips gets oh. a hand to it to disrupt. That somehow ended up with Ollie Hawk. <laughs> Plays going on at the far end, but the referee's given a knock on. And a scrum down to Tondi. It's all happening out there on the pitch. Well, it was a Quinn's hand that just got in the sort of passing channel of Yardley's pass. What a break it was. Right in front of us, our commentary position. Inside his own 22, watch this pass now. And it was a Quinn's hand. Ironically, Gitto Phillips is running backwards, but the pass goes behind him, which means it's forward. Work that one out, Chris. <laughs> Defied gravity. Or... 
You're right what you said about Tondi, though. I think they would be really, really happy with that scoreboard at the moment. They probably haven't had the possession stakes, but when they've ever got their opportunity, nine times out of ten, they've come away with points. Yeah, you feel the Quins, they've got another gear in there somewhere, haven't they? Something's, they've, they've, they've played well, but it hasn't quite clicked either. Yeah, they're sort of making great yards, aren't they? The meters gained by the likes of Proctor, Ollie Hawke's been good, Matthew Williams. But then it's that clinical execution when they get up into that red zone, as you call it. Tondi get a nudge. Using the dummy runners in midfield to go wide towards Boubier. Into touch. That, that sloppy first phase play, and they'd be disappointed with that, but they will be really happy with the scoreline. Yeah, they'll be very happy with the scoreline as they do lead this Welsh Youth Cup final. It's two tries, two on in Tondi's favour. Kamal and Quinn, seven, Tondi, 15. that can have children who've got all different abilities and they can just blossom in that ability. A lot of kids growing up like me are in the same position as me. They might take on rugby because they've seen someone that might look like them or from the same area as them doing that. rugby as a vehicle to empower people to see that they can actually do much more, then, then it, it, it's worth its weight in gold. changing facilities is fantastic, brings a real brightness for our, for our walking values. We ask the players just to concentrate on the rugby element side of things and close work and group have worked hard to let the players do that and the changing rooms are certainly one, of the, one part of that, it's part of their toolkit. Well this changing room for example, um, the plasterboard was falling off the ceiling, um, there was a lot of damp and mould in here. We've got under sixes to youth and two senior teams running, so we need all the changing rooms running all the time. So the facilities grant, we wouldn't have been able to do it without the WRU helping us. So it's been a really big help for us. It took between six and seven weeks in total, but we did have a little bit of a break in the middle because we had such hot weather. Um, putting the ventilation system in the attic was a bit of a, an arduous task, so they had to pull off for a week. But yeah, so it was really quick, yeah, really happy with the work and the, the contractors. It means a lot. As a club and a community, we've been on a journey for about seven, eight years. Uh, really incorporating bleed black and amber as, uh, as a club motto uh, and that does uh, transpire for, from million juniors up to seniors and back again. We couldn't have done it without the WRU backing because of the, the cost of the changing rooms to be done. We just wouldn't have been able to with the funds that we've got. We've been happy with the last 125 years and hopefully with the WRU backing we can get through the next 125 years plus.
Race on all here, here Stadium Kenneth Lethal. Welcome back to the Principality Stadium. It's half time here at the Welsh Youth Cup final. And we had an excellent first half between Kamal and Quinns and Tondi. Kamal and Quinn seven, Tondi fifteen. It's all to play for. Tondi ahead, making the most of their opportunities. But there's a feel of the Quinns have another gear. And this will go down to the wire. It'll be on a knife edge throughout this second 35 minute period. Certainly be interesting if Quinn score next. That's I'm sure part of Wayne Proctor's and Daniel Jones, the coaches team talk at half time. Whatever it is, take three. If we get a try, great. Get to within the score. That's a great restart for the Quinns. They pinch it in the air. Can they build something from here? An unexpected possession. Tondi will be on the back foot. Owen Thomas. Spun out, looking wide. Draws the man. Ollie Hawk again involved, but shepherded out into touch. And they'd be disappointed. Be bundled into the touchline so easily. It's sort of been the story of their, of their game so far. Looking threatening, creative, getting into the wide channels, but Tondi, to their credit, defensively, are just slipping off, pushing them towards the touchline and forcing them in there. Great take, wasn't it, from the line out. Jack Thomas, put him on the front foot. Major. Goes towards the tail, finds his man again. Line out's working well. Payne with the box. Want to compete. Hawk has to come up for it, gets it. Bundled over, and the captain Majors there again to put pressure on the ball on the floor. The fours again, slight of hand, and Quinns are on the fringes. To the outside pass, a lovely take, no. It's gone forward. Again, the Quinns are threatening, but just can't turn these half chances into opportunities. There you go again, get to the white channels, just over elaborate from Williams. Got the out, needed to straighten up, and two guys outside. Paint, push that on into the stands. Doesn't gain too much territory with the angle. But Quinn's showing Chris they're a dangerous team if they get to those wide channels. Yeah, they are dangerous and they've got threats on the ball. You know, Williams looks a real threat. But I agree with Sean. They're kind of playing into Tondi's hands at the moment because whilst they're going early in their phases to, to the width, Tondi are keeping their numbers on feet and stressing them then when they're coming back off touchlines. Therefore, Kamar then are losing their numbers and not retaining the ball very well. So they're kind of playing into Tondi's hands. So maybe mix it up with some more power carries, trying to get more Tondi players committed around breakdowns and then get your threats on the ball. Tondi not helping themselves here. They're flinging the ball backwards towards their own try line. Paint. But somehow they're off to the races on the break. Where's the support? Quinn's back there to defend. Payne with a kick is charged down or half charged down. There are plenty of players out left. The Quinns are one in the air and it's intercepted once again. There's so many offloads going on with bodies everywhere. It's Who off, knows where it's going to go? It's offload central and, and defenders are just getting in the, the passing channels to intercept because they know it's coming. This was the breakaway. Fair play. He called for it, didn't he? He was looking for it. Williamson backed himself, got in field, looking for support here, but no one was coming onto it. He needed somebody charging onto that. And then Payne decided to kick. I feel sorry if I was uh, Kamada Notondi's analyst, you run out of ink. Notondi <laughs> <laughs> again off that platform in the line. Passing behind the back, and that's dragged forward by Oshan Yardley. And Tondi. The last few minutes has gone scrappy from their viewpoint. Yeah, that's just a pass behind from Josh Payne to Yardley. He flattened up, he, he felt it was quick ball. The pass just went behind him, tried to grab it with his right hand. But that's just allowing Kamal and Quinns to stay in the half. And they just feel that at some point they're going to cut through and get the score they need. If Tondi score and actually feeling that be ominous from a Quinn's perspective. See Proc 
you see Proctor's positioning again off the scrum. They want to get the ball in his hands early. And here he is, looking left, nearly intercepted by Sam Matthews. Quinn's looking to play, but they need to win that game line battle first. Tondi are competing and they're slowing the ball down. Proctor offloading, they're just shifting the ball, maybe under pressure when they don't need to, and that's nudged forward by Can Thomas at the base. And again, it's pushing the ball in, in the area where maybe it's not needed, it's not on. This happens, you know, in games like this. After half-time, it's a little bit tetchy, isn't it? There's a couple of silly little errors because both teams are aware that the next score is vitally important. It's an eight-point gap. Quinn score, they get it within the score, and then obviously that takes the game to a different dimension. As you mentioned, those Tondi score, well, who knows? That, that could be a bridge too far for Quinn's then. And it'll be interesting as well, the bench, who'll have the energy, who'll have the, the depth in their squads to add a bit of quality as well. I just praise Tondi again, though. I just think they've been really smart at the moment. They're getting uh, people to that breakdown quicker than Kamar, because Kamar are trying to get back into reload to attack. They're sending their numbers to the wide and it's not servicing their rucks particularly well. A free kick taken quickly by Tondi. A good pick-up on the base by Major, the captain, the hooker, with a chip over the top. How many breaks have we seen from uh, Rux? This, this... A lot. Yeah, it, there's been a lot, hasn't it? I mean, it says something about the defensive organisation of, of teams at this age group, perhaps. And then the flip side, because you've got to know the defence to coach the attack, that you've got this, you know, and if you're first guys of the defensive rucks are too wide and nobody's in the boot which doesn't happen defensively these days then you're going to get those picks up the middle but from a coaching perspective back in the day you'd have your pillars each side so you'd have them as the first ones as tight as you can to the ruck to stop that happening yeah, yeah i think everyone now tries to get numbers around that breakdown quick so you you fold your numbers so teams don't beat you around the corner i think at the moment though they're getting caught in a halfway house so they're not servicing it quick enough and they're leaving the back of that ruck exposed You'd also, a few years ago, have the nine in the boot there. If they, Tondi on the attack, they lose it again. <laughs> Major, again, is stripped with Dom Hammett being bundled backwards. Good challenge there by Connor Jones. Yeah, defensively, coaches want the nines in the line. You'll see Payne there now, who missed that line. It's a lovely ball, but a, again, a speculative... Back, uh, pass out the back door by by Quinns presenting an opportunity for Tondi in the Quinns 22 and the numbers galore on the right hand side here lovely little offload by Curtis Fry the tight head Quinns get off the line to try and put a pressure on the Tondi attack Ellis Majors like Shark Brits out there he's everywhere isn't he he's all action Payne waiting for the ball. You can see the George. shape. Of, you can see the shape of Tondi here. Fry there again with the offload. Williamson with a bit of space gives it towards Tippett. Done on Tippett. What a try! And that could be the score that takes Tondi away with the Quins, and it could be a score. That is, as Sean said, a bridge too far for the Commander boys. Beautifully executed, patient build-up, Christmas screaming, you can see the shape, and you could from up here. They'd set up, they'd done the patient bit, Ellis Major, just bring him forwards in, and when it came, the pass out of the back. Just have a little look at Curtis Fry here. He's going to rock it back to Ocean Yardley, long pass. Williamson comes in, and he times his pass to perfection, because he just holds the right winger there, Ollie Hawk, enough to give the space on the outside. For Jack Bouvier, just have a look at this. It's not Jack Bouvier, still in Tippett. We haven't mentioned his name all day. You know, he scored a try at the stadium and he's taken a knee in the back for his troubles. He won't care about that though. He's, he's on the scoreboard, ton deer ahead, and lovely play. Well, we, we felt for a while, haven't we, that somebody's going to break away. There was a score in there. Who's going to score it? 
Tondi have. Sean called it earlier. I think Tondi are very, very clever in their attack. We've seen them put their hooker in that first receiver. That time it was Fry. Carmarthen expected him to just power and carry, but he didn't. He distributed and he got to the wide. Very smart play. Williamson slips as he strikes it. Four short. Carmarthen Quinn's seven. Tondi 20. The finish there, Chris. You know, Will Williamson can underestimate. He's a top pace. He's running a top pace into the 22. You can. You could understand if he just went himself, white line fever, he's at the Principality Stadium, but he was away, he went into the hole, he just pulled Ollie Hawk in there for the little pump, and he put his winger in, it was brilliant play from the full-back. Quinn's making some changes, bringing, bringing on some fresh legs. Matthew Williams, leaving the field. Karen Thomas is on. I can only assume that's an injury for Matthew Williams. I thought he played really, really well. So uh, that's a loss if he's going off for an injury. Tondi. Get the possession from the restart. Deal with it well, easily enough. Not under too much pressure. Yestin Williamson trying to. Wiggle his way out of trouble. Quinns causing problems at the base of that ruck. Then Tondi are down to 14 with an injury in the back of our picture. The Quinns know they need to pick up the pace here. They need to find the next score. Penalty advantage. Looks to go wide. The chip over the top. Proctor's after this one. Proctor's. He got the pace. Not that. Dotted down. And that, from this angle, is a try, but the referee has brought him back for offside in midfield, potentially. But I think if you look at that again, that should be a try. Well, I think if he played on, Proctor gets it down. I'm not sure Tondi get a hand on it. It may be an offside in front of the kicker here, but, the he, kicker but he holds back, doesn't no he? no material effect because he stops. Yes, that, that's... Well, if we had a TMO... That'd be an interesting call. Chris, you're the unofficial TMO. Do you give it? I think that's a harsh call because I don't think he had an effect on the defender. So the kick was angled more on the out. So it was a clear run with the defence still having options to recover. Yeah, I, mean, I agree. I agree. You know, you've got to have a bit of empathy with that. And you've got to be assisted by your, your ARs as well in that one. Let's have a little look again. Well, we'll see the run in front here. But watch him stop and put his hands up. Has no material effect on the defence. Doesn't hold anybody. That isn't a dot down. That's a try. But Ben Proctor, he's got some pace, hasn't he? Well, oh, goodness pace. me. That could be a crucial thing over there. But, what you know, with two scores they need now, we're going to see a barnstorming finish from the Quins, that's for sure. Yeah, the Quins have experience. A tight affairs on the road to the Principality. If you... One point games, I'll go through the fixtures and how they got here in a bit as the Quinns butchered a chance from the line out. It's charged down, it could bounce kindly, it could be a score, it is a score. Calwin Thomas, oh, it's disallowed, it's disallowed. The referee has given a knock on. I'd like to have a look at this again. I think we will. That's a heartbreaker for Karen Thomas. Going to be two tries disallowed in the space of a minute. A lot of head shaking going on out there. Now we can hear the jeers and the boos. Wow, well, it was. Oh. You know, if you if you take the line, that five meter line, it has gone forward. So well done to referee Rich Cunliffe. It's easy for us here. We want to see a barnstorming finish, but he's made the right call, I think. Knock on, apparently. I didn't see it. Scrum five, ton deep. We can feel the tension now, can't we? It's, it's built up. It's there. It's palpable. Yeah, in fairness to the referee, that was a great call. The call out on the spot without any benefit of a replay. He's done very, very well there. Freedom's kick. Hooked out. Not the prettiest of exits. Scrapes over, it's a five-meter line out to Kamal and Quinns. Now they've got a third. 
bite of the cherry to try and get over it. Yeah, good pressure here. It's always a difficult kick. Nothing wrong with the aftermath, I don't think. No. Yes, Williamson. He kicks the forward thing, doesn't he, at the same time as, as the ball. Doing himself a, a mischief. As I uh, alluded to the results of Kamar and Quinn's early doors in round one. A bit of a, a derby against Newcastle Emlyn. 22-21 to the Quinns. It was even closer to round two. 29 all against Rubina. Quinns going through on try count. And it's a bit easier against Machen. Only two points in it. 22-20. <laughs> and beating Barry 14-10. So the Quinns have been in some tough encounters. Close scrapes. So may stand them in good stead. It's not going their way at the moment. Three or four decisions. Or key opportunities. Slipping through their fingers. Yeah, not getting the drills right at the line. An overthrow first and a not straight. They'll be kicking themselves. The in front disallowed try. Something tells me, though, that could swing back their way. There's still time. Yeah, plenty of time this one. Two scores, two converted tries would put them ahead, of course. As Tondi looks to lay a platform for an exit strategy. Good carry by Sam Matthews. He's been in the middle of some good stuff for Tondi. Williamson with the kick and the pressure once again doesn't find touch. Here they come with Jack Thomas, needs to stay alive, he's under pressure. No clear release by Ellis Major. Free play for the Quins. They need to convert some pressure into points on the angle. Nice little run. Still on, on the far side. Karen Thomas nearly gets on the outside. And a four pass in this one. I thought it was a penalty advantage. Uh, it's all happening out there. The forward pass that time from Carvin Thomas. A little bit lateral, it has to be said. And Tondi have been smart in defence, but they cannot get out of their 22 at the moment. And this may be a better opportunity for them. That's the pass, Carvin Thomas. Yeah, it was over, it was forward, that over-the-top pass. The assistant referee, the right place in line to see that perfectly well Josh Payne feeds again and a good carry off the base by Connor Jones using the forwards again Major handling the ball nicely Williamson fakes the kick out towards Boobier a bit of pressure maybe Ton is starting to feel that they can't get out of their own 22 uh, the crowd are feeling it as well. It's the quietest they've been. They know how important the next goal is. And Quinns are doing all they can. They're chasing down kicks. They're harrying, and there's a bit of cramp in the Ton D camp. Connor Jones, and number eight, hobbling over our side here. And it's only a matter of time, you feel, the longer Quinns are down here. An opportunity, a chance. A chink in that Ton D armor will appear, and they will take advantage. And Connor Jones... His shift is done. Seems to be hobbling off, taking a bump. He's put in a shift. His team are nearly home. Can they secure this cup? Oh, it's frustrating. Coach Killer, as we always say, not straight. That's maybe one weakness we've seen in these finals lineouts. They haven't been maybe as accurate as required. No, I think across all the teams, they've struggled. Perhaps Caffilli in the ball. Well, good. Tondi have been pretty good here, and it's been the difference in the finals because there has been a lot of lineouts. Uh, it's eating into the clock as well, Chris, isn't it? Yeah, this will be really frustrating for uh, for Daniel and for Wayne because this is taking time away from them. You know, this will take another three or four minutes off the clock. Good strength for Tom D. 
Demi Runners brings in Williamson to go downfield. Proctor, a dead bounce up to hit his hand. Unfortunate for the full back, didn't quite control it with the boot. And that's a bit of luck for Tondi. That's so unlucky from Ben Proctor. He had the right idea. The kick was a scruffy one, wasn't it, from Williamson? So he had to try and trap it with his foot, but it bounces up onto his arm and then goes forward. You don't see that very often. We have a quick look at the route for Tondi to get to this cup final. It's been a bit more of a routine passage, beating Shiorki 26 11, Ebuvale 35 points to 7. And beating the North Wales Bethesda 39-5 and Gorsainon by 25 points to nil in the semi-final. Man down in midfield for the Quins. Tondi could exploit it. This could be a real worry for Kamar then because I think it's the replacement centre. And here Tondi are on the attack out towards Kai Phillips who can't stay in field. Yeah, well marshalled in the touch by Ollie Hawk. But yeah, it is a concern in midfield. He looks in a bit of pain. Just have a little look how Ollie Hawk just pushes, slips off here, and then gets Kai Phillips into touch quite easily. Yeah, one more score for Tondi would put this game to bed. The Quins. The longer this goes without a point, any more points on the board for them, the tougher it's going to get. I think, Oz, if you were to look at the stats in this game afterwards, you'd see a lot of metres made, a lot of carries, particularly by the outside backs of Kamal and Quinns. But they've only got one try to show for it, and that's the story of the game. You now, Tondi have been a little bit more structured, organised, clinical, and integral to that for me has been the captain, Ellis Major. Not just your average hooker, does his set piece, bits and bobs, lovely, but he's in handling, he's clearing out, he's a nuisance in defence, he's had a great game. Yeah, very good, very, very good. We feel this is a crucial ten minutes now for Kamal and Quinns. You can see the energy starting to drain out of them every time they can't get a foothold or they, there's an error made. And that's another error, allows Sam Kreber to carry and it seems that a long time ago since he crossed the white wash the Quinn salvage situation with a good steal you need to bring it right Proctor up to that 10th position again was it a hand in there is that knocked forward gone backwards the hack downfield looking for space Williamson will reply gets a nice spiral on it Proctor lets it slip through his grasp More kicking in the last minute or so than we've seen in the whole game. And it's knocked on by Kai Phillips. So, Quinn's winning the kicking battle. Uh, could that be the moment? Is that a little bit of luck? We said it, momentum might change on something. And Oh, it's just one of those snowflake kicks. You know, it was a, it was a funny old kick that came in from Kai Thomas. Sometimes you kick the belly of the ball, it... It floats down like a snowflake, that's what we call it, not an end-over-end -end ball. And it just died on him, didn't it? Yeah, and he's backtracking and he just couldn't regather his feet. Justin Marshall did a snowflake kick and a warm-up once to me in front of the shed in Gloucester. And I dropped it. I won't say what the crowd was shocked in. <laughs> but they are difficult to catch, trust me. Right then, let's see what happens in the scrums here. We've had a couple of injuries so this going to uncontested referee has had a word with the with the front rowers again here oh no. chris c proctor's in at 10 and um, he's pushed his 10 ellis thomas out to 15. yeah they're trying yeah. to trying to work that extra man sean aren't they they're trying to get one up to carry by williams oh why thomas Kai Thomas looking left. A dummy by Ivan Knott. Not gaining any ground at the moment. Kamal and Quinns under pressure at the breakdown. Needed that penalty. 
And again, the bird back shot. Frustrated Sam Kreber, thinking he'd win, won the, the race for the ball on the ground, but it was a previous decision that went against his team, taken quickly, maybe unneeded, an unwise decision with a chance to put the team five metres from the line. Good ball towards Gito Phillips. Again, Tondi targeting the ball on the floor. Gethin Davis, ball hits the deck. Karen Thomas keeps it alive. Trying to twist out of, of danger. Just can't break this Tondi defence down, can they? You know, they didn't go for the liner because that hasn't been going well. They just can't make the overlap. And what's the old adage? Defences win championships. And at the moment, it is the Tondi defence that's winning the battle here. They're so well organised, uh, Tondi defensive. You're seeing like their forwards are getting up off the floor, they're getting numbers back in the line, they're making their tackles, they're forcing Cardiff, um, Carmarthen to get isolated. They really are frustrating Carmarthen. Sometimes when you have a lead, it's better to be without the ball. You just manage the opposition. And that's exactly as you say, Chris, what Tondi are doing. You can tell Ian Bubia has worked on this system. They're physical in the contact, they're over the ball, slowing them up, and they're pushing the Quins to the touchline, and it's been so effective. Major, great throw to the back of the line. He's there again, Ashcombe half peeling off, the referee slightly in the way, a good carry, and a good offer by Matthews, Duncan. This is a chance now for Tondi to put this game in the bag. Working it wide, numbers out, back inside towards Williamson. And a good tackle, a needed tackle, a try-saving tackle potentially. It's brilliant play from Tondi, really is. That man major was involved again, got Matthews down the channel. Shea Duggan was in support and then they had the, the overlap on the outside, I just felt... They went on the inside, there's Matthews, look at this offload, bump, Duggan following him in, and he looked to the outside where his support was. Here he comes, quick ball, and they just couldn't execute, but great scrambling from Kwan and Quinns. The line-out needs to be perfect this time, they go for the safety of the front ball. It wasn't the best of throws, the Quinns have possession. They've got to play from deep, they've got to throw the, the dice, shuffle the pack a bit as well with their maybe tactical options to Matthew Williamson, who's been Proctor trying to speculate, pass over the, the head unneeded. Williamson, lovely pass off the left, but Kreber bounced off his chest. Too much bench press, too much weight on the bench pressure, imagine. Too big a chest. Why, well, he's not meant to be there, really, is he's taking his eye off it. I felt this was a little bit over elaborate. You can see what Matthew Williams trying to do, but he had more time than he thought there, Proctor. And all they could do was shift it downfield, but they have to score here now. Simple as that, it's a midfield scrum, split, they've got the gas on the outside. They have to score because time is running out, they have to score twice. Kai Thomas and the pressures darts around. There's a space gap for him for the scrum half. He's tapped. Poor control at the base of that ruck. Quinn still in possession though. That's the 22 in the background. Ivan Freeman bursting through. Quinn's. Dump back because that's a decision for the referee. That could be potentially a card and a big decision. What's your first thoughts here, Sean? Well, from this distance, I didn't quite see in the morning. I was watching it live, and it was definitely a tip over the horizontal. 
It's where he's landed then, if that's the case, on the protocol. The horizontal isn't too much, but he does land on his shoulder and a knack. Here we go. He's definitely tipped his legs. He's yeah. landed. Not on his head, fortunately, for the tackler. Easy for us on the replay, but seeing that it's it's got to be a red card and work down with any mitigating factors. Any mitigating factors, Chris, from, from your viewpoint here? Uh, it's a tough one. I think he's recognised what he's done, but it is a tip tackle, isn't it, by letter of the law? I think he's got away with one there. That's a big decision there. It's definite penalty, you know, you know. It's just whether he goes for a yellow or a red for me, and I think it's a yeah. minimum yellow. I agree with you. And, and it's easy for us, we've just seen the replay as well. And our first first instinct, we went, oof. But we weren't sure where, where, you know, the body angle in the air. But the, the referee, in this occasion, doesn't have the same facilities to him unless he's looking at the, the big screen. So Tondi, I've dodged the bullet there. And a penalty taken quickly by Kai Thomas. They need to score. Williams, the long ball out towards. And it's a try. It's a score for Carwin Thomas. He crossed earlier on in the half. He was disallowed. But Carwin Thomas is chuffed to bits. He scored in the Principality. The Quins are still in this one. But the kick has to be converted. Yeah, the tap penalty from the scrum. They could have been a fortune there. It bobbled up. Long pass from Matthew Williams back on the field. Had a bit to do. Now he's delighted with that. He tried to get as close as he could to the post. Because as you say, yo, this is a massive kick now. Yeah. It's close. It's hit the post. And it's over. Ellis Price. Well, it's Tony thought they had this one sewn up. Think again. Commander Quinn's 14, Tondi 20. Thanks to that man, Carwin Thomas, and the conversion by Ellis Price. We said he's going to go to the wire, and it is. Well, Chris said the injury in midfield might be important. Matthew Williams came back on. And it was his long left-handed pass. They got Thomas in. <laughs> what a finish we've got. And oh, the Quinn's are on a roll. They've broken through the first line. Still going. Jack Thomas up to the halfway line. What Tondi seemed like they're out on their feet. What a game. Quinn's in there. Good work by Evan Paddy, the second row, to secure the ball. Sean's screaming for the ball to come to the right hand side. Tondi have an injury as well on the left hand side. Ball's there. Tackles flying in. Quinn's again with a half break. The legs must be empty. Ellis Price cuts across field, gets the offload, oh! and another one. The Quins are through with Gitto Phillips. Alex George trying to slow down possession. The ball's still alive as that goes forward. The Tondi coaches are screaming for a decision. And back chat as well, and that's a penalty. We've got about two and a half minutes left on the clock. And Commander Quinns are throwing the kitchen sink at Tondi. Catch your breath, those. Brilliant counter attacking. What a break from left winger Jack Thomas. Strong and quick. Burst through. They had the opportunity, but as Tondi had done all again, they just slowed it up enough. It was a six on three on our near side. They had to go short. Brilliant counter. Just here. It's this next phase. This carry comes up here now on the inside. And watch Tondi slow this up. They'll eventually come in. They'll counter ruck. And they were forced to the left. They couldn't quite squeeze it out. <laughs> you, you've got to admire the tenacity, the comeback of Kamal and Quinns. We felt, didn't we, that at some point they would come back into this game, Chris? Yeah, we did. And, they, and they're doing that, aren't they? You know what I mean? They, they've managed to get confidence from the try they've scored. They've run out from the ensuing kickoff. Just got each other's way then, didn't they, on that last uh, short bit, side attack? Just a bit too flat, not holding their depth. But it's an opportunity for Tondi just to regroup, regather their thoughts. They're going to know.
by asking the referee, there's only a couple of minutes left on the clock. Composure. The coaches are getting the messages on as well. This again, Seals, is part of the development of these young players. You know, how to close the game out. You know, two minutes or so left on the clock. They have possession. This has to go into touch. Job one done. Second, win the line of third, start running the clock down. Negative play, yes, but it doesn't matter who you to win a cup final. On the contrast and the flip side, Quinns, how do we get this ball back to give ourselves one opportunity to win it? Yeah, I think, to compete. Yeah, I think Tom D be happy to maul this as far as they can down the field. Is that straight? It's not the oh. pressure by the Quinns, it's as Alex Ferguson should, Alex Ferguson would say, squeaky bum time. <laughs> I think it is. I tell you what, everybody's been entertained by this one. I, we had the feeling, didn't we, it was going to be ding-dong, it's going to go down to the wire. The <laughs> crowd are going bananas with the drums. Here to the very end, Quinn's win the nudge of the scrum. Williams, the dummy runner, to Price. Proctor in a bit of space, fires it out. That's a good control off the boot. Credit to Carwin Thomas, keeps it alive from a bad pass. But Johnny Evans scoops up the ball for Tondi. Opportunity missed. The pass from Proctor was so poor. Didn't give the winger a chance. Quinn's have to fight for the ball again. Now Tondi can go through that process that Sean was talking about. Wind the clock down. Keep it tight. Quinn's are trying to fight for the ball. Penalty against them. Tondi. Have a free play. Williamson puts a bit of space on the ball. Fighting till the very end. And penalties given. Josh Payne. Lovely ball. Lovely run by Alex George. It's the inside no look pass from Ellis Major. Been the best player on the pitch for me. All told, but surely Tondi will run this down. Talk of the devil. How many involvements has he had today in terms of carries? And he's been on the ball, he's been a first receiver. And Tondi wisely just tightening things up. Now you can see the pods either side of that ruck ready to carry. Major again, support runners on his shoulder as well. I'm not sure this is going to go far. No, they, keep this and, and the, Queens, the Queens have to pile bodies in and they just try and compete for the ball, win the race for it. But it's so, so difficult. And the nod's been given by the referee. Josh Pay knows that's the final act. And Tondi are the cup champions. Cue the celebrations. And a final score as the Quinn's bodies fall to the ground in desperation. In exhaustion, Kamal and Quinn's 14, Tondi 20. Congratulations to Tondi, they are the WRU Youth Cup champions. Jubilant scenes down there, and you can understand why young men giving it all there. Both teams, Quinn's were strewn all over the floor at the end, they threw everything they could. At Tondi, but in the end, it was the slightly more clinical, slightly more streak-wise team in Tondi that won the day. Brilliant final, Chris. Credit to you guys. What a great advert for youth rugby in Wales, wasn't it? It was toe to toe. Credit for Command and Quinns the way they came back after not quite being able to get those points on the board. They lost their foothold in the game, but they were right in it to the end. But I agree with you, Tondi, just a little bit more streetwise, took their opportunities in the right areas of the field and deserved winners. Yeah, we go back to Dylan Tippis try, the first score in the second half. It did prove to be just too much of a bridge for Quinns to score. And Tondi were just clinical in the key moments of the game. Quinns will be looking back at this game tonight, I'm sure, replaying it in their minds. They had opportunity from several lineouts, several positions in and around the Tondi 22 and just couldn't convert possession pressure into points at that moment. Yeah, as I said, we look if Wayne Proctor looks back at any stats, then the meat that's made will be huge. The possession, the carries, the passes, and arguably the one chance Tondi had in the second half. They took it with Tippett and they did it in you know clinical fashion. You know, they threw everything at it, Commander Quinns. Just lacked that little bit of execution.
but wow, they gave us a final. That last try by Carwin Thomas set up a finale, but you're right, they had their chances, but I think on balance, Tondi just about deserve it. And probably the coins will be looking back if they missed opportunities. That disallowed try as well. That could have, maybe should have meant that the Quins could have could have could have won it. But there we go. You know, Tondi stuck in there. And have come out on the other end victorious here at the Principality. And we've mentioned several times today. These will be treasured memories in years to come. Rare opportunities to play here at the Principality, not only with your school friends, your club mates, represent your hometown or your village. And they'll be celebrating long into the night here at the capital. Yeah, I just caught a glimpse of Neil Boobia there, the brother of Ian Boobia, the coach. And they're all in there, they all deserve the plaudits and enjoy this moment in front of their fans, their teammates, the other teams in the club. Oh, there'll be big celebrations in Tondi tonight. I'm not driving through there on the way home. Yeah, Tondi celebrating in front of a healthy support. Fair play to Tondi and the Quins and all the other teams who have been here today. They've bought Best loads of supporters with them. Clearly a memorial there or something. And uh, see how passionate they all are. It means so much, doesn't it? And we've said all day of meals that these memories, you see supporters wiping their eyes with emotion on both sides of the result. But they'll remember this day, they'll treasure the moments, the memories, the photographs, and uh, they'll go down in Tondi club history now. They will, they will. How many teams from Tondi have won in the Principality? There's one. They will be remembered for years to come. And I'm sure the reception back in Tondi will be worth seeing. And a word for the Quins, they're in a hurdle. They're obviously disappointed, they're emotional, but they've contributed to this wonderful final. They'll be wondering of the opportunities missed. But as always, I'm sure they'll be concocting a plan to get back here next year. They are runners-up in the WIU Youth Cup final. I'm sure these guys will have aspirations to step up to the senior team to represent their sides at the senior level. In a true manner of rugby, with respect, at the heart of it, the traditional tunnel being formed for either side. That's the presentation, seam and ceremony are preparing themselves. Yeah, it'll be fitting as well. That is the Tondi captain. They'll be lifting the trophy, lifting the cup. Ellis Major, brilliant game from from him. He's impressed with the Estim Williamson as well, the fullback. The two centres worked hard for Quinns. Well, Matthew Williams tried his best, didn't he? Kai Thomas, the scrum half, had his moments, but I have to say the Tondi workmanlike, streetwise performance won the day. Yeah, it's gonna go back and we a try on the first five minutes by by Shay Duggan. By Shay by Shay Duggan opening the scoring. Commander Quinn's reply with Griff Williams. And then a score that puts Tondi ahead going in at half time by Sam Kreber. An important score. It was seven points to 15 in the favour of Tondi at half time. And Dylan Tippett scored first for Tondi in the second period. And that put some daylight between the Quins and Tondi. 20 points to seven. And then that late score by Carwin Thomas. They put the pressure on for the final five minutes. But too little, too late. 
for the boys from Carmarthen. We see Yelian Evans presenting the medals. Part of the presentation team with Colin Wilkes. Yeah, not many of these boys will remember Yeah, I'm playing, but if they look back in the Arnold's, they'll be told by their parents, I'm sure, their older brothers and sisters, being presented with trophies by a Welsh legend, a Lions legend. And, uh, and, a, and a Carmarthen boy. And I was going to say, from down that neck of the woods, uh, it, I'm sure, no bias, but, you know, Yayan may have wanted to present the winner's trophy, but Tondi have grabbed that today. So that's the Quins receiving their runners-up medals in this cup final. And the moment at Tondi youth have been dreaming of all week. This is the moment that they get to celebrate at the Principality. This is the moment where the photographs will be taken and treasured for years and decades to come. I'm sure reunions will be based on, on today. Well, they are, aren't they? You know, you can't take it away from them. Like I say, they will go up on the wall in the club at Tondi and uh, they'll be remembered, the team photographed. Of course, there'll be a video made behind the scenes, no doubt, and the changing room scenes, I'm sure we'll see on social media tomorrow. Uh, let's just hope they, uh, they all enjoy their Easter weekend as well. Yeah, it's been one big hangover in Tondi, but luckily they've got a three-day recovery period. Medals are been presented. Now, Ellis Major is going to receive the Youth Cup final trophy from Yayan Evans in front of his teammates. They're all going to pounce in unison. And there we are, the National Youth Cup final winners are Tondi. Sean Gavarchadain Verthol, the club rugby, Yeyeng T. Tondi, Pen Campwir, Kupan Kenneth Lethal, Cymru, Tondi, the winners of the 2022 23 Youth Cup final, and well deserved, winning by three tries to two. In an attritional game in the end. And let's get the photographs underneath those posts. So the final score here in the Youth Cup final. Kamad and Quinns, 14. Tondi, 20. am... <laughs> Will you are you, Matt? Thank you so much for you for joining us throughout the day here on the WRU stream. Thank you to Sean Holly and Chris beside me for keeping me company throughout. We'll be back here once again tomorrow for more Cup Finals rugby. But for today, congratulations to all the winners, to Kyle Philly, to Burry Port, and to Tondi. And let's leave you with some highlights.